Peters, as I said, um, Dr. Donald Peters holds experience in tertiary education and uh, he is a former CEO of the West Indies uh, uh, Cricket. Uh, he serves as a senior officer in Boston Health and Hospital Division and he's also Dominica um, Ambassador at Large for Education. Um, he's called Groom. And he'll tell us why he's called Groom um, by many people of Roseau and uh, he is proud of his achievement as a child of the Laku and more so a Maliwe. That I really, really want to hear tonight um, because when people see Donald Peters, uh, they see Laja around him. But he'll tell us why he is a Zafa Maliwe. And um, you can also find us on the social media platform, both on YouTube and Facebook. You can also find us on our frequency on 88.1, eight 89.5, 103.1, 103.5, and 104.7 and 104.1 FM. Tonight, Donald Peters um, is going to just speak with us, and it's going to be really an intriguing and interesting uh, program with uh, Dr. Donald Peters. Peters. So let me just say good evening to Dr. Donald Peters. Good evening to you, sir. Good evening, Cecil. I, I am elated that I can sit with you for a few hours that we can discuss all about you. I, I remember as a boy growing up uh, that there were people that I heard of and I never believed that I would have even sat and discussed with them. People like uh, yourself. Uh, your name was big in the whole issue of black power in Dominica. Um, Para Rivier, Desmond Trotter, um, also that of Hilroy Thomas. Uh, Hilroy Thomas is from Atkinson, for persons who may not be aware, but lived in Bafford for many years. Um, also Jean-Pierre, my good friend, um, he went up for the Labour Party in the Roseau uh, North uh, constituency. And also as a matter of fact, today, just a while ago, minutes ago, I found out that Claude Bellot, uh, many of us know Claude is in Boston, as I understood, and Derek Bellot, they are brothers to, um, to Dr. Donald Peters, and uh, they were also involved in the whole movement of Black Power. Um, Hilarion um, Dejan, um, his deceased. All of these guys, you know, as a boy growing up, I never thought that I would have ever met those people because their names were big and huge. Uh, tonight, I have one with me in the person of Donald Peters. Donald, I'm happy to have you. Certainly, it's a pleasure to be here. You have two hours of my time. <laughs> Maybe, based on how the discussion goes, it can be even more. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, let's go. Yes, um, Donald. Um, uh, I, I hope that you don't mind I call you Donald. That's my name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, Donald Peters, um, give us a background of who you are. We, we need to know a little bit more of, of Donald Peters. Well, it's not a mystery. I'm a child of a, a Malawi. Um, I come from a single-parent household um, with my two brothers and my sister. I was raised by my mother, who was a French citizen, they moved from Guadeloupe to... Dominica and I guess had an affair with my dad and uh, made me. So that was my background. I always say I was actually born in um, Windsor Park. I was literally born in Windsor Park because isn't um, the maternity ward of the hospital was where the um, um, the forecourt is now in Windsor in the stadium, right? Um, that's where the the hospital was, the maternity ward. So, but um. Yeah, and my mother raised us. Um, my father was boys down on Hillsborough Street. I didn't have too much to do with him, but in, as I grew up and I achieved, then I started interacting with me. But yeah, so I went through all of the hardships that every kid in my neighborhood went through. We come from Great Marlboro Street, and um, you go to school in the uh, Mondays to Fridays, and on weekends is Windsor Park on the power gardens because i mean there's no tv to watch which was a good thing so you you spend your time learning skills in soccer and cricket and you got to be tough because nobody gonna pick you if you don't talk up and i was meg and but i used to be a tough kid so and um as you know later on i played for grammar school but before that i played in windsor back every day 
I wouldn't get picked most of the times, but then when somebody you know, that he'd pick me on a team and I would probably score a goal and next time I get picked. So no, no you you said that um you lived in Great Marlborough Street? That's correct. Great Marlborough Street, which is um that same street uh, that's getting the bridge getting out of Rosu. No, that's Great Jones Street. Great Marlborough Street is the street. Oh, um, Great Marlborough Street, that is Jackson, like Jackson Shop yes, area. Yes, that is the street. Yes, the, yeah, yes, the Jackson yeah. Shop area. Great Marlborough Going all street. the way to Pong. All the way down to Pong, yes. Yeah, yeah. All right. From the, as we know for people of old, the, the Backless Bank. Yes, yes. Going right up to, up to Pong. The, the, to Pong. We, yes. Right now we have the financial center in that area there. That's correct. So that, that street, the Great Marlborough Street. I know all of the short, shortcuts from, I could lose you in Pong, End up in River Street and you'd never see me. In those days, I shortcut all the way to Bath Road, and we knew it well. <laughs> no, um, Donald, you you said just as you as you as you spoke about you are um, uh, you come from a single parent. That's correct. Uh, many many people um, would uh, would be of the opinion that um, when they hear of Donald Peter, um, they hear <laughs> Zafa. Guaja in Luzu. <laughs> Boisla. Yeah, Zafa Boisla. Yeah. And, yeah, a misnomer. And, and and here it is you are saying to us that you 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 in your growing up you had nothing much to do with your old man. That's correct. Why, why so? Well, I wasn't I wasn't my old man, you know, he was himself. He have to he's dead now, he can't tell you why he didn't support me, but my mother didn't make a fuss about it. She just taught us that to survive in this world, you don't complain. You find ways to to overcome obstacles, and we all did. Imagine my mother raised four kids, and all of them went to universities with no help from no government. <laughs> you know how amazing that is, and all of them were successful. So, my sister was a professor at Northeastern University in law library. Um, Claudia is an MBA from MIT. Derek is an artist from Mass College of Art. So. We um, um we did well, so I'm very proud of my mom, and um, and uh, and we succeeded, and she succeeded. She worked all the time. She was uh, a cook at, at grammar school, and later on she gave that up and became a maintenance worker, you know, housekeeping as she got older. So she always worked, and before she moved to the U.S. No, no you 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 said that um, your mom. Has is French descendant. Yes. H help us to have a better understanding how she found. I'm sure that you have given you all the story how she found herself in Dominica. Well, her sister was married to a Dominican, and they escaped from a from their parents who were um, kind of Cinderella story, and on a little shallop canoe and ended in, in Dominica. But then years after, her sister went back and she stayed. So I learned to speak English and decided. She would make a home for herself in Dominica. So, and um, I was excited. I mean, we would go to Guadeloupe for some summers on Del Grez. You remember Del Grez? And uh, that was really exciting. That's probably the only place we could go because it was cheap and we had relatives in Guadeloupe. That, so, that, that's an amazing story <laughs> that your, your mom's mm. sister got married to a Dominican. Correct. She came to Dominica. Mm. Your mother then followed suit. Yes. Got you. Yep. <laughs> and she found herself getting a job. Yep. <laughs> Met your father. Yes. And had you. Yes. And the place was, my father and, and her worked at a place called Paz, where is We Church now in Roseau, opposite Cinema. That was the Paz. There was a, a kind of um, hotel and bar and... Um, restaurant all in one so and and uh, in the process you were the first of, of the four yes and uh, um i i realized that you have some coolie here would <laughs> she be a, a kalinago by any chance <laughs> no my mother was east indian well, she was east indian yes <laughs> yes and uh, not not all east indian people think that have money <laughs> that one didn't have, unfortunately that this one didn't have she escaped she was uh father got remarried uh, to somebody because her mother died early and she has really been abused like and so her sister took her and they ran away from Godlook. so she was like a refugee okay so, 
And she died in Dominica? No, 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 no. She died in Guadeloupe? No, she moved to the U.S. with us oh, later she, on. She, and then mm -hmm. five years ago, she passed away in Boston. Okay, so she passed away in, in the U.S. of A. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I, I want her to give us a, a little bit more on, on the part of your education. Mm -hmm. going to school from a very early age. Mm -hmm. I, I have spoken to many people and they, they mentioned to me about Chateau, Rose Boy School, Wesley High School. Mm -hmm. Give me give me your, your, your side. All right. <laughs> yeah, my mom sent, um, sent us to, some of us went to Teacher Rose, but I went to Wesley High School as a kid, I guess, kindergarten. And um, with Ronnie Severa and guys like that. They were boys at Wesley High School. Every time I tell my students I went to Wesley High School, they're kind of shocked but they were boys. And the fascinating thing about that, which is actually funny, is that by the time I had to get out of, of um, West High School and go to mixed school, now understand at West High School, you have a, um, shoes and socks and your uniform when you go to school. Now, my mother didn't have too much money, so when time to go to mixed school, she put the same clothes on me, and here I am going to mixed school with all the tough guys in, in Pong area and they start bullying me, and I, I figure I got to fight this. So I used to take off my shoe and socks, hide it by the piper, <laughs> and go to school without shoe. Well, that was more trouble for me because the teacher realized I have shoes, so she called my mother and licks on me. <laughs> so after a while, I learned to deal with guys, um, Jojo Lordy and them, and they were in the same class with me. I did their homework for them, and they didn't take my recess anymore. So, and that's, when I say about learning, being from the, being a Malawi and learning to survive, I think that's one of the skills that I learned from being in, in from Great Marlboro Street and living my life almost half in Windsor Park. It brings a different kind of education to you and the reality of what life is. I didn't have the luxury of being with the bourgeoisie, the people who control the means of production. I was what they call a lump and proletariat. I was just a, a poor kid. But, but but your 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 brothers mm. and and your sister by mother they would have been around already been a bellot yes yes bellot was a big name in Dominica well at that they, time. they were and, and your dad Peters, and Peters was a big name so yeah how were you not that fortunate um, child? <laughs> well their father helped us was the one supporting everybody Claude's father and and, and um so we but I mean it's four of us and the income is not high my mother had to pay rent and electricity and all those things so and it's four kids. So we, we barely scraped through. I mean, we were not walking with um, our holes in our pants or anything like that, but we didn't have the luxury of middle-class people. We were, we were relatively poor people. How was a Sunday like, a, a Sunday at home? <laughs> oh, that's nice. Like, Sunday, we have to go to church. So when we come back, everybody have the rules. They have to scrub the tennis shoe and stuff and then go. Then we have free time. Um, Windsor Park, on the power, every Sunday. And my mother, they, we used to laugh in Boston when we talk about that, that my mom started cooking um, dinner, lunch at about 9 o'clock. Red beans, I never know red beans could take so long to cook. When we come back at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, it's still cooking and man hungry like dogs. So that was an experience. Every Sunday was the same routine. And, um, and then when I became, when I became involved in Black Power, my Sundays was... Be before, before we go to that Black Power <laughs> yes, and Sundays, yes. we will deal with that when we come there. All right. But, but, but uh, I, I just want to know mm. a, a little bit of, of your growing up. Uh, so you have spoken to us about your Sunday. Well, oh. one of the things I did, and um, all of us did, because we, didn't, we had a radio but nothing else, um, is read. We, re we read all the time. I bring the librarian, Miss River, tired with us. We read almost every book for kids in the library, and then we started reading all the books. So that was part of my education also. I mean, knowledge comes from books. I still say that to people. Oh, you live in Great Marlboro Street. You're not far from the jetty in Rosu. Oh, no, I was uh, there. Any life, any life in the, on the jetty? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we used to fish um, mowing all the time, and your mother come looking for you. You got to run. So, yeah, I spent a lot of time on the, on the, pier, on the port. Um, and uh, um, as I grew up, um, before I, I went to, uh, when I left high school, I was a tally clerk also, tally and fertilizer on the port. So, so, so now, mm -hmm. um, here it is as a boy, you would, you would go by, by, by the jetty, mm -hmm. dive mm -hmm. for 50 cents and 25 cents mm -hmm. in those days. Mm -hmm. You would mm -hmm. have done that too. <laughs> yes. 
You and, what, and tourists what about, ruin dollars for you. And what about by the river? I, you, you oh went, boy, you, I could hunt big as huh? Uh -huh. I remember I'm smaller than those guys, so when they say first, if I go, they put in some cool washing masks. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I was good too. Um, I take some big ass. Uh, if you stay there, we used to be on the by in by the river in the bushy river for almost a whole day. You know, <laughs> that is part of the growing up in Roseau. But, but see all of this thing that you would have done in 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 Roseau. Mm -hmm. See all of this thing you would have done in Roseau. Yes. But right in the middle mm -hmm. was Boys La Home. Yes. So mm -hmm. how did you not get yourself in into the kingdom of, of Boys La? My mother was a very proud woman. She told us, I've told me, I have nothing to do with him. He doesn't exist. So, I, I learned that. So, I would pass that. I, I didn't... But, I, I, I mean, I really didn't recognize boys at all, you know. I mean, he just was my biological father, but he didn't raise me, so I didn't know him. So, until I grew up... <laughs> until you grew to be a big man? Yes, yes. What, what, what do you mean by a big man? No, in high mean, school? No, no, high school. He didn't pay for my high school. When I came back here, I began to to interact with my father. So you're saying that you're saying that that you you left high school, went to to college in the U.S. Yep. and university. Then you came back home. Then you you and boys that became partners. Yeah, yeah, we were close because I have no hard feelings and I I don't blame him for anything. I I respect him. He gave me both. That's about it. <laughs> so. But at the same time, you had some prominent brothers. Yes, yes, yes. Well, um, yeah, I was very close, especially to Randy. Um, and remember, we were going to grammar school together, so I interacted with them, but um, I never went to their homes. <laughs> was your father married before um, he got to you? No. Or did he get married after? After. He got married after? Yes. So it's not a situation... And his wife was my good friend too, uh, later on. So it's not, it's not to <laughs> say a situation where... <laughs> That he was married and you had to hide your doc, people doc your name away from the wife. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he wasn't a very strong man, let me just say that. <laughs> he wasn't a strong man. Uh -huh. so. uh -huh. And and you said that you'd have a very close relationship with Randy. Yes. Um mm -hmm. and especially at at, at um well, at, at grammar school. What kind of conversation you'd have had with Randy? All the time we spoke, Randy loved his cars, you'd tell me about cars, we would um talk about chicks. I gave Randy his first girlfriend, so... Randy, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm not lying. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we cool. I mm -hmm. I mean, he was my brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So And I, Bob, too. I mean, Uncle Bob. Bob was a sprinter. Bob was the fastest runner at drama school, you know, in Division Three. So, and we played soccer on the same team. So, so yeah, we had a good relationship, but not with his father, not with their fathers. Oh, no, you went to, to primary school. Mm -hmm. um, you are through with primary school. But before I go into high school, mm -hmm. what is your fun moments or fun memory that you would have had at um, primary school? Well, in primary school, um, the fun moment was you get to, you know, things like scrubbing last day of school. You get to scrub desks and chairs. And that was fun. And I was pretty sharp, so I was always teacher's favorite kid in the in the class. So I, I got a little perk all the time I, because I re read a lot. So it's easy to become first in, in class in mixed school. So, so yeah, but um, those, and uh, that's when I began to understand the whole social dynamic of how the society works. Because some kids have no shoe coming to school and you'd wonder, well, why you have no shoe? Or the same clothes all the time. Then we re my mother would tell me, well, these are poor people, they can't afford clothes like this. So, um, and um, she always taught us to share. That's why our, my brothers and myself and my sister, we always share what we had. We believe that it very, very seriously. And you see my life. I share everything I have. I, I, when I achieve something, I help my countrymen. And that was taught by my mother. No, Tubac, primary school. <laughs> I mean, you have to make Tubac at primary school. Oh, yes. Were you one of the students who would have made Tubac? Oh, yes. Who <laughs> doesn't make two? But my two bag is so I'm in class in the morning and fellas say we go in on the power, we go on hunt um um up by the morning, Jack's walk. So I just didn't go back in the afternoon. <laughs> and uh boy I get caught a couple of times, eh? And so it leaks on you when you get caught. So people would talk. Remember it's the village the village raise you, you know. 
So if I see my Isabel <laughs> by the gardens, I know I did because she won't tell my mother. So yeah, but you take your risk. That's life in the village. Rosa was like a village. Everybody knew you, and you knew everybody. So, so, so the 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 the, the, the lacus that yes. you would have gone through, the the, the yards mm-hmm. that you would have gone through, the ways that you would have gone through. <laughs> Give us a little story about them. <laughs> chasing guys or guys chasing, chasing you. Chasing you. Yep, yep. <laughs> so you would mess um, with. There are a number of guys in the community we would give a hard time, and they'd be chasing us. But when you're docking a kuwe, trust me, I know those kuwe's. When I go into pong, I disappear, and I can end up on River Street, or end up all the way in Bath Road, uh, because I mean that's our neighborhood. We knew we didn't have to stay on the main roads, so and we uh, it was amazing that you could leave River Street. I never have to go on the main road and end up in Bath Road, going through people's yard, <laughs> and um, they're close on the line. They have to dock under the line and keep moving. It was fun. <laughs> so, and what would these adults say to you all when they see you all passing through their yards? Oh, they'll just shout at you. Some of them would throw water on you. <laughs> <laughs> you mean that? Yes, 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 yes. Oh yes. my God. So, um, mm. I am sure that you would have remembered some of the 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 elite class in in Roseau, yes. um, that you as a, as a boy growing up, you know, would see. Boy, you see these kind of people there, but I don't like them. Well, well, like I every do. one of us as young boys. Well, two things happen at that age. You want to think you want to be like them at some point, but although you know that wasn't possible, and the second thing, you don't know too much about them. You just think they have a lot of money. I I came to understand that they really didn't have a lot of money. Some of them. They just were fortunate to be in the right place at the right time. So country people had more money than them. The farmers, but nobody paid attention to them. So yeah, um, but I, and as when in grammar school, I, I used to go to school with the children, so I got to know some of them. So you have left primary school into mm-hmm. secondary. Yes. Um, tell us, did you get a bursary a pass? How did you? How were you able in to get into grammar school? Yeah, I actually came second in the common entrance. Or if Abraham came first, I came second, and I was only 10 years old, so I was early. And they put me in second form. And I still came second in that world, and then I stayed in third form for a couple of years because I think as big man, I wasn't doing any work. <laughs> but eventually I got promo- I left, um, went to fourth form, etc. But yeah, school was fun. Um, high school was um, fun. You got to learn a lot. We had a lot of very good teachers um, in science and, and, and the arts. And um, I felt that gave me the background that I needed when I entered college. Um, going to grammar school with Miss Brand, Miss Sorrento, Doc Delamere, Julie Johnson, Sovereign, all those people taught me. Um, Clinton Chillingford. So and um, yeah, I love school, and um, I was a very active student. I took part in everything. I made into schools. I played soccer. I didn't like cricket, so I tried to get away from cricket on weekends because weekends is blackboard time. I haven't got time to play cricket, so I deliberately got off the team. And then we, Doc, Dr. Thomas, he'd run myself from our own team and we'd go to the country every weekend every to play cricket in the country. That was fun too. I mean, and if you're smart, you let the, if you go to Salisbury or Buitica, you let them beat you so that they, you can have fun in village after that. And sometimes they did. Be, one time we played in um, Salisbury and the Outers for 17 runs. <laughs> or something else. But And Point Michelle. And, so that's how we got to, that's what school was about. One of the things um, I thought when I look back, I was very organized for a kid. You realize that at, at 19 I was elected as on DASA, as General Secretary of the Dominican Sports Association, at the time, there's only one uh, sports association. Today, we have the um, DFA, Olympic Committee, Cricket Association. One day, in, in those days, there was only one, Dominica Amatio Sports Association. And at 19, I, um, we decided, Bramble, um, Dr. Thomas and myself decided we're going to take over the Dominica Sports Association. And we did. We we remember we in Windsor Park all the time, and the way it works is the people who the sportsmen who vote for the association. At the time, Wadi Asavan was president, Patrick John was general secretary, Snakey Peters was treasurer, and um, we ran. 
And we asked Bernard Yankee to come with us as president. So, and so I beat Patrick John to become secretary. Castor, Bramble became treasurer and Hilroy became assistant secretary treasurer. And we were t still teenagers. <laughs> and how long that you all kept the association together? Till I left in 71. So I was also the youngest man ever to manage a, a cricket team. I managed Grayson, <laughs> Irving on the Dominica team to St. Vincent. And we beat, we used to win with North Islands all the time anyway. So we bought the house. <laughs> all right. No, 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 no. Um, here it is at your high school. You are preparing yourself for future things. Yes. You, you, you're preparing yourself for life mm -hmm. um, until. Yes. What in grammar school that you can point out mm -hmm. that really helped you to, to prepare for, for this world that you are now in? Well, when you read and talking to, to teachers would also always encourage you to do well in school and hope you could get schol a scholarship. But I never thought I would get any scholarship. I know how it works. The bourgeoisie or the people who control were the ones who get scholarship. You know, I never applied for any scholarship in, in Dominica. I left on my own. Well, Hilroy left before me. Rusi helped help us, gave us um, connections on how to get to the U.S. and Canada. And we used that and then on our own. And we, we figured out how to manage the system in the United States to help ourselves and then help all our brothers and friends come up. So I, I think we were prepared for this. I think um, grammar school made, motivated you. I mean, they didn't tell you to, teachers were encouraging you to try to go to universities. And, but the only way they, they always told us we should need to do good, get good grades at A-levels and then go to America. But that, that wasn't working for me. And I knew exactly where I wanted to go. I wanted to go to UCLA. I didn't, I didn't end up there up at UMass instead because California was, uh, when I got there, I figured it was better to stay on the East Coast than to go on the West Coast. And it was a good decision. Let me ask you, how did high school mm. measure with um, Windsor Park? Because you know that there are a number of, of boys mm -hmm. who who would fight um, their way through in high school and having to serve, to do a lot of in, in sports. Yes. And and I, I just want to find out, you are an intelligent young boy. How did Windsor Park measure you up um, for, for your academics? Okay, well, Windsor Park, you learn a lot in Windsor Park. That, we didn't only play soccer there. Uh, if, if you sit down in the stands with those guys on... Any day, every day is like a forum, an educational forum going on on the stands. I remember we were kids and these guys would be telling us stories, some of them true, some of them not true. And they cover all topics. And um, so you get knowledge that you were not exposed to in, in, um, in high school. It wasn't English or math. It was simply information um, that was teach you about life. And so I gained from that. And uh, also, you learn that things could be better at all times. I, I'm a person, even in my life today, I don't believe in com complaining. I just fix things. I take things on my own and find solutions to them. So, and I think I learned that from being a Windsor Park boy. <laughs> Nobody going to empathize with you. If they don't pick you, that's that. They'll pick you tomorrow. If when they bowl in, they hit you with the ball, just rub it and start all over again. It's 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 growing up tough. Um, so you're saying that Windsor Park was not a very easy yard to deal with. No, you got to be tough to be in Windsor Park. So and, and but but not and you have to fight too. Sometimes fellows will make you fight just for fun, put the thing on your shoulder, and but no weapons or anything. Eh? You just saw him and beat. I win some, I lost some. At that time, what your French mother was thinking of you now? <laughs> well, they know where I am. So, and she would come look for us sometimes. But most of the time, we would be back on time. She'd tell us what time to be home. We would be home on time. And sometimes your shirt tear up, but. And um, you would have to clean it yourself and sew it yourself. You, you, you also made, made mention of the fact that this, um, Winter Park helped discipline you. 
Mm-hmm. I, I want to find out um, in the discipline that you're talking about, um, in, in the area of academics, mm-hmm. um, how much did it help in discipline, getting you discipline in, in achieving in reference to academics? Well, one of the things I learned is um, about, when I say I learned about life, you, you, the, world, the world is not homogeneous. All of us are not the same. And then I begin to understand that if you get an opportunity, you have to use it. Because you listen to the people's stories. And the way they would give you stories, they would laugh, but it would be about some unfortunate thing that happened to a guy and how we overcame it. So it was a learning experience. I, I suspect, as I talked to some of my African friends, that used to happen to them. The village in the villages would be under a tree. In um, Windsor Back, it was in the stand. And um, you learn about life in the, in the, among the older guys. So I learned this, what it takes to be a leader. And probably subconsciously, I absorbed that information and made it work for me in the future. No, um, I want to find out in the whole academic aspect of the Windsor Park, what level of discussion that would have been held among boys your age or even older than you? That no, you everybody was older than me. Okay, what, everybody what, so, was older. So, so what, what caused you know to want to stay among these men who would have been having high level no. discussion? What would made you stay there to want to listen to them? Okay, so let's suppose. I read about World War II, and, um, and, but no, none of my friends know anything about it. So those guys in the Windsor Park, we were talking about um, people who went to, to war, and I was fascinated by that, Dominicans in the war. And um, then I realized as a cenotaph there that Dominicans did go to war. Um, and um, you learn about um, abuse, um, who abused their wife and who have children out and all of those stuff. And those things, therefore, didn't become strange after a while because you learned it. You learned how the, the social dynamics and the fabric of your society right there in Windsor Park in the stand. Um, Thomas Baptist and Patrick John were preachers in the park in, on the stand every day, almost every day, talking about things. Totes, Dadai, all those guys were, were there. So you learn from everybody. Learning is, is not that complex. It's so, continuous. What, so what kind of conversation would um, Patrick John have that would want you to? Because Patrick John, I know, I, I, I know that he was a teacher at the, Domin- at the St. Mary's Academy yeah, yeah. once upon a time. Um, that I, I know that he was the Windsor Park or Gardens, um, not Windsor Park, Gardens. Um, curator. Um, yep. Curator. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh-huh. He was also the, the man in charge of the sports uh, at, the grammar grammar school. School. at the grammar at school. the grammar school, yes. Uh, yes uh, so what, what would you have learned from, from these guys? <laughs> these guys would give you stories. You know, um, life is about learning stories. And they would humor. They would tell you about a guy who go for a job and he put all his clo- his tie and his thing and then a penis come out on his pants and <laughs> on his shirt and he didn't get the job. Did that happen? I We do not know. I'm sure the person who would have said so is Mr. Baptist. Yes, yes, yes. Tom, um, uh, Tom Baptist. Yeah. Uh, I Thomas. mean, this guy, this Thomas Baptist would have given you... Oh, yes, he some, was I, I mean, I remember as a boy too, going yeah. in gardens because that, that afterwards he moved into gardens. Yes, yeah, yes. Where, yes. where, where um, mm. Tom Baptist would have been there before La he died. Rock. La yeah. Rock, Cecil yeah. La Rock before he passed. Yeah. You know, all of these guys would have Alina. gone there. And will give you some funny jokes. Oh yes, yes. And to so, this person, I'm still asking myself: Are these stories really the real true? or not? <laughs> uh, but it, it allows you to think and mm. imagine. Yes. So, and that was my background. So, and I learned from the elders, mm-hmm. and I always learn from people older than me. <laughs> so, yeah. No, his brother Claude Bellot and myself went to the chateau together. Oh, we oh, passed yeah. the common entrance together. So his brother, Claude, went to the SMA. Right. right. And I went to the grammar school. That was a good idea. Grammar so, school so, so, was good. <laughs> you know, In so those days, grammar I knew school him. was good. Yeah. No, I also knew his mother mm-hmm. because his mother worked in parking shed. Yep. And his mother also was at the grammar school. Yeah, my mother, oh yeah, parking shed, I forgot that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. His we mother was, a, park, she was a parker in the parking shed. Yeah. Do, yeah. Do, do you know that she was a French woman? Yes. <laughs> she had this Indian hair. Yep. Yes. And uh, I knew her very well. But, yeah. 
I was mm-hmm. read that a lot of um, athletes, you know, by the way. Yes, Le- I, I want to know a, bit, uh, a little bit about that. <laughs> so I followed them too. I mean, Leroy Schillingford, Snakey Peters, Cecil Bramble, Plastic, um, Liblin, and there were more. Um, well, Vigo wasn't that good, but so I decided I'm going to play for grammar school, and I did, in both soccer, track, and you name it. Um, Some people are saying good night to you, Mr. Um, Dr. Um, Peters. Um, mm-hmm. This Albert uh, Williams from he was living in Kevin in those good days. Um, there is also Marina Simon and a number of other people on Facebook are saying hi. Hello, and they're en- they enjoying your discussion. Oh, no, thank yeah. you, thank you. No, I know all of them. <laughs> no, yes, y- yes. One of the things that you must remember is that Dominic um, Grammar School played first division cricket. Yes, and they also played first division football. football. It's not like now. Yep. And I remember they beating the um, even the Combermere. Yeah, oh yeah, we used to beat Combermere every year. Um, Combermere is like the strongest team, but we would be the spoilers. And Mellers would and Thunderbirds guys would try to kill me in the goal. One time, um, Atama playing for Blackburns actually scored me. It was raining that day, and when he took the ball, I, I was off the ground when I caught the ball and I stepped back and and I passed the line, so it was a goal. But yeah, um, Mellers Tison would try to decapitate me. I mean, you know, it's all in the in the interest of fun, of a game. I, I can imagine mm-hmm. um, Clem Atama John yeah. listening to you and maybe laughing at this time. Yeah, yeah, he, he scored me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the whole of, um, all, all those um, forwards, uh, I was small. I was about 99 pounds and I was the goalkeeper playing first division. And we beat most of the teams like Conbermere, we beat Thunderbirds. One time I played outside, um, we put Moise in goal because we were one man shot. And I was playing right wing, and Tom Webb was marking me. So when he decided to, and you know he's big, he tried to charge me, and I shift, and he fell. And in, later on, he say, "The boy, Motika le chwe Donal, me le mo punch out, I he he shift every crowd la we." And and for the whole game, he was following me, trying to decap, um, either send me hospital or something. But I wasn't afraid. I, I mean, and later Tom and all of Thunderbirds became my my friends. When I became secretary of DASA, I took all of them and make them officers to help me transport the West Indies team. But they were very proud of that. Huh? Um, all of them with their cars. So can I sober with Tom and everybody take two people? That was really, um, I, I was really proud of myself that I had done that. And, um, uh, uh, no, I, I want to go back to the Dominica Gamma School and mm-hmm. the preparation that you'd have had in the Dominica Gamma School um, towards black power. Mm-hmm. You you are one of the first of the Dominicans who became very black conscious. Mm-hmm. Um, give us the, the, the story. Well, it came from um, Ruzido, um, Ruzi Douglas. We used to read about, about him in um, in Canada, and uh, I was really impressed with his his um, initiative to try to change life for black people in Canada. And in in grammar school, there were just a, a few of us who read because you only got your news. When you re- read um, about Stokely Carmichael and them in in papers, because n- there's no nobody's interested in it, but we got interested and realized what we and then we read the history. I mean, history is important. That colonialism was not a good thing for the Caribbean. That at the time the Caribbean people need to start to take control of their own resources, their own lives. And even at the age of 16 and 15 years old, we realized that we could make a difference. And I, I have to say we did. You remember we changed the the academy. Um, they threw my brother out of school for his year, and then we shut down all the schools, um, little black power movement, and um, until they took him back. Royal Bank of Canada, if you wasn't yellow, you couldn't work there. We remember you burn a flag in front of the Canadian flag in front of the Royal Bank and things started to change. 
So it's um, we felt we had an impact on on people. I want, I want to go back a little bit about that Royal Bank. I've been hearing quite a lot of that Royal Bank and putting the Canadian flag. Yes. Who were some of the people that were involved in in that? Um, Rosie was was there. Myself, Zapier, um, Hilroy, Brown, and then we had Jean. Him Barabas was there. All of those, I mean, we, we, one of the things we tried to do, we, like guys like Jean and Barabas, Barabas couldn't, wasn't literate, but we taught him about Ho Chi Minh and Mao Zedong, and he could understand it. But they were there. So these were the, the, the kids that were there with us. Oh, and, and was we, by any chance Brian Allen and his people were there? Um, Ron Green, these people? No, Ron was in later on in um, he was in New York and he really helped us. But on that day they weren't there. So. No, no. What was the what was the issue um, fighting against the the Canadians and and having the no? It's the flags? symbolism of colonialism. It's not Canada per se. It's Royal Bank of Canada, and their their policies of they've never had a black manager. They didn't even think about that. You couldn't even be a teller if you was black like me. You had to be cool to, to be. In fact, when my sister graduated from high school, she um, um, in convent, she came second in the island scholarship stop. So she didn't get no scholarship. Well, eventually she left. But um, they came together to work in the bank. And my mother tell her if they find that's the best thing for her, to be a bank teller. And she told them that her daughter was going to go to college, and I'm sure they laughed at her, but we did. <laughs> so it was a, we were a tight-knit family that knew how to make things work for us. And we were very ambitious. So what the authority at that time would have done to, to, to students of, like, like yourself um, fighting uh, against um, the system? <laughs> okay, my... And burning a country's flag? Yes. Oh, they, they harassed us. I mean, my good friend, Evan John, used to come to Four Corners, round us up every night, almost every night, bring us in police station and for us in the charge room. There was never ever charge. They would just intimidate and harass us. So, and during the, um, when they, we shut down the, when Claude and them, Claude, Birdie, um, the four- Birdie Shillingford? Claude, my brother. Birdie Shillingford? Yes. All of them, they were in high school at the time. I was at ministry, I was working. So they brought my brother Derek out of the academy because he's here the, too big. The black power here is too big. So they met. I, I didn't have anything to do with that. The convent leader, um, leadership, grammar school, St. Mary's Academy, West High School, and on a given time, on a given day, they all walk out of the schools on that day. That shocked Dom Rosso and Dominica. And they said they're not going back until they took back Derek, and they did take back Derek. So the police came to me. There's one bloodshed was chief of um, security at the time. He was big, and came to me to find out what I had to do with that. I said, but you're underestimating the, the youth of today. They are the ones who plan this thing, and I support them. And then um, we went to the prime minister, uh, Libel at the time, we had gone to him and told him that they threw out my brother. And I'll never forget what he said. He said, that's not possible. The only way they can throw your brother out of the class is if his head too big to go in the door. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the premier at the time said that? Yes, yes. He was very supportive of the movement for change. So um, so that that was that was really um, um, very supportive. And we appreciated his, his stance. He didn't say anything else. So we knew we would say, but the police would harass us continually. Today I know all of them, they're my friends, but um, Evan's son is my good friend and neighbor. But he used to pick us up all the time, Hilroy and myself, and throw us in the van, bring us up in four corners. So, but yeah, but we felt it was, uh, we used to go to country, in the country, on weekends, hop trucks, and go talk to people in Pebush, in Tibo, in Supriya, on Black Power, Japia, myself, um, so when I see all these fake black power people, they don't know what we did. They, they were never around. All the people you hear on Q95 talking about black power, they were there. We never saw those people. I remember one time, Ruzi sent us to um, 
Tibo. I've never been to Tibo. Anyhow, we went there and we had meetings. I mean, we organized, huh? And um, but then it's late, and we have no place to sleep. So in um, he called um his people from in Porsche. They called Tibo and they put us um up for the night. And when we were leaving, the lady gave us a bill, <laughs> um, um, two sleep, free sleep at two dollars a sleep. <laughs> it was three of us, <laughs> and we so broke we don't have six dollars. So, <laughs> so, yeah, so we were uh, at our age, we were very, very um, progressive, and um, certainly we had a mission in hand at heart. Uh, we really believed that as a country heading for independence, we need to take control of our uh, resources and of our people, and we need to set the direction for the country. We black people. So we have achieved that. Gordon Henderson just sent me via Facebook and mm. he said that um, the Libra coat is brilliant and amusing. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. Which, which is, this one. Um, there's no way that your, your brother cannot um, get to class unless his head is bigger than the door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that coat. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, I think I suspect that coat is going to stay for a long time. <laughs> yep, yep. You know? And, mm. Now, tell us, tell, tell the listening public and the view in public, um, why did you all decide, knowing that Dominica was still an associated state with country, right. why would you all figure out colonialism wasn't the way forward for Dominica at that time? Well, if you, if you remember at that time you younger, you would realize that everything seemed to be out of, to out of our realm in that the organizations, the, the, the institutions that are run by white folks, they're colonial or, or, or supporters of the white folks. They, they never reach out to the rest of the, the, the population. So you find like 1% of the population run everything, government, banks, everything, the same group of people. And that wasn't going to help us as young people in school. Why were they sending us to school if we were not going to run our own country at some time. So we felt that uh, we need to be proactive and start the, the dialogue on um, change. And uh, later on, we call ourselves Movement for Change, MND. So, and um, uh, and uh, I agree, that was um, very, very innovative for us as young people. Um, and remember, part of the thing is that we read. And in those days, there's nothing else to do but Windsor Park plays sports and get involved in an activity. And because of our knowledge and our education, we, we thought hard about this, and, and we felt that was something that could take a time. Remember, we, we produced a newspaper, Twabai. We used to um, use government um, paper and, and stencil those things and sell them in the, uh, in the wee hours of the night to people. So... No, and, no, no. And the, and the topics were all about um, um, controlling your destiny. No, no Donald, mm. um, that, was, that would have been in the late 60s. 60s yes. And uh, getting into the 70s. Correct. Now, how, how educated was our Dominican public to understand what you all were doing and not fight against you all and oh. call you all communists and call you all mm -hmm. rebels and so on. How did this um, um, adult group uh, look at you all? Very interesting because we used to have a forum at the gardens, right? Every Sunday. And Ron Green, Para, all these guys were very helpful, even Julie Johnson, would be talking on issues of change and revolution. And uh, you'd be surprised that hundreds of people would show up and listen to them. Um, when we had demonstration and matches in um, Roseau, one day we were <laughs> we organized a match to Dom Can. Dom Can was another Canadian firm, and um, they were cutting down trees and um, to make lumber, and we felt that would destroy our environment. And at that age, we decided to demonstrate and um, and head to Dom Can. So <laughs> the question you ask is that. Not everybody was supportive. Um, there were people coming. I remember as the, the movement started from Roseau on Great, Great George Street, head into to Canefield. And, um, well, Domcan was where the airport is. 
um, you know, and um, people would hold their, their kids out of the line, mothers, and just grab them. And a, a, a woman with two stones, a lot bought just by um, um, by Laku Philip there. She tell the daughter, the daughter's a convent kid, she in the line with us. She says, sorty, and she have two stones in her hand. So the poor kid had to leave the demonstration. And yeah, so we, we did get a, uh, a lot of um, flack. Older people would ask me, you want to be black power? You ever see black people invent things? And um, of course, I used to read, I say, yeah, we invented um, the traffic lights. We invented a lot of stuff. So yeah, it was important to educate yourself. And we did get flack from the middle class and the bourgeoisie about what are we doing? Um, and um, white people are not that bad. But our issue was not with white people. It was of the, the power that they had over us. So. You mean, you mean our, our nationals, our citizens, um, adults, um, were literally criticizing yeah, what yeah. you were actually doing? But I told you they throw my brother out of school for his year. We all, remember, we had big Afros. So, yeah, the movement, um, we were significant. They took notice of us. Yeah, so. I, I don't know whether he was there at the time when the... Um, Assembly at the old post office. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they, they went down to the uh, river bank. Take yep. gas. Oh, I wasn't there at the time. That's yeah. yeah, I'd left by yeah, that time. When they, yeah, the, when the whole movement got mm -hmm. more structured. Yep. No, no. Let me ask you, Donald. How did <laughs> how did the Dominican public when Rosie came back to Dominica? How did they see Rosie? I remember we were still here, so we supported him, and, and Ruzi is a, a, a good orator. He can talk his way through everything. So whereas people used to read about him in Canada and think he's this big, bad, black poor revolutionary, when Ruzi came and people realized that he's a kind-hearted soul uh, with a big smile and dimples, he, um, they started warming up to him, and he would be there with them. One of the things about... A revolution is that you have to be on the ground, always be in the ground. And that was me in Great Marlboro Street and Windsor Park and Ken Kennedy Avenue and River Street. You have to be on the ground. You cannot lead people from up there. You got to be there with them. So even now, people respect me because they remember me. You, you remember Jeremy? Jeremy and Rosso? I, Jeremy. Jeremy. You remember Jeremy that used to be in town walking uh, as a paro? Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Jeremy, Jeremy used to see me no matter where he, way down to, when he starts, when he starts saying Donald, I know he's he, Donald, that's Jeremy. But I raised with Jeremy in Pong, so he knew me as a kid. So it's true he got in trouble and started doing drugs and stuff, but again, everybody, life is a journey. We. But, but, but Donald, how, how did... How did your friends outside of those like um Hillroy and 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 Para and Desmond? How did your friends see you? Did they see you as a, a guy loving trouble? Just, you know, yeah, basically, they, basically, they, they saw me as a radical. That I wasn't following the rules, so and their parents tell them to avoid me, and I don't blame them because I would I would question everything. I would question everything why things are happening and um and that's pretty troublesome huh? one day um one sunday we sitting on you asked me about sundays so we come out we came out from jack walks we have mango a whole bag, box of mangoes green mangoes and it's around nine ten o'clock eleven we're sitting down by where gashet is now there's there's a little house there, a step on it sand um baba sandrin used to live across there and um they had a, a police, they used to call him Shaggy, Shagaramas. He's short and tough, and he bad. So we are sitting there, and the only guys older than me, Mark, um, Andrew, Barker, um, Clancy, a number of guys are there. And say, boy, somebody say, you know, to take a mangum, does hit fucking Shaggy. Sorry, can I say that? Don't uh, that's his quote. Eh? So I'm so stupid, I'm sitting there, they yeah, man, I can eat Shaggy. So I pick up a mango, I lean back, and I let the mango fly. It hit Shaggy in his back. So Shaggy turned. Now I take off, but I'm the only one who take off. The rest of the guys older than me, they realize if they don't move, you don't know who hit him. 
But I, as I told you, you can't catch me in Roseau. I petty shaggy. I finish. Next thing, I'm sitting on, on the cinema step about half an hour later. And who should come up behind me? Shaggy. And Shaggy bringing me up to the police station now. And a little crowd starting to gather following me. Now, I don't care about being um, brought to the police station or arrested, but I figure what my mother going to do. So he brought me up and um, Sergeant Telemark, a guy who used to wear his pants on the set, he was the charge officer. And he knew my mom. So instead of booking me, the man called my mother for me. And she come from grammar school, put leaks on me in the charge office and bring me back home. So I learned my lessons. But yeah, it was it was fun, but it was also provocative. You, if you want to hang with the big guys, you got to pay it off, and that's what happened. So, no, no, you you had as you said guys like Hilroy Thomas. Mm -hmm. um, Hilroy was from Atkinson. That's correct. How how did Hilroy able to get into Rosu and to to be measured up with guys in Rosu like yourself to 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 fight the system? Well, the same thing, he, he, he read a lot. And um, he used to live in Bath Road. And, um, we, and he, Hillary, and myself, we would exchange books and stuff and more. And then we were all in touch with Ruzi. So and, um, if gradually he, would go to, he was going to the academy, but he was always with us. And actually, he was the first one when he graduated and was teaching to have his own little bachi. So that was like an office for us. Then I, I got one too. So I had one, he had one. And we'd um, put papers together, the Twavai, write articles and stuff like that. So we were really progressive early. So And, and Hiroi was always a reader. He still reads. Um, and, um, and our knowledge base was the same. And we had the same idea. We were going to America no matter what. Scholarship or no scholarship. And none of us got scholarships. None of, no black boy ever got scholarship. <laughs> I don't know, or unless there's a silent one, but we didn't even apply him. Para Rivier. Yes. Um, Para Rivier, I think, came from the country himself, from Cottage. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how did Para himself measure up? Well, Para was a historian, and he, and he was a, a, also a man of strong convictions. He really believed in Pan-Africanism, and, and um, he taught it. And he lived it. And um, and so we took our examples from guys like him. Ron Green was a radical also and um, who believed in, in um, uh, equity. And so at that time, everybody was on the same page. I mean, um, we, and, we, and we were in no political parties. Eh? You remember that. Black Power movement was a movement for change, not to be in government. We didn't want to be in a political party. So... Um, Healy Renner is the only one that would dabble with um, Labour Party, but none of us were uh, involved in the parties. At that time in the 70s, um, I'm sure that some of your parents would have been part of the yes, um, freedom. The UPP and the Freedom, freedom Party. Party. Yeah, yeah, they were. Uh, yeah. So, But you did not see the need to, to, to be part and parcel of a, of no, a political organization. No, 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 no. Do you believe that the, the public, the, the greater public, would have seen you all anti government? Some. Some people were saw us that way, but I think we got our credibility because we were people came to listen to us because we were not in any political party. You know, we the forum in the gardens on um on Sundays were there were big crowds coming to listen to us, and then they then they it, it, there was one also later on in Borough Square in Portsmouth where Power and them would would carry those things out so we were educating the people and that was what it was it was just an educational forum we'll talk about patrice lumumba and um che Guevara. we talk about ho chi minh um so um yeah mao Zedong. So, so people were getting educated so how how did the grand manor that came from from cuba help mm. in sensitizing you all on some of the Latin American um, um, proactive leaders? Well, the, the Cuban Revolution was significant in that we could show people that colonialism can be defeated. I mean, Cuba defeated America <laughs> in doing the Bay of Pigs and, um, and control their way of life. Um, but Dominicans were never um, interested in, in socialism, huh? as you can see. So and um, so we didn't have a lot of support in terms of of um, selling uh, 
socialism in Dominica, but they were listening to us in terms of change. They recognize that they want equity in our society where we control our own destiny. Someone is on the telephone. Let's go to the telephone. Good evening to you, caller. You're live. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Yolanda Mason Schillingford. And I just would like to add something to the conversation. Go ahead, go, go ahead Yolanda. Go ahead, Yolanda. Good evening. Yeah, we are listening, Yolanda. Go ahead. My name is Yolanda Mason Schillingford. And I'm calling first. We are actually listening, I, Yolanda. I, we are listening. Just I would like to give Donald Peters more all the credit in the world. Okay, I would like to give Donald Peters all the credit in the world. You you know what you're doing, caller. You're Donald actually listening to yourself uh, via the social media, and it's going to be delayed. So just continue talking, and we'll understand what you're saying. So just load on the volume on your on your PC or your telephone. Like What's that? Okay. okay, I would like to give Donald Peters all it in the world for the contribution he has made to editing Peters' generation. Caller, I suspect that you are someplace in the house where you are not going through properly. So can you... Move away a bit, please, so that you can continue your conversation with us. Okay, I hope you can hear me. I'm going upstairs. Yes, you. We are hearing you better. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes. So you you were saying yeah. Credit. Can you hear me now? Yes, I'm hearing you better. Okay, I have the iPad off, everything off. I would like to give Donald Peters all the credit in the world. For helping educate his generation and mine. I remember those SMA days when my husband, Birdie, his brother, Claude, and all what was going on with SMA, because I was a convent girl at that time, and I was right in the middle of the mix. It was my brother, Roy, that Donald wanted to bring to the States. And at that time, he did not want to go. And I said, Mommy, I'll go. And Donald said, you sure you're ready? I said, yes, I am. And Donald sent for me to go to school, took me in his home with his wife I didn't know, and protected me because all he would say, I don't want Mommy to kill me for her child. And it wasn't only me. I met a lot of Dominicans that was in Boston because of Donald. And he never stopped. My nephew Kim came to Plattsburgh when Donald was there. And sometimes we don't give people their flowers when they're alive. I want to give Donald all his flowers while he's there. On the second note with the SMA issue, St. Mary's Academy does not get enough credit for the contribution it has made to Calypso, to politics, to everything that was going on in Dominica at the time. The guys who met with E. Olibla, Donald mentioned his brother Claude. Again, was my husband, Birdie Schillingford. Percival Murray, Glenn John, and Michael Zamo. Those were the five guys that met with E. Olibla, and that is their story to tell. I know lots about the meeting, but that's not my story. That's Birdie's story. You know, you know, you know, Mason, Mason Schillingford. I, I would need your number so that I too can have a conversation with you. I was just saying earlier on to Donald that I need, I need the number of your husband, um, Birdie Schillingford, who is who I know very well. I'm short Birdie Schillingford very well. Um, who in those? Birdie was following Donald in sports. Windsor Park. He can tell you stories about crashes they had going to get ice and when they would have to draw the lines on everything but this is not my story it's birdie's story so, so where's birdie so so where's birdie tonight 
He's not here right now. Oh my God! You would have to make contact with Woody yourself. Yes. And remember, yes. The night Rosie Douglas came there. Lots of historians. The night Rosie Douglas made his entry into Dominica, and his visit to Four Corners, I was right, Randall, passing water to Birdie to give to Rosie. It was SMA boys after night study that he came. He heard about and he was waiting. And it was right there on my Baptist step when the crowd started to gather and everything just unfolded. So at that, I'll leave it alone because Donald will finish telling the stories. And we, SMA boys and Rosa boys, will tell you about the parents. Those years pitied parents against children, siblings against siblings, because some people understood and some didn't understand. But those of us who had the vision, we saw where this was going. And they has to thank people like Donald, Para, Ruzi, Ron, the SLA boys that just sort of saw them as mentors and all what came after was a lot of the progress that was made at home. Let me ask you. It was a turbulent time. Let, let me and ask you. Let me ask you, how did your mother, um, having to deal with the issue Cecil, of... that is another story <laughs> for another day, because uh -huh. it is pain, it is progress, it is everything, and thank God she's lived to see 96 years of age, and I will continue to say the Labour Party politicians of that era did not break her spirit. And today, I love Evan John to death. Groovy Bat is my cousin by my father. But I remember those days that they would run those guys up in four others. And the younger kids who were just looking for knowledge, pick them up. You'd see them next day, they come out from the police station, half their head shave. But that didn't break the spirit of Dominica's youth. And today, a lot of us have to be very thankful for those years the late 60s and the 70s for making us the people that we are. On behalf of my family, I still want to say, Donald, we love you. We will continue to love you and may God continue to bless you and yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Donald, that was powerful. Yes, she's a bright woman, a master teacher in Boston. So, and that's one, she, she was a little black power too, you know. She was right there in Four Corners. That's where they lived. So she knows the story. So as I said, all the people who hear on other radios t talking about black power, they were not there. They didn't feel the handcuffs on them. We were there. And we never gave up. She, she said that you brought her to, 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 to the United States. She's one of them I brought, yeah. yeah. Dr. And, and Thomas and myself brought about 109 Dominicans between two of us to America. <laughs> that's amazing, isn't it? That's very much amazing. I'm lost for words. And then when I became a vice chancellor, I bought another 417, including the prime minister, to, to America. We have to talk about that. Let's go back to the telephone. Good evening to you, caller. You're live. Sorry about that, caller. You're, uh, um, um, you know, you're giving some real amazing story. This young lady, uh, Mason, just called. But let's go back to the telephone. Good evening to you, caller. You're live. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Tell Donald for me. Talk about the um, Prime Minister of, of um, Canada. When he put the demonstration on him from the uh, like, um, from the Prime Minister Trudeau. When he put the demonstration on him, the Canada demonstration. Tell him, tell him this was that for you. Uh, Donald, you got that? Oh, yeah, that was um, yes. when the Thank you. jail Ruzi. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, um, remember... Uh, in those days, black students just went to universities. They take the they do their work and get out of there. But Rusi didn't thought that was not that was in the future. We had to fight um, for recognition and fight to be equals in Canada. And and um, they set up a professor, a racist. He he marked the black students' paper down, and the white ones would get the grade. So they switched. The papers, they they give him the white boy, the black boy gave the white students a paper. He gave it to the professor. He got an A, 
and the, and the professor gave the black white boy paper a, a D, and then they took they took it to the administrators and they ignored Rusey and them, so they occupied um, the the computer room. Uh, they figured that's the most important room on on uh, um, campus, and if they wanted some attention, that would be the safe place to go, and they, and if computer caught on fire, some we don't know what happened, and they blame Rusey, and um, so we we had demonstrations in Canada and the U.S. constantly, until eventually Rusey was freed. But yeah, this in in those days, um, guys. We were committed to those things. We 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 thought that if we were going to be educated, why are you going to get educated just to make money for yourself? <laughs> and they, uh, what about your brothers and your sisters in Dominica and the rest of the Caribbean? So we were Pan-Africanists. We were international people fighting for our black brothers and sisters all over the world. Someone else on telephone. Good evening to you. Call your life. Remember Petrudo? Petrudo, remember when he came when he came here? He was in the Fort Young and he had to go to the state house and he had a candle demonstration. Oh, yeah, yeah, but I, I wasn't there at the time. Thank you. Uh, no, no, no um, Donald, mm. you, you made mention of while in the United States, or oh, before I go into while you were in the United States, mm. how did you see at that time you would have been out of Dominica, mm. but how did you see the dreads versus the issue of black, black power. power yeah how did you see that that time? really bothered me though because what what happened is that <clears throat> um these people who call themselves red were mistakenly associated seemed to be associated with the black power movement and they were two separate organizations we were we didn't even understand who these people were they, these people were basically criminals um living out in the base harming people so at, at that time, we really got, I think that was basically the end of our movement in the U.S. because in the U.S. we still continued to make MND movement for New Dominica and try to fund it. But when these things started happening, we just shut it down because people were trying to make a connection between us and, and Rasta men and stuff. And that wasn't our goal. That was never our, and we didn't even know these people. So... But yeah, people have heard these stories where they thought that we had something to do with um, starting this movement that um, that gave police a hard time and actually murdered people. That was certainly not our objective. But 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 looking at looking back at um, even some of the people that would be involved in the black consciousness, mm -hmm. you don't think. Um, the other generation, the younger generation, hearing their views about the black consciousness uh, helped in creating that whole um, negative aspect of the life that the other Dominicans that people felt had lands and felt had money. D didn't you feel that yes, the that movement a, of black consciousness created that? Yeah, well, that was a total misunderstanding. How are you going to be attacking a farmer who is a black man growing his crops and, and raising his family and trying to make a living? That is not what we... So that's where this disillusion came through and, um, and your interpretation is probably correct in that um, they associated the movement for change for empowerment of black people to mean that you could abuse other black people and and we that that wasn't the objective did you all speak against it then oh yeah we um i remember in canada and, and, and brooklyn when I, I i was invited to talk on a number of areas and i would i would address it internationally um but i tried in um at the, at the time i try we all tried to say you never heard from dr thomas or myself on things to do with Dominica. I don't know. I think my policy was if I'm in America, if I'm in America, there are black people in America, I'll fight for them too. And um, and so I did what I had to do for black people. No, no, no Donald, um, there is someone in, in the U.S. who is saying that um, respect Donald Peters from my early days in Boston always a force for change and a great influence in many of our lives a wall drawn individual making mention of that well, i know who that is yes. yes thank you yeah thank you yeah. well i try to encourage people to reach their potential because that is what we have to do to get all our people 
one time the Prime Minister of Dominica, Mrs. Charles, Ms. Charles, um, I was that's when I, I was trying to I brought forty seven Dominicans to the University of Mississippi. And the public service commission, they imagine that, right to the university asking me to be I should give the scholarships to them so they can do it because that is the government policy. <laughs> So I was very rude, though. I told them that the, the scholarships are called the Vice Chancellor's Scholarship. I have $1.71 million to give scholarships to students, deserving students. And I, I decide, I, Donald Peters, decide who gets scholarship, not um, public service. Why would I do that? <laughs> and Because um, you know the experience that you've gone through yes, as yes. a boy, you know, but the I public know, servant. And if I give it to them, I know who gets friends. It. Yes, yes. So, so yeah. you decided that they were not going to get no, that? No, no, no. We'll, uh, we'll handle it from the university ourselves. And, and um, mm-hmm. you, are in the, you are stating that the prime minister was one of those students? Yes, yes. He was give a, give us, tell us some, about that. Well, he, uh, I, um, he was at um, um, New Mexico. They were doing a diploma in education. He and... Um, and his aunt asked him to call me and, um, and basically said, um, because he's not going, he doesn't want to go back to Dominica and try to find another scholarship to come and do his degree. So he did call me and um, I told him, um, yeah, he could come down. Um, let's see what we can do for him. Before I, within the next week, school was just about to start. He rented a car and the man moved all his stuff and moved to Mississippi has been positive. And um, so I took care of him and... Um, and he was one of the students. <laughs> I gave all these students, all for the, um jobs on campus in my division, and, and the division of student affairs and enrollment management. He's the only one that find his own job, and he got he was working with the athletics department in uh, managing the bands, <laughs> and he got a lot more money than the, we were paying the other students. So he was always a, a, a go getter and um, being a proactive person. So and he graduated and took off and came back and joined Ruzi and today is the prime minister and I'm just a professor. <laughs> so, no, but I'm proud of him. No, yeah. no, would Vince Henderson be one of these students that was actually... Uh, he was at New Mexico too, I think, but no, we didn't see Vince. I, Vince later on um, went on to Northeastern University where I was a, a graduate. Uh, but no, I, he was in the, in the group that we brought to Mississippi. You'll be able to tell us some of the names that you maybe remember <laughs> that that you would have given assistance and and uh, and, and have reached their, their, their uh, not their full potential but have uh, reached uh, hundreds uh, of uh, them hundreds uh, hundreds. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know if you know some of these. I might have have forgotten them. Um, um, people from Portsmouth, um, um, Karam, um, Max Karam's daughter, um, um, people that you'd know. Um, there are too many, but I can't remember these people. I just, they're just names. I'm sure um, Brain would remember some of them. Well, well no, I know um, you did a lot in terms of empowering Dominicans in terms of the education. Yep. And one of the things I know uh, is that you're very instrumental, together with the Prime Minister and Hilroy Thomas, Dr. Hilroy Thomas, in actually starting the, uh, the um, college. Yes, we, um, that know. was Ruzi's. <laughs> Ruzi has a. Ruzi called me one day and tell me, "Okay, I have some money, and I think we should build a university in Dominica." I say, "Comrade, I know you don't smoke. Well. <laughs> how, how are we gonna do that?" He say, "You have a grant, nine thousand U.S. dollars to start a whole university." <laughs> so I came down and um, I met with him, and we and his concept was to have a a major university with five campuses. One in in Roseau, one in the north, one in the south, and one in the east. Four campuses. Um, um, liberal arts would be in Roseau. High tech would be in Portsmouth. Um, um, agriculture would be in Castle Bruce, and one more. And he wanted a medical school. Eh? So I told him, okay, here's how that happened. You cannot build a university. A university for it to be a university, it has to have schools, school of law, school of medicine, and as and then. And you have to apply for um, accreditation, etc. But you can build a college, and you already have the, the the nucleus of that. You had a teachers college, you had a sixth form college, you had um, um, a technical college. So if you brought all of those things together, they, we could make that work as a start. And um, so, but that time I was still I'm at the university, uh, State University of New York, 
and I needed help. So we sh- I bought a ticket for Hilroy. He came down and um and work with we work with comedians and and um and set up the groups to help. Uh, by the way, I should take this opportunity to to extend my condolences to Mr. Zaki Pollock's family who died today. I understand he helped us um, put the college together, and he was the first chairman of the board. I think pe- people forget, but. So we we did this, and um, and um, uh, and Prime Minister Skerritt was Minister of Education at the time, and he got some flack in trying from civil servants in trying to push the college through. We wanted to open it in 2002 because by that time, um, um, Prime Minister um, Douglas had died. So, um, but um, in the end, he succeeded, and it opened in 2002. And That's um, interesting so what you just said, you know, mm, um, Donald, mm, that when Roosevelt Skerritt was trying to um, ensure that we got the state college, yes. that uh, the public officers yes. um, gave him flack, and today they might be taking praise for it. Yes, yes, yes. And some of them even work with him, still working with him. Well, I, I can, I can <laughs> say I was in the planning division. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wouldn't call names. <laughs> I have to protect. I have to protect my colleagues in education. I know there was a number. Of, there, were, there were a number of committees, and I, I and I can I can I can tap my right. my my. Yeah, I, I, I know, put committees. I can tap, I can you were the committees. Yes. I can tap my. And, and, I, and I know and I know the, the house that they, they they worked in. Yes, yes. That right, right across the, right, right across, across the, on, on on High Street. Right. Yes, right. yes, yes. Right. Yeah, where the Gist building it. was. But that's why the college is so good because we put up committees so people can give us feedback on what they want to see in, in right. the uh, college and that, that was helpful. But one of the things um, Bryn, is that bureaucracy our people live on bureaucracy That and that is the thing I hate the most in my life. We have a joke about bureaucrats. When you tell them to cut tape, they cut it lengthwise and I, I and the Prime Minister is somebody who doesn't like bureaucracies either bureaucracies in Africa and the Caribbean have paralyzed the region it's rules and rules and rules and some of them don't even know why the rules are there. And most of the time it's to protect them. And our country is not going to go forward unless we revolutionize our systems of governance and, and get people to appreciate the citizens of a country, serve them, and serve them well. Donald, on Facebook also, um, Tina Bell, um, she said that... Um, she was at the Ministry of Education. She, that's what she said. Trouble. She said that she... she <laughs> She worked together at the. You all worked together at the Ministry of Education. That's right. Um, and health. They thought I was at crazy. At the time, in, in our young days, <laughs> um, on leaving school. Yes, that's true. So Tina thought you were crazy. Why yeah, everybody in Ministry of Education thought I was a madman? <laughs> why, why would you think so? <laughs> when I told them I was going to America, they said laughing at me. They <laughs> say, "Okay, are you going to get a visa?" I said, "That will come," and I never returned. So. But yeah, I used to do crazy things like, um, well, not crazy things, but same thing. Instead of teachers from the, con- there are 55 primary schools. Um, schools. These uh, d- principals have to come to town to get a box of chalk. They have to fill out some kind of form and stuff. So when I became the vote clerk, I just tell them, send anything to me and I give it to the, the health. We, we used to be Ministry of Education and Health. And every morning, health, Paho vehicle going out. So they must be going to a village. I say, where are you going? Pebbles. Okay, take the two boxes of chalk for them. So I set up my own system. <laughs> and I and after that, I used to go to villages and principals would cook for me and stuff because it was like a miracle. Anything they wanted, they just get it to me and I'll get it to them. Somebody's on the telephone. Let's see what the person has to say. Good evening to you, caller. Yes, good evening to the doctor and good evening to them host. Now, doctor, you're saying some great thing. I listen carefully. Now, we have a little bit. Mm-hmm. I talked to an educated person the other day about Mr. Great. I call him my national hero, Mr. Rosie Douglas. He might tell me, Rosie is an idiot. No, I don't even know a doctor they call soldier in St. Martin with a man I have a book so for 22 years. Mm-hmm. And I hear that brother talk about brother Rosie and I was talking about from my eye. So what are you saying there now? I love what I'm doing more about brother Rosie based on what you're saying because I hear people say Marcus God was an idiot. Same way. You over. So I am listening. You is a great man. Give thanks for life. Bless up. Well, Ruzi was our hero and, and he wasn't an idiot. <laughs> there is, he's one of the reasons I'm here. So. No, no. Renick Thomas um, in Canada says, I'm happy to learn about your decision not to bend to the request of the authorities rather than stick uh, to your commitment to help those who were seeking 
avenues for higher education across the seas. Blessings, bro, and continue the good works even if you are retired. Oh, thank you. Before um, Dr. Peter's comment, if uh, Zaki Pollock was a great man in education. Yes. He said was, uh, right? He, he, yeah, he w I work with him. Mm -hmm. He passed away work, today. I work in the Ministry of Planning. Mm -hmm. So I knew him and I know his love for education and I know how much he was a very good person in terms of innovation. And I know, for instance, Don, Dr. Donald Peters, Dr. Heroy Thomas, uh, the Prime Minister, Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, and Zaki Pollock must get credit for the establishment of the state college that we have today. And he you was know, very as, instrumental as, as, in As that. you're saying that, you know, recently, we, three of us had a conversation. Yeah, but don't, don't. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not going to go into the conversation, but three <laughs> of us had a conversation. And uh, it, it was amazing right, right. learning a number of things. Right. And, Rindo, and he knows, he knows. And, and, and I, people, I know, I know. And people <laughs> he got who, it right. Yes, yeah. and people who, who, who were just against the system. I know, I know. I against know, the, the construction know, of the school. Of the, of the creation. The creation of the school. Of the the college was created by the four people you just The mentioned. four persons yeah. created it. Right. Repeat the names again. <laughs> Saki Pollock, Hilroy Thomas, Dr. Hilroy Thomas, Dr. Donald Peters, and Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt. He having to lead the charge, that's Dr. Skerritt, under tremendous pressure. Oh yeah, yeah. I know he had pressure. I know the pressure was great from within. Not from without, but from within. Mm -hmm. And so when you see the college there today, you must give those four gentlemen full credit for its establishment. So, so Donald, um, 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 if you are to name the college, uh, after who you would name the college? <laughs> he, 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 must, he, must, he must say, I don't know. I would, I mean, I have, I have, um, one of the things on the blackboard I never achieve is getting people to, like the mayor should change all the names of road. Great Marlboro Street should be the Donald Peters Road. <laughs> but but I think the college um, down the line, as we get older, need to... Um, honor these people who contributed to its existence and build it and um, name buildings after them. And not me, uh, but definitely Dr. Thomas, um, Prime Minister Skerritt, and um, um, Paul, um, Pollock, um, who was the first chairman and who worked tirelessly to help us build the institution. Let's, let's go to the telephone. Good evening to you, caller. Good evening, Dr. Donald Peters. Good evening. Good evening, Cecil. And good, evening, good evening, my brother evening. and friend. Good evening. good evening, my brother and friend. It's a pleasure hearing you, but you're sounding powerful this evening, man. <laughs> David. <laughs> All right, I'd like to see you in my office. I need to reprimand you for the bad language you have used on the radio this evening. <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is Donald Peters, right? Yes. And I, uh, Cecil, Cecil <laughs> under my portfolio, I, I, I have seen a thing called censorship. So I, I may I may have to call you in tomorrow as well to uh, ask you how you could have allowed that. We apologize. Well, well you see, we, we don't we don't have delay systems, and that's why I'm trying to tell people that we are so open and yeah, free so in our society that we don't have. It's a good thing that you brought that up, you know, so, because some people are of the view that we are censoring people. Oh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> But, but doc i've been i've been i'm listening to the the conversation and i i commend the the laku program for enlightening us on a number of things that have taken place uh throughout times even before my time True. and as i'm no longer spring chicken i i i i i i, I, None I, of I us still are. i still range to think that there are things that happened before my time but i'm happy that people like you who are still with us and hopefully will be with us for a very, very long time, uh, are still able to come and share the stories. I heard of the passing of, of, of Zaki Pollock today. Uh, that's a man I knew um, from, from, a, from childhood. And uh, many people wouldn't know I, too, was part of one of those committees in setting up the, 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 the Dominica State College. Right. Uh, it is interesting to note who would have been the chairman of the committee I was on, but that is another story. I, I, I know, I know who was. Time. I know who was. <laughs> yeah. That well, is another story for another time. <laughs> but, 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 uh, Doc, I... I oh, hold on, hold on, caller. Hold on, caller. Hold on, caller. Yes. W would you mind maybe belt out that person? <laughs> no, that's okay. I'll leave it where it is. <laughs> 
I'll that might be Seth Sealing himself, right? Yeah. We're having a laugh, no, right? We're just having a laugh. No, definitely it wasn't me. Definitely it wasn't me. Not a laugh. I'll message you to tell you, but I suspect I think you know who it is. All right, I think you do. Yes. But um, the the you mentioned something there, Donald. I, I did not intend to call this evening. I was just listening. But you mentioned something there, and I would like to to put it uh, on you to take this by the hand, changing the names of the streets in Roseau from this colonial past and make them more relevant and identifiable to the people today. I have... A brain would would note that even on the radio, I have suggested even naming certain streets: Doctor Lennox Honiture Drive, Caricom Street, other other people, Seniorit Avenue. We already have Dame Eugenia Charles Boulevard, thank God. But there are other streets in Rosa. What what on earth is Liang Lane? And and what, is there Kings Lane? Bo- Kings Bo- Lane Street, Mm-mm. Fields Lane, mm-hmm. and these things. These things need to be. I think we we should, Doctor Peters. I think you should lead the charge in 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 probably put a, a, an ad hoc committee together. Uh, we like committees, yeah. but uh, maybe just to make suggestions as to the naming, complete suggestions. I like what you said earlier. You're there for solutions, so not just say change the name, but name, give suggestions as to the name. I've always suggested that the street behind the stadium, from Bath Road to um, Valley Road. We should name it Caricom Drive, and we put the flags of Caricom. This can be a tourist attraction. They put the flags okay. of Caricom and little plaques of the various countries in Caricom, um, and, and have them flying there. When Caricom leaders come down to Dominica, they can go there for their photo op. It's picturesque, right next to the Roseau River. It is also nice when cricket is being played. That's something that can be shown and showcased. And you know this this is something that these are things we can we, we, we can do. I'd like to walk or drive on Dr. Donald Peters Road <laughs> or, or what have you, you know. But yeah. but I, I think we, we should take the lead in that. But Doc, while you're there, um, I noticed that you have talk, spoken about a lot about education. You have spoken briefly about sports. Mm-hmm. But what about your role in health? I know you you were in mm-hmm. you have been involved in healthcare. I know you were um was it um uh, what was the position at the West Indies Cricket Board? I see you. I was yes, CEO you. of the the West Indies Cricket Board. So so many people would not know, would not think of when they hear Donald P- Peters, they think of college. But what about your role in hospitals and what have you? What about your role in cricket yeah. and that sort of thing? But I, I just would like to. I know probably you want to settle down and retire. So probably that's something you could look at, put a paper together. I, I could help in changing the names of these streets in Rose all the way from um what they call this um Raven Cock yep. all the way to Victoria Street. I, I think we can every street should be renamed and and, 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 and we can come up with something that can do that. But but oh. Doc, uh, it's good to hear about the good things you have done and you continue to do for Dominica. Uh, I thought um, at one point that um, every Friday afternoon I would spend across the road from DBS Radio on Victoria Street there, but you told me you you did not want to go there. (laughs) 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 I was looking forward to going there. Every Friday afternoon, that's where I would have spent my afternoon, I'm sure. Yes. But uh, (laughs) But we can can revise that. But on 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 your subject of... um, renaming the the streets i think it is important and i will try my best to convince the powers that be that we should make well, that I, an I, exercise I, 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 the, the, um, because uh, that is the last vestiges of colonialism Can co- co- students need to know what what is king's lane and um yeah. great judge what, what judge who, who is great what, judge what, what, which what, judge what, what, are we talking about well, well, I, i'm going to say something to, to, to the both of you all yes. i remembered as mayor of the city of Roseau, and i will yes. never ever forget that in my lifetime yes. I wrote to the minister of uh, um, tourism at the time, who was Mister, who is now the president of Dominica, Charles Sarah. Yes. And I said to him, and I gave him recommendations. And you know what he said to me? Go and make a survey. I said to him that I think I need all of the names of the streets of Rosso to be changed. And, and we, I remember calling Cox Street as um, Senior <laughs> Street. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. Yep. And um, that was the first president. And, and I and I remembered giving Kennedy Avenue the name of calling it. Um, Olibla 
streets. Yep. You know, yes, I felt yes. it was important to name I Olibla after um Shan Olfrey. Yeah. Shan Olfrey after in Bath Road because she had this business in, in Bath Road and so uh, on. Uh, so uh, I, I remember doing this and and, and, and the president at well, sorry, the Minister of Tourism at the time, Charles Sapper said to me that I have to go out and do a survey. And I felt um for me at that time I felt that was not right to go out and make a survey for something that was easy. So I think that I'm um, I'm um, that you have made a very good point. And I think Donald said that he's going to help champion it. I, I want well, to be on board. Well, well, uh, Donald, you you have my full support, and any way I can help in in whatsoever in whatsoever way, I, I I think it it would be would be something good to 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 put forward in in changing the names of the streets in Roseau and having meaning um, um, it, to as to what is going on in the country because what what is Great Marlboro Street? I, yeah. I, I, he what is Marlboro? <laughs> he was a lord. He was a lord. He was a King lord. George the Fifth. King George the Fifth. King George the Fifth. King George the Fifth. King George the Fifth. More. <laughs> great George Street. No, great, judge, great judge died long, 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 long ago. Yeah. And the streets. Who, who, um, who is Victoria? <laughs> for a young nation um, to have relevance um, and for young people to understand parts of the history, the, the streets must have some kind of significance to their life. And um, and we have 44 years of names that we can use. We must be able to find names of our heroes to put in there to replace the colonialist titles because we fought for our independence, but we still have those vestiges of colonialism. It's about time we take um, a caller. Let them go. Ah, uh, sorry about that call. Let's go on. Let's go back to the telephone. Good e good evening to you, caller. Your life. I'm sorry about that caller. You have to call us back. Yes, I'm Bryn. Yeah. Very interesting that a um, caller raised the issue of sports and you being uh, involved with West Indies cricket. What role did you play there, Doc? Oh, actually, I did a lot for West Indies cricket. When I took the job, I know they, they, I had a lot of opposition, no? but I, I, I won out because of my um, experiences. I know, and see, I know about um, intellectual property rights and stuff. I made that argument. But when I... Uh, took over, we were $57 million in deficit. You know, we had just hosted the World Cup and they had spent a lot of money that they didn't have. And at the time, we didn't know how to get any money. But we, one guy, Isan Mani, um, a Pakistani who lives in London and owns a bank. He used to be on ICC. And he called, we were in London and he called um, Julian and said if he can talk to us. And he asked me, if I want to make more money for a sinners, I say, sure, why wouldn't I? Because we broke. He say, you're doing something wrong. You sell all your your rights to Sky TV, which is the British TV, and they pay you a sum of money, but that's not enough. You need to break it up into two. Um, England, when you play England, Sky will cover it and have the rest of the world. So I met with Arma. I, I, that was a good idea. I... I told him if he consulted me and I went back to him. Then I had Pete Mawick um, consulting firm and we put the RFP together and um, bottom line we and we had to be careful and because if it leaked and you know the board have a lot of talkers on it. There are 16 of them. So we couldn't share that information with the board because when the people they had to bid for the, the rights and eventually India, an Indian company bid 83 million and the Sky TV be $22 million. So I, I bought in $105 million to West Indies board. They paid their $57 million debt and they ended up with a ton of money, which that's how I put together the 40 cricket tournament, etc., etc. But yeah, so I did well. And I beat Sri Lanka, I beat England, and I beat um, Bangladesh. And then I left. <laughs> I, I left on a winning note. What is your views um, with this present administration? Well, one of the and, uh, I need a whole show for this because I want to write a piece called In the Belly of the Beast since I was in the West Indies. And um, part of the problem is there's no West Indies board. There's a United West Nation. Every board member on the team, all 16 of them, represent six countries. And throughout the time they want to get their, their people on the team so they can get elected. Because if you're a trainee and there are no trainees on the team, 
people going to throw you off the West Indies, but they're not going to vote for you. So that's part of the problem. Secondly, I do not believe the level of talent in the Caribbean can match anywhere in the world. They don't play enough. You know, cricket is a thing. You have to play eight hours a day. If, the, if you're a professional cricketer, you can play cricket for two hours a day. You have to play eight hours. Whether you're playing or not, you have to train for eight hours a day. That's not happening. So the, the inconsistency you see is, is, a, is a direct result of players not preparing to be big times. As, and, they were, and as soon as they score a couple of runs, we put them on the team and then they flock. So there are a lot of issues. And um, the board is, is probably useless. And um, the selectors are useless to, you know, they, um, sometimes you wonder. You don't think, that, don't think that's strong words? Yeah, well, they, you see the teams they put out. I mean, they have teams, they have kids who can play who never uh, make the team. Let's just so, hold that for. Let's go to the telephone quickly. Good evening to you, caller. Mm. Good evening, gentlemen, and good evening to Doctor Daniel Peters. Yes, sir. Uh, one thing for you, no worry. All I have to tell you, sorry to say, boy, is thank you, thank you, mm-hmm. thank you for what you guys did mm-hmm. at the time all you did it. Because it saved a lot of us Dominicans, it gave us perspective and direction. And I just, I just want to say one thing in terms of naming of the the places and things. Take for example, take for example, Windsor Park. Let's change that to Urban Chilling Ford. Mm-hmm. You understand them kind of thing there, and I can tell you, you guys all. All of you in that time were shaped here of a lot, a lot of young Dominicans. Thank, Thank you. you very much, and God bless you always. Thank, Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah, man, go and take the thing for me. Thank you before. very much, caller. Yes, you were, you were making the point, but before that, um, Dr. Um, Peters, um, Carol Schillingford says, this is, uh, this is real history. Thank you for these... Thank you for this conversation. I learned so much um, this evening. Um, another person said, um, that's Matilda. She said, whoa, I've learned something tonight for sure. And uh, um, Rosalind Savre um, says, says that um, she's watching. Let's go back to the telephone. Good evening to you, caller. You're live. Good evening to you, caller. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you doing tonight? Fine, yeah. fine, fine. Good evening. Good evening. All right, good good evening. I'd like to say good evening to all of you and the doctor, the good doctor. My name is Jefferson, Jefferson Challenger. I, I currently uh-huh. reside in Pocasse, USA, you know, as I say, but <laughs> I, uh, I, wanted, I wanted to um, second Yolanda Mason and give him Dr. Peters his flowers while he's alive, you know. I was in Boston during the years when he was there, and I'm aware of all the, the good people that he helped, he and Dr. Thomas. Uh, they assisted them in their education. So I went, I told Alvin Jean Pierre that you were going to be on tonight. So uh-huh. I'm not sure he's listening currently. However, on behalf of Mr. Jean Pierre, I'd like to say we appreciate you and we thank you for helping your brothers and sisters over the years with all the things you have done, whether it's in Dominica or the USA. So thank you very much, sir. We appreciate you, man. Thank yeah, you, my man. brother. Thank you. Thank you. And, all and right. stay, stay warm in Pongasi. <laughs> 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to do that, man. It's All coming, right. it's coming, yeah. All right, then. Thank you. Thank you very much, caller. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you very, very, very much for, for that. Um, yes, so you, you were talking earlier on... We were talking about West Indies cricket West Indies, yes. and in terms of selection, in terms of the talents that exist, and in terms of the hours spent in playing cricket. What would you have done differently now if you were in charge of West Indies cricket? Well, um, things can change, uh, and it's all about leadership. I would... um. I would put um, standards. You're not getting a contract if you're not playing cricket eight hours a day. And you have to show me that you're playing cricket eight hours a day. You have to show me your team who train you and stuff like that. This is real business. This is international sports. When, when I when I got a job as CEO of West Indies Cricket, I'm not like most people who just believe I have PhD so I'm smart. I know nothing about running an international franchise. So I asked the ECB, English cricket board if I could come hang out with them for a week for a couple of days I stayed there for a week and learned about the system in the, the invented cricket so why not learn about how it works so yeah I have a, a lot of ideas on um, 
how things could work. But there are too many cooks in the in the in the, in the body just too big, and um, then uh, the, I notice the politicians want to make it bigger. They want to be involved in it. That would be the biggest disaster in the world if you ever get these politicians involved in cricket. So leave it. It's, it you think it's bad now. So I think what must happen is they must um, create a smaller West Indies board have only businessmen on it, and um, they hire people to run the cricket for them. With no representative from anywhere, they could have six Dominicans on the on the board, or four four trainees, whatever. But currently, this um, notion of um, singularity and is six countries making up the West Indies is uh, they haven't gotten over that yet. They need to fix that. But um, I I have passed that stage. I'm looking at other things today. Somebody was talking about um, education. I I have my own. I've written a paper called "Shifting the Paradigm in high, in Education," and I, I understand. I heard the Prime Minister um, quote the same um, notion, and I'd like to work on that in the future. If you look at our educational system in the Caribbean, it is one based on exams. People just take exams from the time the children born is exams, and then how are you going to learn if you just take in exams? And do you retain the stuff that you take the exams on? Do you know anything about your country? What is the economy and how the, can you improve it? Is that on the curriculum? No. Do you know who your heroes are? Nope. But we take CXC and then it's more exams. So I think um, as a developing country, we need to restructure our, our educational system and make it relevant to our lives. And um, I'm always available and when the Prime Minister is ready, he can call me. <laughs> Yeah, well, I like the way you talk about shifting the paradigms in terms of education. Mm. Uh, how you see, I you, you talk about exams, mm. but would you link exams with um, economic development? What, what it, would there be a goal, a strategic plan in terms of five year, ten year, fifteen? How would you shift it? Okay, so exams are measurement tests, basically, and I, I'm not anti measurement, but the relevance of exams you cannot overemphasize it. For instance. <laughs> you know, the, let me give you a, 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 an example of um, ridiculousness. The, in 20, 2002, the government of Dominic established a university, a college, and they make that a national college. The entry requirement for a job in the civil service is still four O levels. Well, they change that a bit now. Well, English and math. We had a case where a guy got a degree from state college. He went to um, Antigua became a contractor. He, he got his degree in um, um, engineering and was doing well. Then he had money. He came back to Dominica and um, built his house and applied to this government for a job in public works or somewhere. <laughs> he got a letter from them telling him he's not qualified to be in the civil service. He has a degree, you know, from State College because he doesn't have English at all levels at CXC. I hit the roof and I, I wrote to them. They never answered, but later on I found out they did change that a college degree, Dominica State College degree, can supersede the the four O levels. But this is the kind of nonsense. You're right. I mean, who says that a guy with four O level is smarter than a guy with one O level? How are you going to determine that? So I mean, there are a lot of stuff we need to do. Is the easy way out is to give them exams, and um, and if they don't pass, then they they we don't hire them. I used to give a talk in three that called What Happens to Johnny with his one CXC. And people used to um, invite me to talk about it because it talks about marginalizing people through exams. And you cannot do that as a small nation. You need every Dominican and every St. Lucian to be working. You can't marginalize them because they have one CXC. There are hundreds of things that person could do. You have to find what his talent is and get him to work. So, yeah, uh, we need to fix that. Okay, as we speaking about education, we know that you are presently the um, president of the Dominica State College. Yes, later I wanted me to leave and I decided I will stay because of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a member of the board, right? Uh, 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 yeah. He's a member of the board. So no, right? he's the union and he, uh, oh, two uh, years uh, ago. They, I, I, want to, I want to know if he's he a board member he say, or he he as, as, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I decided I'll show him and I'll just stay. But 
we we looking for a president, but I, I'll hang on until we find one. Mm -hmm. So, so, so tell me some of your success stories of that of the Dominica State College. Well, one of the things I, I try, I think what I'm happy about is we are able to attract a lot more students. When I came, the population was uh, 1,100, now it's 2,100. So people want to come to college. We've been able to um, transfer students to some of the best universities in the world. And um, I, there are policies that are put in place that have helped people. Um, a simple thing is, uh, like, if you wanted to do um, biology in college, at the Dominica State College before I arrived, a simple thing. You would have had to do it in um, in high school. If you didn't do it, they would not let you do biology. That's criminal. I didn't do political science or public policy in Dominica. So when I went to the University of Massachusetts, did they tell me I can't do it? No. So we changed that. So a lot of... Um, things we've done to improve the learning and success of students. And that has worked. Um, I empower students, so if a student government, we empower them on um, student activities. I put a lot of emphasis on this because I believe the same thing about taking exams and just coming to school and not um, engaging yourself in activities is not good education. So, yeah, we've done a lot of... Um, changes to make Dominica a respected institution and it's, it will speak for itself by its results on what our students do. How, how many countries of the region does your college attract? Um, we have Antigua, St. Martin, St. Lucia, um, one more, and Haiti. Well, and Grenada. <laughs> you, you have five other Caricom, Caricom students. students in in yeah. at the Dominica State College. Yes, and uh, with the total of um, two thousand one hundred fifty one. Yeah, and how many of the how many students would be out of this um, parts of the region? Of of the total number of students. Our uh, international Both students. 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 Yes. Well, international students about thirty, <laughs> and Caricom student is about um, about the same amount. Uh, in reference to the accreditation of your college. Yes. Um, help us to have a better understanding in reference to how many schools um, outside of the region um, accredit your your your. your, your <laughs> yeah, college. let me see if I can uh, explain that to people very quickly. Dominica State College is a national college, and like Canadian universities, we were not required to be accredited by a for, by a body. However, CARICOM passed rules that um, all universe, all colleges in the Caribbean must be accredited by the local accreditation board. And we still haven't <laughs> been accredited because when we were ready, Maria came and, and but we'll do that. But the, what are you talking about is um, the more important thing, the articulation. An articulation agreement between two institutions is respect by the institution for the quality of the work and the rigor and, and, and the curriculum. In terms of that, the Dominica State College transfers students all over America and Europe, well, England most of the time, and Canada. And, um, and the way you do that, you have to send your entire curriculum to the university. And they look at it, they look at what textbooks is, and then they agree, we will take your students and your credits. And currently, we're up to 61 institutions that have articulations with the University of Toronto, University of North Carolina, you just name it. We have students um, at MIT accepted Dominica State College credit. So we're going, we good. You're saying 61, is that North America or is this yeah. Europe and North America? England. Um, Canada and US. Wow. So, England, um, Canada, we good. and I'm very proud of that. that I'm, I'm, uh, you saying that I'm very proud about that. Yes. You, you, you mentioned one of the right. top universities in the world, MIT. Yes, we have um, Dominican at MIT, and she transferred to there. Of course, she did the uh, SATs too. <laughs> but yeah, so we, we and um, certainly this year we'll get accredited by our Dominica. Accreditation board. Uh, a doctor, so, help me understand that before you go to the next question. Yes. Uh, are, you, are you linking up with also the universities in China? How is it? Yeah, well, I'm trying to do research on them now. I, I, I like, I've, I've met some of the graduates and I like the rigor, but I know their system and it's very complicated but very similar to the US. You know, the Chinese, they, they, they're good at borrowing things. 
So, but I think the rigor and the and the quality of the education is is, is good, and uh, I have noticed the the medical schools are similar in terms of the number, the amount of years the students have to spend is similar to the Western world. So I'm very happy about that. So you, you, you know that some students, um, in terms of their preparation to the Dominica State College, mm -hmm. they're not always ready, prepared no. from high school to the state college. What right. is the kind of program that has been placed between the Dominica State College and the high schools so when the students get to the um, college that they are uh, uh, somewhat prepared. Well, that, that's a good point. The students and in Dominica and I guess the rest of the region is the same because students come to you very early, some at 17. And the transition is very um, is strange for them because they come in from high school, the detention, black book, and bell ringing. And then all of a sudden you're an adult and nobody, no bell, nobody tells you anything. So we have a whole week orientation for them before they start and um that's one area and now i've sent um our team a team to the high schools um during the year they go and talk to students about our programs so and in uh, during that process they tell them about the transition and what to do how it works and so some students find it very um easy to assimilate and others do have some struggle some of them uh, a small group some of them, I, I have had conversation with some of them making mm. mention of, um, would I say attitude of teachers or professors? Yeah. Um, but in reference to professors getting, or the lecturers, let's use the word lecturers, yeah. coming to class, it's not as frequent as they would have liked it, um, as they do in, in high schools. Right, yeah. So, um, and that is a, a major problem that I've asked deans to really look about, and we have a plan this year to address it. As you know, you went to university, the professor may not show up, and, is, and we do not know. And, um, and uh, you know, in, um, in the real world, people could lose their job for this um, if you don't show up, if you're not a professor. Um, if you're a professor, you can miss class and make it up. But So, yeah, but as a minority, there's not a lot. Um, the majority of lecturers and professors... I come come to class on time and they do meet with the students. We do have people who do not show up often, and um, we are addressing that. That is so. If a, if students complain about it and they have, um, that is something. I'm not going to be defensive. It does happen, and we are actively addressing it. Someone wants to find out on Facebook. Um, what about articulation with the with UE? Yeah, we 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 transfer students to UE. Um, and um, we work with the School of Education. We have joint board of education, so our School of Ed is affiliated with the University of the West Indies. So yes, we are we well, are well, articulated with them. Well, I know, for instance, the Teachers College always uh, <coughs> articulate with the University of the West Indies. Yeah, but we broke away from that. But two years ago, I I brought it back. Okay, so we back on the board. Back on. What about your nursing school? Yes, well, there's nursing councils are the, the Caribbean nursing councils are the one who who manage the the nursing programs in the Caribbean. So we teach and they test. No, no, Doctor Peters. Um, mm -hmm. Someone again asked um, from the person is Adele Saul. The person said, Doctor Peters, is the Dominica State College doing anything in trade in trades? While I recognize we don't have brain drain, while I recognize we don't want brain drain, trade seems to be the area of employment available for skilled persons to Canada. <laughs> skilled well, persons in Canada. <laughs> Thank you, um, caller or um, viewer. The issue in Dominica is not that um, simple and it's complex. The people who make decisions for their kids are parents. And uh, you know from growing up, everybody wanted son or daughter to be lawyer or doctor. I don't understand. And uh, whereas it's obvious that the rest of the world need a lot more um, careers other than lawyers and doctors. So from the time I've been at college, we've been working on that, um, getting people to get into technical education. It's called CT, Career Technical Education. Uh, in fact, when Obama was president, he put more money into CTE than he, di he did to Harvard and Yale. So 
um, I'm pleased though to report that for the first time, we have uh, um, some of our technical programs are oversubscribed. They are waiting lists for them. So engineering um, was oversubscribed. Now we have a carpentry and construction technology. We have more students than we have spaces. Um, agriculture students are getting into it. Um, and um, auto mechanics, we have students um, into this. And uh, refrigeration and air conditioning. So yes, more and more students are getting into those technical programs because the country needs them. The world needs technical people. And um, and so and we have made technical education a priority at State College. Let me ask um, Dr. Donald Peter, in mm. reference to the other um, parts of the region, mm. how, how many other countries of the Caribbean, of CARICOM, that you would have had relationships with? That we do? Yes. Yeah, we belong to, to the, something called the Caribbean Tertiary Institute Asso Association, ACTI, all of them. All of the OECS. Yeah. And uh, and Kelly. Jamaica. Yeah. What about artificial intelligence? Do you have one? AI. Um, well, we just starting to get ourselves our feet wet in AI. Um, we have a, a contract agreement with a Canadian university to work with us. And some of the staff are taking opportunity to be trained in the Commonwealth um, learning programs. So, because that's going to be with us for a while, huh? and it's going to be scary. For well, a while? That's, 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 well, that, that is the new norm. It's coming, it's coming. Well, in higher education, it's yes. scary for us. Yes, okay. Because what do you mean by in higher education, it's scary? I, I don't understand. We have to correct papers, and we don't know who wrote the paper. I mean, AI is a challenge, and university have suspended AI for a year until we can figure out how we're going to manage AI and how we can monitor it. Because you realize a student can just ask a person to write a paper on DBS for them. <laughs> yes. And and they, and they can get the answer. Yes. So and you have to correct it. So you do. Um, currently, we have um, a, not a lot of technology like um, that can, when they look at a paper, they can um, screen it and it will tell us if you copied or plagiarized anything. We do, do it. so so the same thing will happen with AI, but the, it's been developed. So you're saying, you're saying that, that soon we might find ourselves not having to do exams. Uh, um, no, you have to. You we have have to have mechanisms for monitoring, monitoring. the work that is provided by your students. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so, so in other words, you don't have um, plagiarism. No, uh, correct. So that the the the, the, right. the the program would be able to screen to find what segment was actually. Yes, we have that now. Oh, but with AI, we're gonna have to. The, it's more than just plagiarizing; it's writing the entire paper. Okay. So, oh, well, Doctor um, um, Doctor Peters, I'm very happy mm -hmm. that you raised that issue. So, mm -hmm. at the State College, so that our listeners would know mm -hmm. that if a student writes a paper mm -hmm. and the student um, uh, plagiarize, mm -hmm. you have systems in place now that can actually detect what was copied? Yes, but we can't afford it, so we have to borrow it from other colleagues of ours in the U.S. Okay. So if I want to, to, a paper is presented to me, I teach, I'll send the paper to my sister and she'll scan it for me and, and um, do it. But um, down the line, we will um, have the technology. It's not that expensive, but it's necessary though. Coming back to the skills part of the college, um, mm -hmm. How much involved that you all are in reference to um, broadening, broadening skills, um, vocational section um, into the college? Well, we, uh, we've been working hard. We, we have two programs going on, SAGE with Algonquin University in Canada and Halifax. And they've been really working with us on agriculture, on uh, construction technology. They brought back carpentry. So yeah, we are partners and um, we continue to do that because we can't do it alone and um, we haven't got a lot of resources so we depend on our partners to help us. So yes, um, in terms, in your answer is that internationalization of our programs is something that we constantly do and um, I'm pleased to say that we have universities working with us on those very technical programs. In fact, a number of universities will only work with us on technical programs. Let me ask you though, um, we have seen that we have a modern 
um, structure. Mm -hmm. um, how much more does our does our school has over that of other um, Caribbean colleges um, in, in in the region? In the US, yes, they are all about the same. Ours are the newest, um, although Hurricane took took part of it, but. They're about the same now um, in the US. Uh, most of them are smaller than ours, so, um, in terms of um, acreage. And numbers of students? Um, St. Vincent have the same as us, Grenada a little more, Antigua don't, St. Kitts don't. So we're about the, the second largest in, the, in terms of numbers. But remember, we're a small country compared to St. Lucia, so St. Lucia is number one. So. In terms, in terms of, of the population, yes. Yeah. Is. So, but yeah, we we doing well with two thousand one hundred and fifty students, and every year we take in at least seven hundred students. So a lot of people getting educated. Let's go back to the telephone, and we'll go to to bring in a while. Good evening to you, caller. Um, once again on the line, I haven't called, but I did express my express my gratitude to the doctor. Speak a bit louder, please. Speak a bit louder. Yes, I said I did. Ex oh, I've already expressed my gratitude to the doctor. Mr. Peters, for his ongoing work and success in the field of education and sports. But I, you are, I'm just listening to him, and I got two questions for him. One is, um, you have just alluded that you granted opportunities and possibilities for a number of students to get across the seas and pursue their higher education in a period of gratitude, how many of those students we have returned to at least provide some substance <laughs> for our nation in terms of helping others as you have done for them. And in addition to that, I was just reading a quote from Johnson & Johnson's, mm -hmm. a quote that is very complex when you read it, has very little understanding. But if you look at it on the biblical side, it has potential. And that quote says, cast your bread on the waters, and it will certainly return to you. But the illusion is that when you cast bread on water, it's going to dissolve. <laughs> and it's obvious he wasn't saying that. But all he's saying is, whatever you do, the, the possibilities and the goodness you extend from your heart to others, Whatever you do, it will return to you in the multiple ways. Your blessings will continue to multiply. And that's exactly what's happening to you. And as expressed earlier, I wish you all the best in your ongoing profession. God bless you. Thank you. And we can all do that. Eh? We can yeah, help our brothers. Help, yeah. We must reach out when we can and help others. And um, certainly, um, I'm sure most Dominicans would do that if they had the opportunity. I'd hope so. Uh, yeah, well, uh, what about your biography? What about your life story? Are you, I know many intellectuals and many um, Dominicans as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. don't write this story. <laughs> what about you, Dr. Peters? Have you begun? One of my daughters, uh, she told me, I've only written one textbook, but it's a textbook, so the world, it will survive when I die. She's written four novels, <laughs> and she plans to write my biography. But... um. No, we when you're very correct. We never look at ourselves. Uh, let people um, write about us if we had any significance to play in their lives. So, um, now nah, I, I don't pay attention to that. But my daughter is pretty bright. She'll probably write something about me. No, no um, someone on Facebook again said Dominica State College and Dominica as a whole have enough educators to teach BS degree and gets a read of the overseas scholarship that the government cannot afford to pay. What do you have to say about that, Mr.? Very good. Uh, that's whoever wrote that is very correct. And we can. We have the capacity to do it. 77% um, of our, and in some cases 100% of our faculty have a master's degree plus. And um, I teach there. I'm a PhD. So yes, we are fully capable of offering bachelor's degrees in the liberal arts. And I have of officially inform the government of Dominica that we can do that and save them millions of dollars. So the ball is in the court. Would that also attract other students from the from the Caribbean? Caricom? Yes, we we have a, a plan for bringing international students to Dominica 
to help the economy and help Dominica when, as soon as the college is repaired, and including CARICOM. For instance, we have a degree in public health that Antiguan wanted to send their kids to us, but we didn't have a dom because they were, you know, freshmen. So, but um, and um, so their interests. The thing is, Dominica State College offers a lot of. We the only um, college in Oasis offering a degree in entrepreneurship. So we um we try to push the envelope a lot and be innovative, and uh, all we need is um, assistance. And but down the line, we will offer. Currently, we offer a bachelor's degree in business, nursing, and education. And um, so next, we're trying to do English, biology, soon, and um, take them one by one. So you can see. You can see the government of Dominica going with that concept of the bachelors of science. Yeah, it will save them a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a, that's a good that's a good one. I'm yeah, yeah. Thinking. You mentioned something in, in, interesting. Mm -hmm. I know, for instance, when I was at the University of the West Indies, you talk about halls, eh? Yes. Yeah, if you have colleges and so on, you need halls or you need as your dormitories right. where students can stay. Um, uh, so, uh, where are you planning to build? That? Will it be built around the college? Do you have the well, land, or are you planning to create space in higher education today? People, uh, universities are not invested in residence halls, which is good. They they privatize it. So, what I what we want to do is offer the people with money in Dominica or the Caribbean to build a residence hall for us, and we we'll manage it for them and. And uh, we'll take 40% of it and they'll take the other 70. COVID has taught us something, education online. Where yes. is the state college on that? Online? Uh, no, online. using technology. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We um, Currently, students came back and they wanted to be face-to-face. -face, but right now, we're working with faculty to ask them who wants to teach online because some people prefer to do that. But a lot of um, older um, adults have been asking us so come 2024, I'm sure we'll put at least 10% um, or 5% of our courses online. We, yeah. we have seen in the United States and many other um, mm -hmm. metropolitan in reference to um, sports mm -hmm. activities. Um, how much is the Dominica State College um, in reference to sports been active um, through the students um, to challenge other Car Caribbean schools or even partaking in the in the local leagues in Dominica. Oh, well, so where have you been, Cecil? You don't know. We, <laughs> no, I, I know that they play, they play volleyball. They I know play they play everything. Yeah, we beat you know, everybody in everything. Yeah. I, I don't know if you beat everybody. Yeah, yeah, netball. Hey, you we know, champions yeah. in everything. So, which is unfair though, because the students come from the high schools and then they play against the high schools. And uh, yes, we would be interested in. Um, I've asked my brothers in the OECS to try to arrange down the line activity between the colleges of the Eastern Caribbean, but that takes money, and um, now airfare is so high, um, people won't travel. But down the, uh, as I said earlier, universities need to have sports and activities. We like debating, we're very good at it, and um, we play cricket, soccer, basketball locally, but they should have some international experience. And I, I suspect as things get easier and um, fast ferries take over the Caribbean, then it will be easier to have competitions among the colleges. But I think that's a, a good idea, and I think that's a, an objective that we should try to reach. Um, what about, uh, I know in some universities, mm -hmm. uh, they run programs in the evening. Do you have any evening programs? Yes, our, actually the business. Um, a lot of the continuing education programs are in the evening. A business, um, education, some of um, um, the, the short courses are all in the evenings. Uh, here is someone, I think the person doesn't mind if I call their name. The person's name is Oliver Joseph. And the person says, Dr. Peters, my plan is after retirement to come home and teach a Bachelor of Science degree, um, degrees in information service and the project management courses. Hey, man, come down. We, we, we want you. <laughs> <laughs> We're ready. <laughs> that, that's interesting. That's very interesting. To mm -hmm. hear that. Yes, and I know yes. that there are many other people. I like need a, a lot more of those. If they would come, that would really help us. No. And I'm sure, Dr. Peters, that you must be linking with quite a number of people with that same type of interest. Yes, yes, we do. And I try to do the same thing for the hospital, too, because we need the help there, too. You know, So I know quite a few people, and um, some people are willing to come and do the same thing that I do, just work. No, no, I, 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 I've been hearing from a number of people making mention of the fact that Dominica has a very high standard of education. 
Um, tell me, Dr. Peters, where do you place Dominica's education? Yeah, I, um, I'm a uh, product of the system. We, we um, the, what we call the rigor of the curriculum for, at least when I was going to school, and I'm sure it is the same, like I, I see convents and Mary's and so, and grammar school put on some very bright students. And um, so it, it is very competitive. In other words, when a student graduates from high school in Dominica, they can move to U.S. or um, the U.K. And, and handle themselves. It's right up there with the other countries. So it is rigorous. Um, do, you, do you think that our students are holistic? When I say holistic, no. in no. terms of no. academics and, and sports? No. And um, people believe that... Um, getting A's is the only thing. You, you can't make it like that. You got to be a well-rounded student, have some activity, either sports, music, dance, whatever. But in a, I, I used to be on the Princeton advisory group for admissions. And um, the kid with 1,800 on his ACTs may not get in. But the kid with 1,490 plus, they playing piano or whatever, or they done would probably get in. It's because the universities want a whole person, not an right. you know person who can only pass exams. Holistic. Yes. Well, one of the things that I like that you've just mentioned is the innovation in terms of um, going beyond the uh, regular five CXC mm -hmm. or whatever in terms of create avenues for students to be able to create their own you know development. Right. That's that's very innovative. And how, how successful has it been for you? <laughs> well, you remember our students are trained in a, a systemic, um, in your system, Mr. Brin. So they come, they, they, they're used to the, the regulations and the role play of, of a teacher and a, a student. So um, it takes a while. But uh, there are students who love the freedom to be able to do um, things that, um, test their capacity, and their students who just want to go straight with follow the rules, do their little exams. For instance, when I teach, I, I don't give exams. I give projects. You have to write a paper. I once asked um, a stu students to write a paper on um, if you were um, if they hired you to run a, a a political party. Tell me what were the key variables that you would need money to do in it. And there I was amazed. I even shared it with the Prime Minister. <laughs> a student wrote um, she would have five vehicles. So ask her why yeah, vehicles. She said, you can't have a party if you're not giving people VEP. And <laughs> so and then she would have a whole music section for CO. So, I mean, it's interesting. The college is very good. Remember, I teach at the college. I'm a political scientist. So the, the standard is high. Trust me. Mm -mm. Let me ask you mm. also, Doc, um, what is meant by country ambassador at large for education? Well, the uh, ambassadors at large are uh, part of the government make uh, um, machinery for giving um, people, recognized people for doing specific jobs for the government for no pay, of course. So um, the Prime Minister appointed me and gave me responsibility for education and part of it is to do precise, precisely what we're doing to get more students scholarships internationally and help develop our program locally so so a person like you um, i'm trying to find out would you go to um, dubai to china um to the far east um to see what the 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 syllabus would be like and to see how you can get this to be involved in our own development also well, um, the Prime Minister will call me on, on um, when people um, ask him questions or, or have interest in, in working with Dominica, he will consult me and I would respond. But um, no, we not. I mean, the, the Prime Minister can ask, make us do wherever he wants us to go, but, and that's what we do. The only reason I'm asking that, that I know mm -hmm. that we are so much involved in the traditional um, system of education and uh, looking at the non-traditional countries yes. and how we would find ourselves um, being involved because we're now talking about AI yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and AI is, is very much large in Asia yep. and, and yeah. so I was trying to find out in as much as you're thinking of going that way in reference to the, um, the, the issue of AI, mm -hmm. how much more would be 
be more involved as as the ambassador at large to get those countries yep. who are the non-traditional to be much more involved in our learning process. Well, well, learning well remember he's, he's looking at shifting the paradigm in education, so I suspect that in the future we'll have some work to do. So, um, Let me just a little bit divert a bit. You're a major in political science. Yes, major, you do your work and public policy. And you know we cannot avoid we <laughs> cannot avoid the discussion, the present discussion taking place now. Yes. And I need to engage you in this one. Uh -huh. I have not heard much of your comments. Mm -hmm. I have not read anything in the newspaper. I'm subject to correction. Mm -hmm. The whole issue of electoral reform and electoral <laughs> modernization. Have you been paying attention to that as a political scientist? Well, I, I would like to say that I, 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 I refrain from dealing with things that are just ridiculous. <laughs> so this electoral reform that people talk about is bothers me scientifically because... I mean, really, the the opposition is running on a concept that is so scientifically wrong that if they could prevent people, disenfranchised Dominicans from voting, they can win an election. They're not asking for reform. They just want to get Dominicans overseas from not voting. So why, what, what, why are you disguising that with reform? First of all, these guys want to put the country almost bankrupt the country for ridiculous nonsense. A person, Dominica have been, and the OECS has been voting for 44 years as independents. Um, the system has worked. It has worked for them. It has worked for everybody else. There's nothing wrong with the system. In fact, the only problem with our constitution, it is in viol it violates the Declaration of Human Rights that we sign. This nonsense about you have to come every five years, they should take that out. So when you're asking now to 90 days or give them a special um, 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 constituents, I just think this is mass ignorance, so I just ignore it. I mean, and, and the mere fact that government is spending a whole lot of time discussing electoral reform when there's nothing wrong with this society. And I can say here that if they ever, if government ever adopt a bill where they prevent anybody from voting, I'll be the first one to take them to court because they're violating the rights of a citizen. A citizen is born with an inalienable right to vote in his country. You can't take that away. You can't take him off a list. Where would you, I mean, if the constitution say you can do that, they need to revise the constitution. People need to educate themselves. This ignorance that, and, and everybody talk about the people living overseas, they come in to vote, they're not living. What, what nonsense is this? A, do, a citizen of a country cannot be disenfranchised. You cannot disenfranchise him under the Declaration of Human Rights by the United Nations in 1974 and 1978. We signed it. Would mm. you have any concern in reference to the um, number of persons that are on the electoral um, um, voters list? Um, in terms of sanitizing that list, that but there's you can do that easily. If the people are dead, you take them up. But they have to. There are laws. I think you have to bring a death certificate and take them out. But why, why is it bothering you that the names are on the list? <laughs> when the people go to vote, they have a, they have to identify themselves. So when I hear people talking about clean the list, I don't know what it means. It means taking up my name off the list because I don't live in Dominica. You cannot do that. So I this people either disrespect their citizenship that it means nothing or just disregard for human rights. This notion that Dominicans should not vote in their own country. I uh, so I don't take part in this. I mean, I can't teach people students about why what argument would I have for telling a citizen they cannot vote. So how about they live in somewhere else. Sure. There are people living in Mexico, going back to vote every time, um, living in the U.S. So, You would have lived in America for, for a number of years. Yes. And you would have gotten the right to vote in America. Oh, yes. Right? And I, have my, you, I should have brought my absentee ballot for you. Mm -hmm. I get it all the time. So, And every citizen of America or France get their, citizen, their voter... I mean, if we are more than democracy, this, this, the thing that bothers me most is we seem to be regressing. I mean, f think, think of this. These people want them to give uh, ID for voting to cost millions of dollars. Where countries that are richer than us 
tell people that you only have to use a government issued ID, which is a passport, a driver's license, or social security, or anything that the government had issued. And that's enough. Why would I need a, another card uh, to walk in my pocket and I use it every five years? This S- makes no sense. Someone wants to speak to you. Good evening to you, caller. You're live. I like this stuff. Good evening, caller. Hello. Good evening. You're live. Hi. Hello. You know, good evening. I've been listening to the program, and the program has been an excellent program. Until now, I mean, like the doctor really is showing, I mean, like pure ignorance with his comment right now. I mean, like to refer to the people as being stupid or words of that nature is being, I mean, like I don't appreciate it. And everybody have the right and their position, re-electoral reform. I don't think that should have been part of the discussion, but um, caller, 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 government. caller. I think the the, the yeah. question was asked because he said that he 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 has a degree oh, in political science. So the so the, yeah. my co-host asked the question in reference to the electoral reform, and he said that in as much as he is a political science, he has a degree in political science. He has not heard his views. You heard him say that he did not want to talk about it, but no, best he hadn't spoken about it. No, but that's because your opinion. Like no, but no, 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 call him. Go ahead. But he's acting like he hasn't been living in Dominica for the last how many years? He knows what has been happening. I mean, give me a break. I mean, like seriously. Okay, what's happening in Dominica, call What's happening? No, but what I'm saying is that people have the right. I mean, I'm not against people leaving overseas. I live overseas. I don't want to vote in Dominica, but that's besides the point. That's you. The sanitization of the list. I mean, he knows that even if somebody is dead, I mean, like, things can happen. Why not take the names off the list? And he knows that people came to Dominica to vote. And that is why he said that he's not against the fact that people who are living overseas should come to vote. But you don't want yes. to treat and bribe them to vote in Dominica. No, but, no, but there is like, no... Seriously. Has anyone taken anyone to court for treating and bribery? I mean, like you guys. I'm um, asking your question, Colin. We're, we're not fighting. We're having a discussion. No, we're having a discussion. Don't get, upset. Don't, Don't get, get upset. upset. Don't get upset. Don't get emotional. Yeah, you I'm have, just you have your point questions. of view. You're making a point. I'm I asking mean, a question. We know, huh? know in constituencies where the plain loads of people came, say, for instance, in some villages, and it's the overseas voters who came down. Not, And I don't have an issue if they came down to vote on their own um, will, but if they were given a free ticket to vote, in the elect, I was offered a free ticket to vote in the elections in Dominica. Can, can I can I ask you a question? I can I ask you a question? Let, 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 let me make a point. And no, no, I, 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 I don't want to forget the question yeah, I was going to ask. Yes. Can I go uh, go ahead, go, go ahead uh, with your permission? Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, um, let me just ask. Um, are, are all of the parties who are involved in in election in in the election process uh, actually doing that offer to people? The fact of the matter is that whoever does it, it's wrong. Okay. It is wrong. No, I'm, I'm just, I just asked the question. It doesn't matter whether freedom or mm. labor. Does. It's wrong. A wrong is wrong. You cannot offer, offer somebody a plane ticket to come down and vote and put them to vote in constituencies no, no, where they no, are not. No, you cannot like put them to vote. No, caller. No, 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 caller. No, get, no, get it right. Get it right. Get it right. They, 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 they're not putting them to vote. They, they don't put anybody to vote. I am from Grand Bay, uh-huh. I am from Grand Bay, mm. and then you offer me a plane ticket with the... Um, the um, specifics that I am to vote in Newtown. No, 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 I would accept that. Call, call, I would accept that. That is pro- that's pure propaganda that, that you're now spreading. That's that's that is right. wrong. It's the truth. No, that is no, okay, that's anyway, not true. I don't think I'll take that anymore. Yeah, 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 Thanks yeah. very much, Colin. You, you see, I, 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 we're having a very <laughs> serious <laughs> conversation, <laughs> and I, I, I won't have someone calling to make that kind of pronouncement, which she knows it is not the truth, because you cannot tell me that you are according to her that you are given a ticket and that you are instructed to go and vote somewhere that is that that for sure is wrong and it will not happen that is one and two if someone that's uh, using her, her terms yes. is given a ticket and 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 they come to vote um how do you know that they are going to vote in a particular well, country. No, no, no. But let me ask the question. Oh, sorry, a, they're going to vote in a. They're yeah, going to vote for a particular but, person in a particular. But here is a man with a degree in, who spent all his life in the field of politics. <laughs> he's a political scientist, and he's telling us about his experience in terms of the number of years. He gave us the reason why. He tells us that is uh, is the democratic right, the constitution 
gives people the right as a citizen. Someone's on the telephone. Citizen. Someone's on the telephone. Let's see what the person has to say. Good evening to you, caller. Yes, good evening. This is Donald, Dr. Donald Peters' moment. A moment to teach us, educate us, inform us, and give us the knowledge of the country, the constitution, and the... Um, the educational part of Dominica. It's not a time for people to call about these political issues. Please. I am very much enriched by the information that's going on, and I tend to continue to listen. Thank you. But not when people call to express this useless moment. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Right. No, yeah. but, but yeah. here is... And, yeah, the, yeah. and the call is right. I yeah, mean, but here is a moment. Dr. Dr. Peters is, has, is giving his as, view. As, as, his, as, as a political scientist... He's giving his view, his views, and uh, based on his learning, his learning, and he's not telling you um, what he thinks is right um, or, wrong. or wrong. He's telling you what the, what the view is in reference to his experience. Yes, Donald Peters. Yes, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, the people don't like to hear um, facts. It's all all emotions. That's why I stay away from it. So. <laughs> Um, um, the, the most deadly thing for us is to give people facts. They, I don't know if they know what the Declaration of Human Rights are, but they should pay attention to it. So, uh, and, and I think you're making the point very clearly in reference to if um, the government goes into parliament mm. and would say to, to, to Dominicans who are living overseas, who are registered in Dominica, mm -hmm. that they cannot vote in Dominica. Oh. That will be removing their, their human, yeah, human rights. rights. Yeah, Claude would, Claude would sue them. I would sue them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's what he's saying. Yep. He's, not, he's, not take, he's, talking, he's not talking about a political side, whether it's mm -hmm. Labour no, party, party or, or Freedom can, Party. Any voter, you cannot take the people You cannot the take, list. and that's the point he made. So. It's not about party. Mm -hmm. Nope. I think we like to associate uh, certain factors, realistic factors, with party politics. He's saying that I would challenge any government who remove my name from the list and doesn't allow me to vote because I'm a Dominican, I'm a citizen That's of it. Dominica. <laughs> That's the point. Yep. And you, that, you, you can't miss that point and drag it into politics. No. That's the point I, he's I mean, making. I, I was very Come disappointed, very disappointed, I, very disappointed in, that, in, that, in that call. Well, I, people I get, have the... Yeah. That, and uh, one of the things um, is... Um, common in our country and, and I like it people just talk and um, they, they're very emotional about stuff I wish they would read a little more though just educate yourself when you do it and but so, but they don't. But you see, Dr. Mm -hmm. Peter, if the, if the mm -hmm. listener had taken some time off... The lady just said that to, people come and they tell them where to vote. Yeah, I mean, Don't they have to register and isn't there a process? Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> anyway. But you see, mm -hmm. it, the, 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 you see, these are some of the things that... Op and I agree with you, Dr. Peters. Mm -hmm. We must read. Mm -hmm. Reading is what opens up your mind. That's it's not a question mm -hmm. of what you think. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. what it is. It's not your perception. It's your reality. What is the real thing? Or and come I to college, it's free. You know, I, 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 mm -hmm. but that, that is just a, a person's view. I mean, right. we have to also respect yep. the person yep. right. call so, um, But I, I think it was important that we help the person have a greater understanding, understanding. you know, of the. Well, well of one the of the things I think, uh, do you have a course in political science at the college? Yes, we have a degree program, but we only, we have only got three students out of the program. Um, kids, because they didn't do it in high school, they're afraid to come to the programs. So right now we imagine that um, Cecil, we <laughs> mass communications. We have no one in that. We have nothing, nobody in political science. Eighty percent of our students are doing business. We have no clue. We gonna do a study to find out why. And um, we do, we take part of the blame knowing that we need to go to the schools earlier, like second form, and start to introduce them to careers in mass communication, public policy, public administration. Mm -hmm. And these are all career um, jobs um, that can make a lot of money. Uh, well, one mm -hmm. of the things that mm -hmm. I, I know, for instance, when Carl Stone taught us in the University of the West Indies, a good and man. Trevor Monroe. Yeah, wow. <laughs> you know, he taught me wow, political yes, science. Yes. Uh, and political science is a very important course. Yep. Yep. First of all, it talks about the constitution. Um, mm -hmm. It talks about government. It talks about parties. Oh. It talks about all different things. Tax yes. ideologies. Yes. Ideologies. Public mm -hmm. policy. Yep. So some people think that political science is only about politics. Politics party, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. No. Well, in, there's a book they need to read, you know, on um, the democracy in the Eastern Caribbean. Let me ask you the question. <laughs> what is political science, Doc? 
<laughs> what is it stuff? What, what does it include? What is it? It is a study of human behavior in um, interaction because police, the term Latin police meaning the people. Aristotle was the one who invented um, political science. And he felt that everybody in the community in the times of the Roman Empire should come to the village and discuss issues and make decisions. It should be collective. That's how democracy started. And from there, he argued also that if you, if, if people do in biology, they understand this is a science. So getting people to um, vote and get into a system of governance, that's also science. And that's how the, the philosophy started. But um, we like to say in the liberal arts that political science is the best liberal arts degree to have, in, including English, literature, whatever. Because as Brin pointed out, you, you cover everything. You cover a little sociology, a little psychology, um, constitutions, institutions. It's, it's a well-rounded um, major to have. Groom. Yes, grooms. Yeah. <laughs> uh, why people call you that? <laughs> well, there are a fellow named Peter Grooms, and he had a, he used to have a, a big pants on him. He was a pot worker, and they say he would stiff him a, a hatchet and all and put in the pants. It's so big. And then my uncle used to make pants for me to go to, to school, and he was a tailor. And his pants was like a skirt. <laughs> it's so big, so guys started calling me Peter Grooms. So, and <laughs> my neighborhood, please. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, everything yeah. I know is when your mother make a pants for you it's twice the size of what you're supposed to wear you know? because they say you're growing mm -hmm. but that's kind of embarrassing but yeah that's why I got my name now we are seeing the world going through um, the phase of IT mm -hmm. um, where do you see Dominica now in the IT world mm -hmm. well we are in the knowledge economy and um, we, we kind of um, we were back too far back, but I think we're catching up with Israel Aid helping our students uh, get jobs online, and we putting out a lot of uh, um, IT professionals, and and we have some very bright students who have developed their own apps. But I still believe that we must do more. Um, uh, more students and more adults should get into uh, information technology. It's it's easy and it's um, and there's money in it. I mean, the whole. Um, Global economy is driven by information technology, and if we stay out of it, we're gonna be in trouble. But so, I would be an advocate for pushing more um, teaching and learning in information technology. It's not that hard, and um, um, and we try. I think we have a, a division, Create Caribbean, on campus, run by Dr. Shoyla Esprit, and they are teaching students at. Um, in primary school to do coding, which is the key to um, ha um, software development. Someone's on the telephone. Good evening, Chief so. Caller. Good evening, brothers. How are you not doing? Fine. I'm good. good uh, Dr. Peters, how are you? I'm good. It's Global Boiling. Hey, Global. Global. Hey, what's up, man? A good one is on planet Earth. The what? Uh, one <laughs> Cooler, planet, Earth. planet Earth. <laughs> yeah, global yeah. warming, eh? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes brother. Yeah. For the past times, I'm hearing a lot of things about cleaning the electoral list. Mm. The best way for us to solve the problem, we make it mandatory that any time your member of your family die, whether it's overseas, you send in a death certificate. If you don't send it, a penalty will be paid. And the family have to pay something. Mm. If it's a firm like, the stress will not be on the government. It will be on the stress, within the stress of the family. And things can work better. The best way to to this is sanitize. I have my sanitizer going everywhere. <laughs> it's like coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way to sanitize. Uh, uh, well, yeah, the uh, well, the constitution need to to address um, uh, maintaining people who are dead on the list. Although I do um, one day had a uh, meet uh, uh, invite by the some students in Brooklyn College to talk about. Um, reform in the electoral process. Most Americans, when describe the process for them, and they ask me, well, why would they do They thought that people would be coming to the voting um, booth with no ID and nobody to identify them and just go. 
I told them that in every booth, there are two agents, one belong to each party, who vet the people to make sure they are the correct people. And so, so yeah, the, our system can be modernized, but um, and to make it more faster and more efficient, and, and, and to make sure that it's honest. But um, there's, there's all this emotional stuff going around me. I, I try to stay away from it. <laughs> now, let me ask you, in, in the United States, we, we hear quite a lot when there's election period mm -hmm. like I, I remembered in 1995 mm -hmm. the freedom party had the popular votes they had more votes mm -hmm. than constituencies right. and in the united states system um the person of the popular votes would have won right yeah. um and so they have it's, it's called the college yeah the college system yeah, yeah. Electro electoral system yeah How does electoral that college okay yeah. How does that wasn't work? put in place because in the in the 18th century um, after the union was formed, that small states would be at disadvantage um, in in federal politics. So they put the electoral college. So after the voting, every state would have the same amount of um, electors to send to Congress and say, okay, in my state, this, uh, this pa person won, so this is it. But in recent time, that has become a problem, as you know, um, um, Hillary Clinton had the popular vote and Trump still won. So, but they're not going to fix it. Huh? They, I mean, they have all kind of committees look at it. They feel comfortable with it. Um, I think the, the British and the Dominican system of past the post is the best, easiest way. So, but America don't want to follow people, so they're struggling with the electoral college. Because, because mm -hmm. we know that California has a greater number of voters yes, yes. than that of Florida. Yeah, but, 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 but people tell you all of the times Mm. That unless Florida is called, you cannot even indicate who is going to be the winner yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah, they yeah, have yeah. much more of the electoral. Um, well, they, yeah, they're they're swing state. state. They're swing state. So yeah. normally they are the ones who can. When you start looking at the numbers, you have to watch that. I, 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 I've never understood that system. <laughs> it's um, okay. So come to class. <laughs> 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 I'm, yeah, gonna come, I'm gonna go to the class. I'm no, gonna go to you, the you see the thing class. about it, the thing about mm. it, Cecil. Mm. Mm. We have to, as educators, mm -hmm. educate our people mm -hmm. about things, not emotions. No, no, no. no. Yeah, you, you're you, right. you see, our people get emotional. It's, science is a fact. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you, we, we don't deal with science. We have to it's, deal it's with emotions. science. Yeah, well. Politics is a science. People don't want to hear facts, you know. They do <laughs> not want to hear the facts. Yeah, well, well. And they get emotional. Yes. Right. For instance, uh, I heard one of the callers say, in terms of transporting people from one place to the other, is it bribery? <laughs> that has been tested in the courts. Uh, uh, um, this, this has been tested in the courts, in the highest courts of the land. It's not a question of being emotional. We have to be factual, mm -hmm. and we, we have to learn. And I believe, Dr. Peters, I also believe in a college where, and that's my views, eh? Mm. that I also believe that there should be cross faculties. Mm -hmm. So if you're majoring, let's say, in the sciences mm. or let's say in education, you should do some cross faculties, at least two of them. Yeah, well, we, sociology or we, mm. maybe sociology could be one of them. I, I don't know. Maybe Caribbean issues could be another one because true, true. it's one of the things that I, I find that you cannot just graduate a person from a college mm -hmm. without the person having a knowledge of the Caribbean issues. That's what it. are the issues in the Caribbean? Well, we require that um, you, you re at State College. You so you're doing do, that? Yes. Well, I'm very happy. Said, so, No, no so, somebody said, um, uh, Dr. Peters, um, mm -hmm. it wasn't meant mentioned on Facebook, um, Dr. Peters, my biggest concern is for the future of the young, of the young graduates. The government lacks innovation, and as a result, doesn't generate jobs for the for the graduates. What are your views on on that, and how can you convince the government the importance of job creation for graduates? Thank you. Well, ha, boy. Well, currently the government, I think, is try, is creating all the jobs or trying to create. But I, I agree, um, they have to provide opportunities. But I think they do. I think what we try to teach students at, on campus, though, is to be innovative. In uh, We give you an education. Okay. You can go out there and make money for yourself. And that's why we're working with Israel Aid to put our students online so they can work online for different countries. Uh, you just um, hook up um, with five or one of their companies and get paid. 
and good salaries. So yes, um, I agree, but the private sector must be involved in job creation also, and individuals can create jobs also. So I think the nation as a whole must take a priority on workforce development. People need to understand that they need to work. It doesn't matter what the job is, you got to work. When I tell students that all through my um, um, my education career, I was a dishwasher, I was a busboy, I was a mover, um, oh, and I was um, a cleaner. I'm very good at switching them up. Eh? So, but I had to work because I need to have uh, bills. And so uh, I think um, there is a need as a nation to in, uh, from kindergarten to teach people about work. You cannot build a nation if we're waiting for handouts from people. So, um, and, uh, and it's going to take a whole generation. We have to die first before. And the little ones who have been born have to understand. Because Dominica is a young nation. So that's why I don't blame it a lot. Because we're only 44 years old. <laughs> okay, and France is 700 years old. Um, Rome. So, um, so, but it takes a while. But, and it must start from kindergarten. I, I have mm -hmm. two controversial questions. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Dominica is a young state, yes. as you said. Mm -hmm. Very young. I have two controversial um, discussions. One deals with the issue of Christianity, mm -hmm. and the other one deals with the issue of um, people's choices. Okay. Um, one, do you believe in gay marriage? Why? That, um, why um, I teach, so I have to um, teach to um, human rights, and it's a right of a person to marry anybody they want. So, I I have no opinion on it. I I respect it, but I don't encourage it. So, people are as humans, they're free to marry man or man marry man, woman marry woman, which is in most Western countries. England now, um, Mexico have uh, adopted it, um, Germany. So this is the way of the world. You think that's a good adoption? Um. It's not good, it's not bad, it's just what it is. There are people who are born as, as homosexuals or, and, um, they, and they feel attracted to the same sex. There's nothing we can do about that. <laughs> um, yeah. And the second one, mm. um, it's about Jesus Christ and God. Okay. What's what's your? But on the first one, let me say that 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 doesn't mean Dominica have to adopt it. You know, Dominica doesn't have to adopt anything the larger countries do. But I, if you're asking me as an international scholar, if I um, believe in gay marriage, I I have no problems with it. But I'm not saying that Dominica should. We are too small to be, and there'll be too much conflict in the society if you adopt that as a, a law. But in uh, what was the second one? The second one is in reference to God and Jesus, your yep. views. Yes. Um, do you believe, um, um, or what's your view on, mm. on God, the Father, the Son, and no mother, well, but, and, and Jesus? Well, <laughs> same thing. I cannot teach those things. I have to teach science. And um, so I don't know which one is God and which one is Jesus, the Father and the Son. But, but the people believe in religion, I respect people right to believe in their religion, Muslim, Christians, whatever. As, um, as most scientists, uh, they, we cannot say show us, but that's only professionally. So, but um, in small in societies like ours, religion is a, an education, two of the oldest traditions in the world, and you can't get rid of it. So, religion is here to stay, and um, in our country. People are very religious. So I, unless they come to a class that I'm teaching on philosophy, I, the way we can debate is called the ontological argument. Does God exist? It's a fascinating course because, because we don't know. <laughs> so I'll leave it at that. <laughs> ontological let, me an, let me answer. Just before you, just before you answer. Yeah, yeah. 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 Good evening to you, caller. Good evening. Cecil, good evening. Good evening to you, sir. Good evening, Mr. Luther. Good evening, Dr. Peters. Good evening, good evening, <laughs> Lufa. Dr. Peters, you touch on a point there that is very, very interesting. Which one is that? And that point is people must work. 
<laughs> and I'm glad that you said it must start from kindergarten. Because too many people believe the country owes them a job. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to give you an example with Dr. Peters. I, I did most of my education in Antigua. Yep. But while I was looking for a job, I ended up working for a dentist. <laughs> and I used to get $8 a week. You have to start small before you reach the top. You understand? Some of us just believe we come out from college, you want a big job. Yep. You want to set up a business. You have to start small and build up yourself. And unless we don't teach that in our primary school, we are getting nowhere. Thank that's, you. That's correct. That's correct. Thank you, thank you, caller. You have to teach yes. people how to build a nation. Uh-huh. So, and it come, starts with work. I wanted to make the point there quickly, Dr. Pieces, before you come in again. Yes. I always learn that the state does not own, own your living. Oh. My father told that to me. Yep. You have to create it for yourself. Yep. And you heard Dr. Peters say that even the prime minister himself, Mr. Skerritt, when he went across to the university, what he had to do, there are certain things you must do to create wealth for yourself. And some of us just believe that when we leave college, we must go straight into the ministry <laughs> and work. No, you have to create the niche for yourself. You, what I find, some people do things, they go into construction, they make more money than me when I was a teacher. Yep, yeah, some people go and they have their brush cutter and they do um, mm-hmm. landscaping. We have to be innovative. The creative word there is we have to be innovative. We are a small island state. Someone again is, yes. on, the call, is on the telephone. Let's go back to the caller. Good evening to you, caller. Sorry about that caller, you have to call me back. I'm really sorry. Well, work is the, is the foundation of a nation, you know. <laughs> you cannot build a nation without working. <laughs> Let's go back to the telephone. Uh, good evening to you, caller, your life. Hey, good evening to all on the panel. I'm calling from the rooftop garden. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Long after the heard you, boy. The man from I, the I Navy. Thought, I thought you were in Italy, man. <laughs> mm. Bro, it, it's all about work. It's, it's all, all about work. Not just about going to school and wandering and depending on the government or even the private sector. You must tell yourself, I'm going to school, okay, to create, to even create my own job. That is where it starts and it should start at home, not in the classroom, at home. Those who are responsible for nurturing the children, let them know that. Pong that into their heads. Create your own job. Have the, have the intention to create your own job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, caller. Thank you very much. Create your own job. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, you know he's on the rooftop there, Dr. Uh, Peters, and thanks. the man making uh, plenty money, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he is taking his, his roof uh, and plant different types of, uh, in fact, lettuce. Exactly. Yes. And exactly. the man is making a lot of money, you know. Yeah, man, you have to be innovative. <laughs> There's money to be made. Uh, yeah. <laughs> very interesting. I, I like that. Mm. Um, so, yes, Dr. Peters, um, th- another question quickly as we come into coming down to the end. Yep. Um mm. What type of awards that you have already received? Well, a lot of awards. But I, I was very proud that my country gave me an award, uh, the Cicero Mer- um, Honor of Merit. Um, it's, the, and, um, it's recognition of my work. And so that probably is, is the most um, um, precious and, and recognizable and appreciated um, award. I've been awards in... Massachusetts by the governor, by the state legislature, by the mayor of Boston, in um, Mississippi, um, by the um, board of governors. So yes, I um, try to do my best wherever I am, and, and people do reward me. But I, I really appreciate my country recognizing me, and before I die, so that was a, a appreciative award. And that was last year, right, doctor? Yes, that was last yeah. year. So I, I know that um, you're a proud man for that. Yes, well, um, you come from a humble beginning, and if if you get to help your country, you do, and uh, the country in return say thank you. That's about that's how it should work. So, well, well, for a man of your your stature, mm-hmm. creating opportunities for many Dominicans to study at higher level, over I would think from the, your calculation, it may, may be over 600, may mm-hmm. closer to 700. Mm-hmm. That's really a remarkable achievement to change the life of a number of Dominicans. And more specifically, 
Uh, I remember our own prime minister giving him the opportunity to excel. And you notice that I'm sure, doctor, you're proud of him in yes, terms sir. of seeing him. <laughs> so is the University of Mississippi. Yeah? They have a picture of him in the uh, president's uh, um, dean of students' office. Uh, so he's, he's, hi- he's, he's, hi- he's, he's highly the recognized. student in 140 years to become a leader of a country from the university. So he's, uh, they, they like him. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. R- r- repeat repeat, that, that, r- repeat again. that again, Doc. The, um, Roosevelt Skerritt is the only um, student in 140, well, 144 years now to be a leader of a country and graduated from the University of Mississippi. They're very proud of that, even though they're white. <laughs> and they have placed his picture? Yeah, his picture is in the dean of students' office because he was a student. So, Trem- tre- tremendous. Yeah, you cool. know, and, and we must, one of the things that I find is that whether it is coming from anywhere, when a student has achieved great things, Internationally, the university take credit for the, it. Of the course. university <laughs> recognize you know, yeah, to have yeah, your yeah, picture yeah, in well. the faculty. Yeah, uh, well. You know, it's tremendous. You know, yeah, you, well. you fellas. <laughs> I mean, when we were in university, yeah, when well. you see a great man and you go to the university, you always acknowledge him by bowing. You know, you recognize mm-hmm. heroes. Well, it's it's a form of recruitment too. You know, remember in America, we recruit all the time. So when a student, a freshman, or a visiting come there and he say, "Well, the prime minister came to this co- co- university," I I could come there too. So it helps them and it helps the the, the individual. And and I show you're proud of. Of, of course we do. Okay. I am. Any question? Um, okay. I was um, um I have a number of firsts in my life, and I was the first. Black Vice Chancellor at the University of Mississippi in 130 years. What? Repeat I, that, Doctor. I was the first Black Vice Chancellor in 140 years at the University of Mississippi. I was the first Black um, President of the American College Health Association, and I also was the first Black. I was the first President of the College of Science and Technology in Trinidad and Tobago, and there are more. And my daughters are first too. Eh? <laughs> they told me one time that they're going to beat me on it and they, they do well so we they try to make, keep the Peter's legacy going to be first to, and all it means that as your pioneer not that you're smarter than people but you take more risk and you do things that people will recognize you and um, take a risk with you because the University of Mississippi you imagine bringing a black man on your as a vice chancellor on your campus you've never mm-hmm. had a uh, senior lecturer as a, so they had to take a risk with me but they know I was good so it all works out what? but it comes from working and and getting and the outcomes as a professional that you need what you would like to see change in Dominica I just want people to learn learn read educate yourself we are just too emotional everything is emotion nobody thinks they just just talk and, uh, and sometimes I believe they don't want solutions, you know. And 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 um, PMM has ever had this because he said, "Boy, let them talk." He's he, he into freedom of um, speech, and you let you say your thing. But and it, 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 in one way, it it helps people get off something off their chest. But it's when they say it with um, the notion that it is correct. <laughs> As an educator, it always bothers me. But it's but uh, yeah, I just wish people would educate themselves more. And they can, they can go online, they can, uh, people watch, let me give you one example. The Chinese come here, right? They wake up five o'clock in the morning and go to work. And the people stand up and say, but this Chinese boy, they always voting early. But they would never say, but that's a good idea. Let me start at five. So by, uh, so when your son get hot at one, I'm done. I can come back at five. They didn't, they never adopt that concept. I'm talking about construction people or anybody. I'm talking about the bosses too, you know. It's just the technology and and systems are in place to make things easier. Why don't you adopt it? And if you if you learn, if you study um, systems, you can improve your country. It doesn't government doesn't have to do everything. Government don't know what um, sometimes have answers. But you can. Good evening to you, caller. Yes. That's it. I think as a little summary, you can ask Dr. Donald, what did the effect of gangs and the groups they had in those past days brought to the LACU that helped people to grow and to let people develop a sense of education? And how would it help 
the lack who helped them in those days. That the young people today can see that a gang is not only shooting and fighting. It can help them to grow spiritually, emotionally, educationally, and physically. Thank you. Great question, caller. Great question. Thank you. Actually, that is certainly a concept people should understand, that man is a gregarious animal, which means that he wants to belong to a group. So we, in the past, we had groups. We had a gang. Falcon was a gang. Then um, Teddy Boys was a gang. The other was Sharks was a gang. But these are a gang of social people. We It was to go to go dances, have little parties, play cricket together. So And they were all in the communities. Every um, Sharks was on on um, Kennedy Avenue. Um, we, Falcons, was on Great George Street. Ernest and them, and there are a number of girls, uh, other groups, um, which we call gangs, but these are social gangs. We ain't fighting if nobody, we ain't um, hijacking anybody, we're not shooting anybody. So, and uh, what that contributes to development is that you you develop as a whole person, and you're not um, suffering from depression. Um, groups make you whole, because your guys will laugh at you, but you in in you feel comfortable that because next time you laugh at the other one, so you don't get defensive. It is a form of learning. It's a form of, of partnership. It's a form of growing. So there's nothing wrong in being belonging to a group or a gang if it's if you have the right objective. If it's to acquire wealth, if it's to for social um, activity, whatever it is that you want to get together to do, and actually it's a good thing. I think they should have more groups um, outside of um, people with you know, in the Girl Scout, um, in a, a club team. That's good, but you can form your own in your village, and uh, it will help. It, uh, it's a good question because man, the man, the species, always have to has developed through groups, and um, there um, is a book called Essence of Decision um, by and Group Think where the they argue that people think better in groups than alone. So, I mean, again, brain is the science, huh? Um, the things have been there for us to learn. It's there already. People just have to read about it and do what the books say. Yeah. Another question. Mm. Uh, what I find, with, let me put it as a statement, is that the people don't normally meet again in the gardens, like when yeah, we were in the 1960s or the 70s, 70s. Mm -hmm. where you had this interaction of the intellectuals coming, discuss, and, and people coming to hear, you know, what they had to say. When are we going to go back to those days when, you know, we have these little discussions, bring it to the gardens again? And how? People, and how can we do that? No, they're not coming back. <laughs> um, today, first of all, the, the forum people don't want to hear the subject besides they have their iPhone and that's all they need. They don't want to come. If I bring a, a, a social scientist to come to talk about groupthink, for instance, um, nobody ought to come to, to that. But um, I see what you're saying. It's worth a try. I think one of the things, when they repair our auditorium, I'd like to bring a, a speaker every month on a subject that people would like to discuss. Right, because... Uh, yeah, yeah. So. I know when we were at the university, uh, very often in sociology or the classes, mm. they bring a, 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 a lecture, guy come, a lecturer, yeah, some visiting yeah, fellow well, yeah. to talk. Or maybe at the university, the West Indies, mm -hmm. fellow come and talk on something. Yeah, so that's how learning takes place. I mean, it's a topic you didn't know about. And, and all of a sudden, a person give you an hour's lecture, you, you get a lot of information. So we, we want to do that in the future. What, what, what um, Dr. Peters, mm. you can see that in the last 30 years that you have seen Dominica grew into? Well, I think um, we have um, modernized our economy um, in that, um, for instance, you see less stores and people um, using international trade. Um, they order their own stuff. That's a development that we hadn't seen before. That has its plus and minuses. I think our road system has improved it, um, to that of a developing country. And um, the, our educational system has improved significantly. There are more high schools um, and um, a college. I think that is, is amazing that 
So these are some of the critical um, structures of a country that you want to look at. Um, so, um, and um, more jobs, I think, as you point out, even though a lot of people don't like to work, there are some people who work in and people have created their own small companies um, um, doing landscaping, as Mr. Brin pointed out. So yeah, these are some of the earmarks of development that I have seen. And I think it should continue, but certainly it has a lend to the development of the of the country. No, I also want to find out from you. Um, mm. uh, no, not find out. Yeah, find out. You can say find mm. out. Right. Um, in reference to all our leaders from premier to this present, mm. what each person, what legacy that they left behind? What each of them left behind? Yes, as a legacy. Um, well, <laughs> there one, there's only five of them, you know. <laughs> I'm talking about from from E. O. Libla coming down because I know that you said you worked for E. O. Libla, so you have no. Yes, yes, I was a yeah. civil servant. Yes. Well, um, E. O. Libla is a nationalist. He believed in um, his country, and um, he be supported our movement for um, um, movement away from colonialism. So that was his legacy. He was a simple man. Um, then Patrick was a, a populist. Um, he um, reached out to people. He was a populist. And um, he, it was tarnished later on by his activity, but people remember him for his reaching out, uh, his being a, a, a people's person. Um, Ms. Charles was uh, an elitist who, um, who believed that she should pull everybody up. That was her legacy, you know. It's not that she was looking down. She wanted everybody to be like her. So that's a legacy. Um, I, I used to argue with her about that. And then um, Prime Minister um, Doug OJ. OJ, I, he was passing through. But He's I, passing I, through. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, yeah. Don't, I, I hardly know OJ. <laughs> <laughs> so I only talk about people who elected. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. So and um, Ruzi was. Um, uh, before Ruzi, you, we had Edison James. Uh, Edison, well, he was a businessman and he, he had good ideas. But the ideas overtook him. I, I think he he was a champion of the banana industry, and I think when that failed, that that um, went he went with it. Um, but yeah, so his legacy was in economic development, particularly agriculture. Then, um, well, Ruzi was gonna take Dominica to a next level. Uh, Ruzi um, idea was to. Uh, move development faster by increasing population and um, and modernizing the country through um, international partnerships. That was his goal. He didn't have for that. Um, Piero was a uh, his legacy was a people's person. Also, he was a uh, um, uh, he believed in, in in equity in his in his um, governance that people should be equal. And he worked hard towards that. And um, of course, and, um, our current prime minister is a, a social benefactor. He is, his legacy is, rich, is helping everyone succeed. Um, he w leaves no one behind. That's his concept. So he puts a lot of priorities on helping the dispossessed and um, the people who are marginalized. So and that is will be his legacy, and he's successful at it. Brain. Oh, well, let me say for a man, <laughs> mm -hmm. seeing Dr. Peters because I was at the grammar school, mm -hmm. and seeing him evolve, and mm -hmm. seeing the wealth of experience. By the way, um, if you were offered a challenge, I hear a lot of people saying, that, "Well, that's just rumors," eh? but you know how it is, Dr. Mm -hmm. Peters. Mm -hmm. Would you run the helps? Send? Would you help? Run yeah. the hospital? I told you? for that, boy. That's a 16-hour so. a, a day job. Okay. I could do it for six months while they find somebody, but I, I go, if I was younger, I would take that job. I, I would fix it. But there would be a lot of angry people, too. <laughs> so it, uh, remember, a hospital, the, the your product is people, is well people. It's not rocket science. You are professional to help people live. It's just manage the health. Why is it so complicated? I don't know. I mean, so, but I, I, 
I would know how to fix it, but Brain I too old for that. <laughs> I want to retire in peace and and have a good um rest of the life. All of us ready to die. But I'm not stop working. I mean I'm not working for money but I can't imagine myself not doing something. So I'm available. Um but that one is too much but and um that would be easy for me. I mean the Eurasian is so the horse health system is ten times that size. So and we run it city health and hospitals in Boston, same thing. So we know what to do but and one of the things I, I, I still cannot wrap around my hand my head around is what kind of training you have when you you're not reaching out to patients and healing them. Why why are there so many complaints about care? And um so but we live in a very dynamic world and and I suppose with time we will fix that too. <laughs> All right. So as we come to the end, Donald, yes, um, Dr. Donald Peters, yes, sir. yes, sir. last yes, sir. words. Well, it was fun being here. Um, uh, just reaching out to um, sharing some information about my short life with you. And um, certainly anytime you feel that you need to find things out, I'll be happy to work with you again. And certainly it was fun being here. And um no, I can go home in peace. It was always good. I was very happy to ask you that controversial question because one must not be afraid of controversy. No, you have to I'm evoke emotions. And yeah, people so. sometimes, you know, they are emotional. But let me ask people to be more l scientific in the approach because life is about science. And you see the way you approach your thing was from a scientific point of view. Yes, and, yes, and that's how we have to approach. To what you know. <laughs> yes, stick yes. to what you know. So it's not about being emotional; it's being factual about things that you know about. Well, you know, I, I one time I, I made one sentence during a graduation speech, <laughs> and I got four hundred and forty-four Sally, <laughs> four hundred and forty-four Sally on um, the <laughs> One sentence, you know. So I'm very controversial, and I deliberately do that. I think I, I just want people to think, but they don't get think. They don't think. They just start cursing me. <laughs> and uh, you, you remember the sentence I said: "Do not be, tell the students, do not listen to people who say it's okay to be leader of a country without ever going to college." <laughs> That's all I said. <laughs> I imagine you talking to graduates. Why should I tell them? That was the most logical thing to tell them that you should strive to go to college. Mm -hmm. And uh, boy, it leaks on me. Mm -hmm. As a, and I want to. Why do you bother Sally and me? It doesn't do anything to me. <laughs> I'm still who I am. You can't take anything from me, but I, if they make them, that make them happy, that's it. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to help my country. That's all I will do, and I keep doing it until I fall. Well, Dr. Peters, I, I personally want to say thank you so very much. Um, when I spoke to you this week, you immediately accepted my invitation. Right. And um, for me tonight, you have um, given us quite a lot of food for thought. Um, I'm sure that a number of people who listened um, would have themselves had some serious food for thought. And um, the w I'm sure it helps our society to grow in a, in a, in a quicker way. Um, as you earlier on said that, you know, people we are, we speak, but we must speak on from the emotional aspect and not scientific. And so I, I think it has given us that understanding that whenever we speak, if we don't speak from a point of view of being factual, let us not speak. Um, it's rather that we don't say anything at all and sound foolish. And uh, when we speak, that we have the, not just the prerequisite to, to say what we have to say, but to have the facts yeah. um, before us. And the I facts think, are important. Yeah, and I think what you said to us tonight, from where you came from mm -hmm. to who you are today, I think Dominica um, has brought up a good, a good son. Yep. and has given to the world a son that um, has helped in doing a lot of changes and we have seen it in the Dominican mm. State College. Uh, and, and I thank you so very and much. And let me thank him also thank again mm. for one individual uh, putting together a program to assist Dominicans for higher education. We don't wait until the man die. Mm -hmm. We've got to give him his flowers now because it's not an easy task to bring so many students to the United States and to give them an opportunity to achieve higher education. Quite one or two of them, quite a number of them called to thank you. And I myself would like to thank you for your contribution to education, educating and a number a few, of Dominicans. And a few people on, 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 on um, Facebook, uh, Jerry Tewitt said, great program. Um, 
Rosalind Severe said thank you again for a great program, educational program. Um, also, Mr. Oliver Joseph said thank you, Dr. Peters, um, for the information. And uh, um, Noxy said thanks for Noxie. always giving good advice and, um, and counsel. And quite a number of people themselves are on Facebook giving their contribution or in giving their, their statement. And uh, someone said, Miriam Simon said, come back again, Dr. Peters. Um, I must say, great program. <laughs> so I really want to say to you, sir, thank you so very much um, for a wonderful program for really being so very sober um, mm -hmm. in your deliberation, in your discussion mm -hmm. with us, and that you were able to really help us. And, and I'm, I'm sure that the LACU Mm -hmm. um, is really yeah, helping the people. <laughs> yeah, 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 a man from the LACU. Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 the LACU has really brought uh, out uh, some good students. Yeah, right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and let me... Uh, let uh, you your, must uh, have gone through cool weather. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and, oh, and one must understand, <laughs> here is a man who has gotten his education and who went very far because of the, uh, what do you call, his mother. Yes. His mother who fathered him in, and driving him to the point where he was able to attain not only him, but his, his brothers and sisters to higher education. There's a philosopher who says not where you come from, is where you're going. It's where it's you're going. Where you go. And I accept that. that. All yeah. students yeah. must remember that. You know, not where you come from, is where you go. Let's take that last call, although we, mm -hmm. we said that we are through, but let's but take that last call. Let's hear what the last call has to say. Good evening to you, caller. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I would like to ask Dr. Peters, what does he think will it will take for the embargo to be removed from Cuba. <laughs> 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 but you, you, yeah. nice but Mr. Nice so no, that's uh, a great question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. I, I want to hear Dr. Peter that <laughs> well, one. Yes. Um, uh, um, uh, President Obama was trying to, to get there, but I'm confident that in the next five, ten years, not, not with Trump, if Biden gets back, I think they will eventually, again in the next five years, they will have some movement to get Cuba to be open. Uh, so, because they cannot continue doing that. You, you are, you are a political scientist. Mm -hmm. Yes. And and Cuba has been under this embargo for way back in 1960. Yes. 59. So that is um, yeah. 59. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that is like uh, some 64 years. <laughs> yes, that's correct. The and, whole generation uh, uh, yeah. of Cuba only know communism. You know, most right. of them. <laughs> and and so and so, um, Donald. Yes. I, I I I'm not so sure. Scientifically, what you have said <laughs> yes, yes. Um, is totally accurate yeah. in reference to um, President uh, Obama. Yes. yes, President Obama at his second um, term, term yeah. um, started the process. Yeah, he started not fast enough. Yeah. Um, well, it's hard, you know, to get Pres Congress. Remember, mm. in America, foreign policy is not only president. He he can take some chances, but Congress and the Senate have to approve it. Yes, and you know those people are haters. But um, but the right but, now. But, but while he was there, um, mm -hmm. I'm done, Dr. Peters, uh -huh. that we saw that a greater number of persons in from the Democratic Party was in Congress. Yes. Yes. So that yeah, I, oh yeah, he had the Congress too. Mm -hmm. Well, the the thing is, remember, the Cubans have to, the Cuban community have to help themselves by pushing more positive um, out, outlook for the country. But America will leave them embargo when they finally realize that it's not helping anybody. It's not helping Cuba and it's not helping them. No, but but, but you're saying that, Dr. Peters, yeah, that's uh, another discussion by itself. By itself. But yeah. you're saying that, Dr. Peters, mm -hmm. um, President um, Joe Biden was vice president of the United States right. when the process started. Right. And President um, Biden... Um, is now into into power, right. and we have not seen him starting any discussion. Yes, yes. They are, of sorts. Uh, there are flights back. What Trump they, they, took they they put it back? No, there have been flights um, from from Obama time. Yes, we have seen the we have seen but the Trump stopped we have seen it. The, the, cru the cruise ship getting into um, right. into 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 Cuba right. from from President Obama. Right. All right. Yes, we have seen now that President um, Biden. Biden has requested for the. Uh, movement of people in Cuba uh, back and forth, oh, yeah. um, unlike before, where they had to pass into Canada, uh, Canada, or mm. into Panama mm. to get into into. But yes. what is telling, um, um, as a political science scientist, is that the United Nation mm. has fought against this thing, and only two countries in the United Nations that is one 
the United States of America and mm -hmm. two, mm -hmm. Israel mm -hmm. are the only two countries. And and why why can't we not see the democracy in this? Why why can the rest of the world yeah. uh, who are members of the United Nations over 150 yeah. states to so. tell the United States uh, to tell the United States and 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 Israel that they are wrong? Yeah, well, they have power. Yeah. No, it's, it's not about power. Yeah, well, that's how it works. The but, 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 the look, power. but look, but, but Donald, let's now talk a little bit. I, yes, I think yes. I, if we can take some of your time. Yes, yes, look, we have seen Brexit. Yes, yes, yes. And what, we have, what have we seen since then with, yes. with Brexit? We yeah. have seen that some Brexit. countries, <laughs> um, once upon a time, there was only, um, there was only um, the country of Brazil as a member, mm. um, Russia mm. as a member, India as a member, mm -hmm. and uh, right now um, we have seen we have seen um, much more. I you know making requests. Yeah, so we have seen Brazil, Russia, yeah. India, China, mm -hmm. and um, South Africa right. as members of the of the um, BRICS. 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 Right? Yeah, well, the, the, the world has, since World War Two, a number of um, organizations other than NATO and have come up. And they never survive. This is not going to survive. Who's that? This brick's not going to it's survive. Go, it's going. You know why it's going to survive? No, it's not. You know, you know why it's going to survive? Oh. Mm. Look on the twenty fourth. Mm. Last week, first, as a matter of fact, yes. what did we see? We saw mm. Saudi Arabia. Mm. We saw Iran. Mm. We saw Ethiopia. We saw Egypt. We saw Argentina. We saw the United Emirates. Um, Emirates. Yeah. Uh, Emirates on, on board. Yeah. Uh, and I'm saying these countries. Um, we are, are now seeing that they are great economies. Yeah, yeah. Russia is a great economy. Well, it used to be. It is a great economy. <laughs> yeah. It is a great economy. Yeah. We, China is a great economy. Yeah. Uh, so what, what, what happened when America said, I want to join? No, because what, you, what we are now seeing, <laughs> no, America wouldn't join. America Who say that? Will, America will stay, well, so, are you, so if America is going to join, yeah. why, why are you saying that it's going to dissolve? That's yeah. what, what America does. America rules the world economically. I'm not saying they, that's good. But the, the rest of the nations, everybody needs America. No. They have set themselves I won't up agree like with that. I won't agree with you. Because right now, right now, what we're seeing, Doc, is we are seeing that um, the BRICS are now creating their own economy through gold. Yes. Through yeah. gold. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I'm not seeing the United States leaving um, the G7. We saw the Russian move from G8 yeah. to, to BRICS. Yeah, so yeah. now there's the G7. Yes. So I'm not seeing the United States uh, joining with China. Joining the, Sov the Soviet Union, especially looking at what we are now witnessing with the um, you can run with the Ukraine. Okay. War. Uh, this so all I these countries. I want you to figure out before I leave one okay. thing in common. Mm -hmm. As you read, one thing in common. Each of them want to trade with America. You don't trade with America, you bankrupt. Basically, all of them are major traders of the U.S., including China. China needs America, and so does Russia. So, I mean, it's important so does, that... So does America need the Chinese... So yeah, does they America need, need the, the, the Chinese China. market. Because I saw that yeah, last yeah. week, yeah, yeah, that yeah. In, the, in, the, in the in the in the um, G7 meeting yeah, that, yeah. They were, that they were having, that the president of China did not pre, pre, uh, did not go, and they, and they, they, had, but, they had their concerns. But, but, but let me throw something at you. Mm -hmm. Something at you. You must watch how the world operates economically. Mm -hmm. First of all, you never believe that the United States of America would end up in Vietnam. <laughs> right, right there. And you know what the Americans did to Vietnam. Yes. <laughs> but you know that when it comes to economics. Uh, America have all friends as long as you buy from them. As long as you buy from them and you sell, sell from them. them. That's and, the whole and business buy arms of from them. That's and what which it, all of them do. They're all a market economies. Uh, but, but, so, but see, but see, uh, but see Saudi Arabia. What Saudi Arabia? They're all market yeah. economies. Saudi Arabia is, yeah. is the leader in oil. Yeah, yes, they yes, are yes, the leaders yes, in oil. Yeah, see what's well, happening? Yeah, and they did not even they did not even show application and, towards and don't, the G seven. And don't forget well, that the America, United States, America, America trying to make their play the country self sufficient in oil, and now their friend Guyana have oil. So. The world is the dynamics, dynamics of the so world. Your friend just be, uh, no, <laughs> Guyana just became your friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Guyana just became, oh, they just became Guyana's oh, friend. Oh, and oh, they're yeah. right there, so yeah, it's <laughs> going to be interesting. Yeah. But what interesting. about Venezuela? America is buying so, oil from someone's Venezuela. Someone's on the telephone. Yeah. Uh, interesting topic. I'm sorry about that. It's I'm economics. Let's see what that I call That drives the world. Money that drives the world, man. Good evening to you, Carl. Yes, Cecil. Just adding my little two cents to the discussion. The value of the U.S. is that they are the world's greatest consumers. <laughs> that too. So that's why everybody needs them. That's you true. You understand? That's true. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you. The world's 
mm-hmm. wealth or, or resources than any other nation. That's true. Yes, that's you understand? True. They, they buy, buy they, they, everything. They, they, everything. Uh, so that's the value. But what, what China now has realized mm-hmm. is that by developing these countries, which would you call the third world, they have, they have more mass. Yeah, more they have markets. more mass. Yeah, yeah, more mass. mass. There's more market. So yeah. if you develop the people, you create those customers as well, yeah. and then you can you can avoid America. Mm-hmm. So that I think is the game plan. But let me tell you something, Dr. Yeah. Peters. Can you come Thank in you. here? Mm-hmm. It's what we call the economies of scales. Uh-huh. You must understand how these things work. Mm-hmm. The world is driven by markets, um, trade. Um, so the Chinese are very, very wise. So the, they, they so the Chinese are very wise. So Dr. Peters, yes. Yeah. And one, one of the outcomes, I said, is that Dominical benefit, because as his major powers start looking <laughs> for friends, the <laughs> America come here too. Yeah, they because, build, uh, and because they want they, to build schools and how they watch them. They need they need um support in the United Nations. Oh, they, yeah. need, right. they need support in on the international world. And, and, and when and, 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 uh, and once and Russia China is, beat them to that, yes, to that. So they want to get them this but, country. But, but you see what what we now seen, Doctor, is mm-hmm. uh, I've I've re- realized is that we are seeing much more co- countries of the region getting into the non traditional um countries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you um, know, and that is a threat I think to the to the United One of the things we learned from the um, period of Russia mm-hmm. is that once you have communism in Russia, the there was no trade, the mm-hmm. Truman drug trade. Mm-hmm. Once you have China in the Caribbean and in Africa, America will want to come there. Oh, yeah. It's a better opportunity for small island uh, state. They are, they we have to be mean. we have to be strategic. But even if even if we see the American economy is dwindling. Uh, that's not going to be That's not going to drink. They have results. As you're dreaming now. You're dreaming. <laughs> results. America plays games. America you have to own games. half of Canada. They uh, own China. They, I mean... No, but, China, but no, no, no. Mm-hmm. America own, owes China uh, trillions of dollars. Yeah, yeah. Trillions and, uh, of, yeah, of dollars. Yeah, yeah. But so so how, how, how do they own pay? China? Well, you think some of the companies... America have no investment in them. Yes, they do. Oh, of yes. course, they they lose their money there. Like, like that in Venezuela, like that in Venezuela. Everywhere, Europe. Um, in, um, so, the world, the world economy. That's that's another thing we don't teach that well. People need to. But I'm glad. Look, Cecil is studying it. That's good, Cecil. Mm-hmm. Good. Uh, you're doing good studying, uh, yeah, Cecil. You're doing good. You're doing good. You're doing. Uh, but yeah. we have but, to understand. But Doc, I, I want to find out from you, though, mm-hmm. in, in reference to the United States um, and its policies. Mm-hmm. Um, why would they? be invested in so many countries where they are anti these these governments and anti the system <laughs> of these countries mm. and they are, they are still investing in, in in these countries why <laughs> wealth money man the, the 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 hedge money theory you know in the old days where they used to go and overtake people's country like what putin trying to do in um thing now we put in oil <laughs> he's still using that old thing want to invade country america does not use that they use economic hedge money so they go into countries, they put their systems and they make a lot of people rich and they get richer themselves. That's their strategy all the time. They're in countries where people are hostile to them, but the people working for them are making money and selling to them. That's South Africa. No, no, but, 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 doctor, I, I, don't Iran. Believe, I don't believe that that's the same in terms of the United States and Russia. Um, yeah. Russia, we have seen, we have seen the Soviet Union crash, um, Way back in '89, and so what we have seen Russia done is to mm. try to prevent um, Ukraine, which is uh, 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 on the border, mm. to prevent the United States from having um, that full access, especially that of the of that of the well, European Union. Well, let me send my point That's here. That's what they say. But That's yeah. what they say. The but thing that, about no, it, no. If, um, Doctor Putin Peters. made a mistake. Putin made a mistake. You no, no, before before you continue, someone someone wants to maybe engage oh. himself into the conversation. Yes, go Good evening, you caller. Good evening, Doctor Peters. Mo- Good evening. Yeah, I would like to find out from you. Um, do you think that developing countries should begin to diversify their foreign reserves away from Western banks? Since these countries have a tendency, when you do not agree with their policies, or their seize your money. happening in your country, <laughs> freeze your money. They, yes, they, yes. they can uni- unilaterally just yes. freeze your assets. Very or interesting put sanctions question, on Dr. You. Peters. Should yes. we look at putting our foreign reserves in other countries? That, you can do that, but under the General Assembly, UN um, Charter, these major countries work. When you, let's suppose you commit what they see as an international violation, they all agree whether you're money in Iran, US, or Zimbabwe, that they will freeze your assets. They agree to that. So it, it helps to diversify in more friendly countries, but you run in the same risk. 
America can freeze people country just by their own, you know. They get um in um they got consensus from the general not general assembly, but um under the charters that the people invest their money in, they seize the people's money. But the people do get back the money, you know. Iran just get back their billions, I think, if they um if they follow what the directions of the international community that's what they call it <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but yes um it's not a bad idea you know and so we also need a foreign bank in dominica too mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> like that yeah, yes. mm -hmm. uh, so. you, you see the whole business doc you mm -hmm. your man international mm -hmm. man mm -hmm. you have to be able to play the game Yes, the whole yes. is a game yeah, game. these people don't understand international relations are a fascinating thing. No one, they have no enemy, nobody have no friends. Friends is your own they interest. Are, yes. So yes. so are you saying way. to me, Doc, that um members or countries of the G seven like Canada, France, Germany, Italy, mm -hmm. Japan, the United Kingdom and the United States, you, you do you really believe that any of those countries <laughs> will, will will go across to, to BRICS? BRICS? Yeah, why not? Why you not? think so? So, mm -hmm. so we can see G seven maybe diffusing itself. They still have G seven. They still have G seven. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. International relations. They, the game. If you if you if you advising them now, you would advise them to do that. You you have to destabilize some countries in order to stabilize That's yourself. Your That's how it works. Let's go to the telephone quickly. Good evening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good evening. One question, Doctor yeah. Peters. Yes, sir. Do you think there's a need now to restructure? the um, United Nations. <laughs> 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 so, you know, that's, yeah, yeah. that's 1946. <laughs> 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 yes, I like yes, everything you're saying, you know, what? Yes, 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 something. Yes. Do you think, mm -hmm. because the United Nations it have to be supporting mm -hmm. the rights, yeah. the rights yes. of the people of the world? Yes, they represent, they yeah. represent all our rights. Yes. yes. So do you think there's a need now based on how they're functioning and certain stance that they're taking? Um, do you think there's a need or don't you think there's a need to restructure it? But we'd be in trouble. If if we try to restructure now, the powerful countries will dominate it, which they are, yes, but, they are at least, but at least we have a say now. Mm -hmm. So, But it's old. It's, um, what, 75 years old now. So there might be a need for reform. Um, probably look at the GA and and um, see how you can create more committees with more weight. But yeah, maybe that's the next um, area for change in the world is the United Nations. But right now you put your flag there and uh, there are 192 nations. Dominica is there. So mm -hmm. I think that's the only place of justice we have in that if we get um, wronged, we can go there. And uh, what you're saying is that the structure doesn't allow for too much justice, but I, I agree that um, down the line they might have to reform, but not now. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you another scientific, uh, political scientific question. Mm -hmm. Do you see Vice President Kamala um, Harris um, vying for presidency um, in the next um, general election in the United States? Mm -hmm. Over that of Joe Biden? If, if Biden cannot run, no, she will not. Right now, the data shows she can't win. So, but she, what, what would happen if um, Newsom will run? He must win as the governor of California. That's they preparing him to run, actually. So, because um, Kamala haven't gotten the, the support she needs from the Democratic Party in terms of women. Women, the same thing they did to, to Hillary, the, the same thing they're doing to her. So, do you think that um, President Joe Biden had a poor forecast about um, his vice president? Um, no, man, he, he worked with her. But I think um, she just started off on the wrong foot. She got some people, you know, the, Demo the parties are, step on the wrong foot of some people so they're not supportive. And, uh, and, they, and he hasn't. They have worked on domestic issues so far, and she have not. Unlike when Biden was pres vice president, he had some major international role to play. That's how he got himself in Ukraine and in trouble. But so, um, the currently Kamala is, and part of the reason people don't want to vote for Biden 
be old is because she'll be president if he did. And they, they querying her about that, although they have to vote for him. But she would not, she will run. The next election, Kamala is going to, after Biden, she's going to run. But I don't know, I don't think, by that time she might have mended her, her deficiencies. And, um, but she's a, a good candidate to run in 2020, 2040. Uh, what, what about um, Donald Trump? What do you make of Donald Trump? <laughs> um, Donald Trump is a con man, he's a narcissist. Uh, fool the American um, rednecks, and he have created them into a cult. So here's what's going to happen. Trump Trump going to be the nominee. If they don't make him the nominee, he's going to mash up the party. He run by himself and he, with his 28 million people. So anyway, the Republican Party, look at it, they lose. They're going to lose the election if you run, and he knows that. Trump knows that. Nobody going to know Sane person gonna vote for Trump. You no, gonna get no, this. No, but we said that. We said that. No, no, no. In, in 2016, previous, was, the previous election in 2016, nah, nah, we nah, said nah, nah, that nah, nah. when Trump entered, I remember the, the media house nah, saying nah, nah, nah. after every every vacation, every holiday, yeah. they would say that Trump is going to jump. Is going to is going to go down the from the from the yeah. from, from the um how you call that again. Um, from the lead from the lead yeah, he's yeah. going to drop he's yeah, going to drop yeah, yeah. and every time I remember the, the very first time no we know we know what happened they, 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 we have a lead that you know, the women of the suburbs decide they don't want a woman to be president so that's where it surprised us um, all scientists were saying what the hell happened here they didn't vote for these people normally would vote democratic and um, they didn't vote for Hillary that's all but, 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 but this time People know who Trump is, but we saw, we saw, we saw, and he have his base. We saw that um, President Obama got the votes in Florida. Yes. All right. Yeah. We saw that um, President Clinton got the votes mm. in Florida. Yeah. We saw that Donald Trump got the votes in Florida. Yeah. yeah. We saw also that President Reagan mm -hmm. got the votes in Florida. Right. The too close, too close to call. President Bush yeah. got the votes in Florida. Yeah. So I'm well, saying the that... Chief, the chief and give him the... the, the, <laughs> the, 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 the so uh, Florida is, is, is the maker. No, but that's, that's when you don't have um, Wisconsin and Michigan and Philadelphia. But anytime you have this free state, you don't need um, Philadelphia, as, as you can see. You but we see the Phillies going... We see normally the, Philly go, the Phillies go with, um, the, Republica with the, the Republicans. No, yeah, well, the last time they did. The time before that, they did. Yes. but they didn't vote for him the last time. Yeah. So we um no, the numbers not there for Trump. And he knows that. Trump just running to make money and hope he would get to win so that he don't have to go to prison. But I think the, that ship have sailed. And Biden is is we just gonna vote for Biden because we have to. If you run against Trump, you have to. I, I I'm seeing the, I'm seeing Americans maybe abstaining from this election. I, one of one of my views, mm -hmm. uh, and we have to be realistic. I don't not that I like to get in American affairs. Mm -hmm. I like to more deal with my Caribbean issues. Yes, yes. But basically, my views on Biden, and that's mine. Mm -hmm. I think he's too old. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think he's losing uh, it. He, yeah. His memory oh. is fading. He and uh, to match up in global politics. No, you need a young man or woman, whoever it is that can really put forth. Because when you are physically, in terms of your physic, mm -hmm. it sends a message yeah, that yeah. America is getting weak. But remember, remember three branches in government in America. You know, the president is the most powerful branch, but they have two other branches that help run the country. So, um, But yeah, there is a concern. Americans have the same concern that Biden might not make the term if they elect him, but... As long as Trump is running, they have to vote Biden. <laughs> I, but I'm, I'm saying to him, the way I see it now, yeah. just speaking to Americans, yeah. that quite a number of Americans would not go and vote. Because yeah. some, many of them are not satisfied with um, Biden's leadership. No, um, that's not what the, that, the poll shows. So. And people talking one-on-one, -on -one, I don't vote for Biden. Mm -hmm. I, but what they know is the, either that or the dead. You put Trump <laughs> to run down America. Yeah. Trump has proven himself to be a criminal. And now people know that. People wasn't sure in 2016, <laughs> but 2020 they sure, and now in 2024, who gonna vote for Trump? Except his base. But uh, no, he still not, get 28 no, no, million. Uh, why, why, why you're saying 28 million, which is his base in, in his the base. Republican Party? Yes. You are still seeing the Republican Party giving him greatest great support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That is best. You can't mess uh, with okay, that. Okay, let me ask Doctor, mm, moving uh, away uh, slightly from the American politics so that we can uh, we can end uh, mm, with you, Doctor. Mm, your views on Haiti. Well, <laughs> Haiti have male. <laughs> That's yeah. all I can say. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. It's it's, it's a country that's an enigma. It's been like this since the revolution. And uh, it's a tough country. I don't, I don't know what are the solutions. I mean... Uh, Should uh, we invade it? Um, that's not going to help. As soon as you leave, gangs come in again. So it has to be self-rule, and uh, I don't know how you're going to do that. It's, it's the challenge of the world now is to try to help Haiti, to stabilize. What, what do mm. we make of France and, and England, especially England where um, we have seen a, a new... Um, Prime Minister, you know, um, mm. he has not grown in popularity yet. No, no, um, no. But, but what, what do you make of, of England? They haven't changed. Their, their, their foreign policy is the same. They're not changing. <laughs> Look, they put an um, um, embargo on everybody coming to their country. Yes. So they're getting um, more insular than um, um, even America. I, I, mm -hmm. you, you know, Doc, 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 as you're saying, I was, I was, so, so, much more sur I was so, so surprised mm. last week when, mm. when I read that know that um, England is going to put um, embargo mm. on every country yes. of persons that are coming into into, yes, into yes, yes, so yes. while a few weeks ago mm -hmm. uh, about mm -hmm. a month and a half ago that Dominicans were talking about uh, Dominica and uh, the relationship yeah. of England yeah, no, now England has made it very clear that all countries are going to go to yeah, go through yeah, the same yeah, thing that they have placed Dominica yeah, into yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean that, that is yeah. something else. Let well, me they, they have a they have a um, migration problem, huh? Yeah. Yes. But that's not always so. everybody who, who every refugee want to go to England. So and um, so they that's the means of trying to dissuade that. Mm -hmm. Australia did it and it worked, so they try not to. And my question to you, mm -hmm. but before quickly. you ask your question, quickly, yeah, go ahead. Good evening to your caller. Yes, Dr. Peter is closer home. Yes. Um, do you think that we are underutilizing our water resources? Oh, definitely. Uh, I, I asked the Prime Minister to give me a, 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 a franchise, let me export water, so I can make a little money. <laughs> but not no, no, but seriously, I mean, um, we there are 1.6 billion people in the face of this earth who have no access or very little access to water. Dominica is the country in the world that have the most water per capita. So, and um, we're not using it. I mean, when when I went to, to um, cricket recently and saw that um, blue waters are the pouring rights, I mean, I wonder where was Twabiton, but obviously Twabiton didn't buy the rights, I guess. That's the other thing in business. I don't know. Um, all business people are not um, proactive at all. So, yeah. Yeah, b because I, I think Dominicans, are, we are a large consumer of, of bottled water. Mm-hmm. Of all brands yeah, in countries yeah. that do not have rivers yeah, flowing through them, yeah. their, their water find their way in Dominica. Yes. And I personally would like to send a challenge to Dowasco mm. to diversify from revenue collected through through bills. Dowasco, I believe, should be bottling water for the Dominican consumer. Yeah. You all okay. the, the and, and, and I, I, I think I think there has to be a reset in all of the reset we are talking about. Mm -hmm. There has to be a reset because I believe if you have a resource that is in abundance, yep. that resource should be driving your economy. That is true. And okay, uh, and, yeah. and 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 I, I, I think that we have to do a, a radical change. In I wouldn't I wouldn't give it to the Osco. I'll, I'll get a company. Well, to, some, to somebody it. somebody <laughs> because why not invite the companies that are exporting water to Dominica. Yep. Why not invite them? Yeah, to get a franchise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. All right. No, because no, no. Right now, I'm following the the developments in in Niger, mm. and right now the, the 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 French were getting their uranium for eighty euro eighty euro cents per a kilogram per kilogram. Yeah, yeah. And now they have increased it to two hundred two hundred yeah. euro per kilogram. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Yeah, and, so and and I think it is time that we begin to or economic yeah, that's but, that's but it's, it's not as easy as caller I, I want to also say to you the reason why they did this is because they saw that they were selling their their their, their, mati their material to below market, to, to, below market. To below market. Um, and, I, and they I were agree. selling that two hundred dollars the same price that um that the Europeans that was um and now selling it. Mm -hmm. So but not but not only that, France was using their uranium to to um to produce energy that they were selling to, to, to other countries. countries right. and, and I believe the whole of Africa continent is waking up 
right? They are waking up to the reality that they see. have the resources, and I believe that's what Nigeria people, is going to do. Eh? There are black people all over the world with the expertise mm -hmm. that can create industries in their country, and, and mm -hmm. I'm very happy that the, the the president of Burkina Faso is is leading the charge in that regard. Yes, yeah. but yeah, thank well, you. It's all forefathers' land, thank and we <laughs> yeah. and certainly we we want to help them, and I'm glad they. So but they must stop taking so many coups. They need to focus on their economies. Mm -hmm. But but yeah. So yeah, right, gentlemen, we can hit the road now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was asking my final question. Yes. Since you are Pan Africanist, yes, yes. Uh, in terms of the, you mentioned the word coups. Yes. Uh, you notice in Africa now, the military is taking over, and most of it is in French colonies. W what is your thinking? Well, like the French colonies have been there, have still been there. They, they've been uh, a low flyer. They fly underneath. Mm -hmm. Unlike uh, England and America go and make big, varying people place, the France is always there. So that's what you've seen. So eventually, currently, this new country like Burkina Faso and um, um, Senegal will be putting demands on the French to share the resources. But remember, the, these international relations again, Remember soon, one of these countries is going to pay another coup to take over. And they, they start all over again. But for now, it's, it's okay. I, I, think, <laughs> I think what I'm going to try to do sometime <laughs> in the future, Dr. Peter, yes, uh, uh, Peter is to mm -hmm. get a person like you and, and even Dr. Jajak mm -hmm. uh, to come on, on, on national radio to, mm -hmm. to really help to, 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 to... Understand the world? Let people have a greater understanding Foreign as to what, what the world is like. Because a lot of the times, Dr. We, we sit there and we talk yeah. and not understanding what the world platform is yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. most recently we were talking about England and Dominica mm -hmm. and this visa thing yes, and yeah. not understanding <laughs> where why, the, where England how, was actually yeah. going to. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because England itself has its sovereignty, has to protect its yeah, borders. Yeah, 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 and yeah. that's what they're actually doing. They're doing yeah, yeah. And, and if, you rem if you remember, if we have to take it back, mm -hmm. as way back as Brexit, yeah, yeah, we would yeah. have seen that what, it started yeah, from yeah. Brexit. Brexit yeah. Yeah. Um, so the first move was to, yeah. to get the Europeans to be in their own territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we as uh, people in the land of the Europeans who have our own platform. Yeah. And, and, no, and no, so right. what they have done is for the rest of the world now to include that of America and that yeah. of Canada. And foreign policy, you drop one shoe at a time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, yes. Yeah, yeah. one shoe at a time. Yes. Yes. Well, British are good at that. <laughs> Dr. Peters, it's time to let you go. Yes. yes. I mean, you it, was been, it was fun. It was fun being here with us. I hope we can invite him again. Yeah. I will. Yeah, yeah, but that time it will be on the issue of um, international, international politics. International relations right, and politics. Yes. All right. Take care, my Thanks again, Doc. Thanks again. All right. All right. You have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we just from speaking to Dr. Um, Donald Peters, Donald Peters, who has given us quite a lot, you know, food for thoughts um, here this evening, and um, I, I really um, brain, I'm so happy that we could have Dr. Donald Peter um, to come in here and to have a sober conversation. Right. With us. But one of the things that I want us to do as a nation. Uh, Political science is a very interesting subject, and w most of our people must begin to study it. Because, it, yeah, okay, Dr. Peter, it, it is a way of helping us to understand policy. It helps us to understand international relations, who our friends must be, we, because we have to survive in a small island state. You know what I mean? So, so that is a very important subject that, that people must begin to study because it helps you us see, to you refocus. See, you, see, you see, Brain, I think what's important for us to all understand is how the, the world itself function. I think uh, we, we allow some people to grow um, ignorance into our minds and we, we don't sit in and, and analyze what is happening in the world or study what's happening in the outside world. And so, uh, because of that um, um, brain, we, we, we stay ignorant. Right. For instance, uh, because we, we have to look at things from a, a realistic point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, foreign policy keeps shifting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand and uh, that we, we, we are satellites of none but friends of all. Of all. Because when we look at the international world and going on international politics... Many of us heard about Vietnam. Yes. And Vietnam, 
for the bitter struggle against the United, United States. States. Yeah. It was even also said that the United States lost that war. And it was said that the United States lost the war. We remember the Viet Cong, we remember the bombings. Mm. And do you know when I tuned in, I saw B Joe Biden, the President of the United States, with the Prime Minister or the President of Vietnam. I never believe I would have seen that in my lifetime. What drove them to come together? Not only economics, but foreign policy depending on China. Because the United States want to have a bridge that is influence in Vietnam to counter attack the influence of China. So here were two bitter enemies that I grew up going to primary school hearing about the war in Vietnam. They became friends, they're friends now, they're trading, they're discussing. Mm -hmm. Would you ever believe that you would have seen that in your lifetime? Um, also, too, when we look at Japan, we know of um, the situation of Japan being bombed the, by the United yeah, States. Yeah, a nuclear bomb. And um, today, atomic bomb. And today we are seeing the, the relationship between the United States, traded relationship um, with the United States, and also being allies of the United States. The United States. You know, and, and I think in, in our parts of in the region, we, we, we must, we should be able to look at uh, the, the platform of the United States and what they are actually doing. I'm not saying that our, our fiscal policies will be like that of the United States or our political policies um, will be like, our foreign policies will be like that of the United States because we are a black people. Um, it's totally different um, concepts of development. But I, I am saying that we, we have to now look within the region as to how we can start to grow our bilateral relationship stronger. Um, the United States is talking about Venezuela like, like crazy, but they do have trade. No, but they're buying oil. They, they have companies in, in the United States uh, that, 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 that the parent organization is in, is in Venezuela. They, they, and they're buying oil. They're buying oil from Venezuela, Venezuela. all now mm -hmm. because of the situation with energy. Mm -hmm. so, so, so people are talking one thing and doing another thing mm -hmm. because people must understand what is in their best interest in terms of the economic development. But, but, but let's just look at what happened with, with the United States and Taiwan. Um, Ta the United States was looking like it was giving open door to Taiwan um, where, where, where we know that the United States knows of the one China policy. To, to try to irritate the, the Chinese. We saw the Chinese didn't take it lightly with the United States. And what is now happening? We heard of the G7's um, 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 meeting that was supposed to be held this week. Mm -hmm. And what transpired, we heard what the United States Foreign um, Department said in reference to the absence of the, 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 the president of, of, of China mm -hmm. in that meeting. So, so really and truly that we, we as a small nation yeah, you know, must states. have a greater understanding of, of what international relationships. Um, relationship is. And, and, and that is why we, and, 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 and that's why I'm very proud of the work. Again, it's not politics. We have to go beyond the politics. Um, so I'm, I'm talking about party politics. But we have to look at the, the fact that um, what Roosevelt Skerritt does um, in terms of creating now um, more relationships with non-traditional countries. Mm -hmm. Unlike before we heard, when we were, when I was growing up, we would have heard Canada building a school, the school mm -hmm. that we're now going to demolish um, in Goodwill was built by the Canadians. We heard of the French building school for us once upon a time. We heard of the relationship between Ro between um, the between Dominica and the United States in terms of foreign policies, um, or how we work. Um, but right now we are seeing that we are into Asia, um, we are seeing that we're into Africa. As a matter of fact, Roosevelt Skerritt is talking quite a lot about Africa. Um, we are seeing that um, we are into the Middle East, um, trying to create that relationship that is required. Right. For instance, and here it is, and, and we have to understand what is the development. Because creating these new schools and developing relationship with non-traditional partners, because at the end of the day, is your economic survival. Yes, yes. Let's go to the telephone. Good evening to you, caller. Yes, brother. Yes, the fireman touching base. Let me tell you something. Don't forget that uh, Africa is the one feeding the whole world today, and we is the one that have the bitter part of the whip. And don't forget, Marcus Garvey said, for us to shine, unless Africa will become one, 
we'll always have a problem and come to this Caribbean also. And when you brother talk about Cuba and America, you not know party that have Cuba in that state. It's America philosophy that have Cuba in that state. So even Trump come or Biden there, it will remain the same because not none of them have it there. It's the heads that have it in that condition. And it is very ugly and untidy for us. It's making us suffer and all different ways hard. It's not healthy for us. And that's why Africa coming together now, so we'll have a voice. So people will take our food and our resources and make themselves healthy and joyful and keep us in calamity. Time is coming for us. Up and running. <laughs> Fireman, <laughs> when I'm listening, great program. Give thanks for life. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paula. Uh, now, you talk about foreign policies, and we have to say that. Because, Cecil, you know that, for instance, I'm very passionate about goodwill in terms of the school and seeing that new school being is commissioned to be built and hearing that it's going to be a technical and vocational center for excellence it brings joy to my joy to my heart for the simple reason skills are very important and having this as a national center for skill training is a very big thing i heard of ai and hearing about artificial intelligence, intelligence in that in that s- s- situation mm-hmm. so i'm looking forward to the school and somebody came came and asked me but are they taking the whole playing field? And that is what <laughs> I'm saying, Cecil. You see, education is important. It, and it was explained. It was explained right. so the at, the, uh, at, the, at the groundbreaking um, ceremony. Uh, when you, we heard the parliamentary representative of the area spoke, we heard the prime minister spoke, and we heard the minister for education spoke. And also, too, we heard the guy that is coming from CCEC um, as to what the um, how much what the size is going to be like, and so on. So I do not understand why would someone even want to right, ask because the question. Some, you know, some people were coming to ask me that question, mm-hmm. but I told the person no. So I know there are listeners listening, and you know there's a lot of propaganda. You know, because every time you're going to do a development project, some persons always come with certain ideas to try to derail it or give the impression that something else is going to be done. And I'm glad you mentioned the fact that the heads explain quite clearly what the school is going to be looking like. And diagrams were placed there, people could see. And the space in the area is a very, very, very big space. It's a big space. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And and, and so what, what I'm happy about is um, we, we would have heard of the... Um, construction of that school for about five years now. Right, right. Um, and, and now it, it has finally been agreed upon. As a matter of fact, you, you heard all the reasoning why the school did not start earlier than expected. But not only is just the Goodwill School, there are also some four other schools. Well, let me just tell you from my own, I don't know whether you have the names mm. of all the schools, mm. but I could probably just give them to you. I think there's one in Sinico, there's one in Tibo, um, there's one there's in, the one in, in Tibo. Tibo. No, uh-huh. the Thibault school, I heard the Prime Minister say how many times that school had yes. to be delayed. Well, not delayed. Well, delayed. Yeah, delayed. Well, for want of a better word, mm-hmm. allowing other Others, persons yes, to get so priority yeah, right. over, over the school. Mm-hmm. So although he, he is in his constituency, so that, that, is go, that is going to be one of the schools mm-hmm. under the program. I think it's 83 million. Yes, 83 million. Right. And then you have the Goodwill School. You have the Bellevue Chopin Petit Savan Primary School. Yes. That's, a, that's another one. You have the Tetmon Primary School. Mm-hmm. You have the Cynical Primary School. And then you have the Kalibishi Primary School. Right. So, so all these are part of the program. And I'm, I'm very happy to see that at last those schools are coming into, into three shows. Let's, let's go back to the telephone. Good evening to you. Hello, good evening to Cecil and Brain. Mm-hmm. Good evening. Mr. Brain, I had some conversation with you um, at Jolly's um, and in Portsmouth. Yes. And um, I, I have a big problem with the Nature Island brand that we have been selling. If we are selling a Nature Island brand, we should be genuine in our, in our conduct and management of our, our environment. The Blue Caribbean Sea that we have been so accustomed to in the 60s and into the 70s, even to the 80s, is being disturbed by quarrying activities. Go ahead. And um, I'm particularly concerned that there is not enough um, action taken by the, by the institutions and the state with respect to quarry activities on the island. Um, in the Collier area, 
there's a particular quarry that um, washes sand, I would not say sand, soil, basically, and the, 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 the effluent goes straight into the sea. And it is affecting the livelihood of fishermen. I do not have a problem if uh, a person invests their monies in a particular industry and you make your millions, but I don't think it is right for a company to be making millions of dollars from an operation while they're driving another sector of the population to the poverty. Okay. I, I, I wonder what, what the Blue Economy Ministry would have to say about this or the Ministry of Agriculture would have to say about this. I, I think what I can do is to try to get some information in reference to your concern. Yeah, yeah, because, Cecil, let me tell you, um, there, 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 there is another quarry in Kolihu um, that also washes um, the sand. They also wash the sand. And from what I see, they have a sort of... Um, a, a system where they recycle the water so you 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 hardly find you hardly ever find the river in Kolyo dirty as a result of that sand washing okay but this particular quarry that is operating at Anskola in Kolyo on a daily basis i tell you on a daily basis that dirty water um in fact in fact if you go to the site on the base side there is a ramp that was constructed for elderly people to be willed to take a sea bath because that's an, a recreational area and and, and, and it's, it's been decimated by by this constant constant plume of dirty water. I am saying that quarrying is a necessary activity. I am not against quarrying. Quarrying is a necessary activity but I believe that quarrying should be done with the best practice in mind. And allowing dirty water to go constantly into our ocean. I heard a reporter ask the, the, the Prime Minister at a press conference some time ago, um, earlier this, 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 either last month or, or something this month, about Japan dumping um, stuff in the ocean. And I'm saying, what? Japan dumping stuff in the ocean? What about right in your country? Stuff is being dumped into your ocean. Mm -hmm. And nobody's talking about right. it. I have sent I have sent pictures to planning. I have I have written I have sent I've posted things on Facebook. But you know what I have noticed? That anything on especially social media, anything that is educational, anything that is of value to the human mind, people don't comment. Let me ask you a question. In reference to the um West Coast in that particular area as called uh, um does it affect the bed of the of the of the sea on the west coast? I'll, I'll because I, the reason why I'm asking yeah, that question uh -huh. because I know that normally um, in those areas we have crabs and all of these things mm -hmm. in that area. So Wildlife. I want to find out. I want to find out a little bit, you know, about it. Well, it 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 it, it would. You see, because we don't understand that the ecosystem is very dynamic, but it's also very fragile. Because Kolio area is an area with a lot of black crabs. In fact, I believe that black crabs are on the decline. Now, when the crabs, All when right. the crabs are in migration, they go to the sea. And Cecil, if you have to watch a crab release its egg in the sea, you'll be surprised. The crab actually braces itself on its legs and shakes itself and releases the, 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 the eggs into the sea. Now, these eggs, they go between this, the stones in the seabed, and they hatch. But when you have mud... And that's why I asked the question. That's why I asked the question, question in reference right, to the, right. seab the seabed. No, no I, 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 would, I believe whatever you are saying, it has to be evidence-based. Mm -hmm. right? I can tell you for sure that the dirty water goes into the ocean. But I have spoken to a fisherman, and one of the ways we can establish, one of the ways we can establish whether the, the seabed is being affected, I told the fisherman what we need to do is to go on a boat with a, a PVC pipe and drill it into the, into the seabed and remove a, 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 a core sample. And then we can look at that core sample to look at the depth of that sedimentation. But I personally believe that the, the, the marine environment is being affected. Mm. Now, granted, Cecil, 
that the marine environment is not only being affected by quarrying, to be honest, because we had severe flood events in the likes of Eric and Maria that have significantly affected our marine environment. All right? But I can tell you safely that there is a particular stone in an, the area called Anscola. When I was growing up as a boy, I was pushed from that stone, and guess what? I had to swim to the shore. You know what is happening right now? I walk onto that stone without my feet getting wet. That is to show you the amount of change that has taken place. And there are a lot of changes that so, are taking so the place. So the sea is actually moving out? Then that's what you're saying? Exactly. Most precisely, precisely. And this is not only happening as a is result it? of quarrying uh, okay. activities. Uh -huh. If you look at um, Jimit, Jimit is another area. You have um, um, Rodis Rock, which is, which is a, 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 a dive site. And in the Jimit area, soil, soil has been pushed into the sea constantly. In fact, that vegetation line that we knew at Jimit is, is, is being removed um, um, inch by inch. Because Cecil, if you have observed, whenever we have hurricanes, the sea never comes onto the road at Jimit. Right? And this is right next door. The vegetation plays a very important role in that regard. But what has been happening recently is material has been dumped into the sea. The sea has been pushed. I haven't got a, ma a problem with, with, with backfilling of the sea. But you can backfill the sea and offer no protection to what you are putting in. You know, so that's my concern. I need government to take a serious look. Quarrying, and especially the Quarry Act. The Quarry Act has not been passed in Parliament, and that has to be done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see another caller. Good evening to you, caller. Good, good evening to you, caller. Oh, good night. Yeah, along the volume of your radio, volume of your TV, or your, or your, or your television, television, so that you can get uh, okay. to speak to us clearly. Right? Yes. Good evening, caller. Yes. Yes. Good night. Um. Though I'm not against the last caller, but I just want to ask and maybe have your views on that. We know Dominica is a heavy <coughs> rainfall country. Now, besides the Wasco, and we know what happens when it rains heavy, the Wasco shuts up most of its intakes. And the the the, um, the population or the residents will not get watched because what the wasp want to protect their um, the the equipment and their supply to the population. But my my question is my my thinking on that, Cecil. All of our, our rivers flow into the sea. All. All of our rivers, 365 plus. And when it rains, we have more than 365. So, still, all of these waters, no matter what it goes down with from the mountain, it goes straight into the sea. Okay? So, even though, yes, uh, we have to try to control the, the coring of our material. Um, um, go into the sea and whatnot and whatnot. But are you going to tell me that we're going to prevent rain from, from falling? Well, well the caller, the call, the, to, to the defense of the caller, though, um, caller, I want to say to you that the caller also indicated that um, it's not just only quarry material that gets into the into the sea. He gave examples of Amaria and all of the other um, he, natural, he, he, natural Maria, elements. Maria, right. Maria. Mar Maria and the others were just one, mm -mm. one, one area. So mm -mm, remember, mm -mm. we get we get rain almost on a regular basis in Dominica, mm -mm, mm -mm. And, and all of our overflows goes straight into the sea. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's my concern. Mm -hmm. So it's not only the core rain, you know. Although he mentioned Maria, Maria was just one. And he said okay. many others. So the many others could mean that water, um, many, many um, others. Uh, um, we had soil from the soil from the from the higher part of the country, um, from the mountain area coming down into 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 the um well, into, that, that, the is, that is what I'm talking. That is what I'm talking about, Cecil. 
And this is caused by rainfall. Mm-hmm. Rainfall and it, anything it meets in its way, it, it takes it down. You know, and everything goes straight into the sea. What happens then? What happens to the seabed? What happens to the fish? What happens to the fishermen? They still catch fish. So some 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 most, some, some, now, some things some, some based on what like for instance I know after Maria a lot of vehicles found themselves into the sea on um and so um I'm sure that it would have created rifts for the for the fish and, well, and, and again, for the, fish, for the, for the, for the life just, of you just you just took it from me mm-hmm. that is why right now we have a heavy um catch of fish nowadays because there are a lot of rifts in the sea at the moment. Remember, we, 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 we America did some artificial reefs in the ocean some yes. time ago. Yes. You know that? Yes. But the river itself takes down, and when it goes there, you cannot even see it because of the extent, the amount of silt and everything that goes down with it. And then you, after the rainfall, when you go down, if you go for half a look, take for instance, these two guys from Bath State who lost their lives. Okay, the two brothers. Yeah, Fubei brothers. They were never found. They were not even cut, not even a shot, not even a fingernail. They found of these two young men. They were washed into the river, and then out in the, into the sea. I don't know the region the sea. <laughs> well, okay. I don't okay. know. Uh, that that well, said they that said they that said they the amount of stones and big boulders well, well, that, that were crushing things that they met. Well, I'm not so okay. sure they reached the sea. Well, maybe parts parts of their body must have gone somewhere. You know, because I know Bathurst River. I, I mean, I know Bathurst River how it is. You know, but you know that was, that is only my concern. I'm not against him talking about um, um the 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 um control of of the of the quarries and whatnot. Although what he really said, quarrying is very important in Dominica. You remember Dominica only had one quarry before, which is in Focolay, in Kinfield. You know, Rockaway. Only one that was before. Now we have how many? We have about what? Four? Four of them now. Not only that. And most of after 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 the 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 um the runoffs from the from the Mathieu Dam. We have many quarries around the, the Laiu River area, you know? And um, what I would want to see, talking about that, Cecil, is that the, 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 try, the dredge, try to dredge the Laiu River to make it more um, accessible. Because I can remember any days when I started working in Laiu, Cecil, in the U.S. Coast, castaways was operational. And there was a gentleman from Kalibishi. He, he met me the other day. His name is John Louisa. And he, okay, he used to have a, a speedboat taking tourists from the from castaways going up the Laiu River, you know, on a speedboat. Right now, it cannot be done because the river bed is so, so, so low, you know. And then they should try to dredge the river. Yes, there is a lot of material I'm, 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 I'm down there still. Dredge it. Whatever has to happen to the material, let it be. And redredge the river. Control it nicely so that it can be more accessible as, a, as, a, as a, how it used to be a tourist attraction. That's what I, you know. But besides, besides, I mean, he made a valid point. I don't want to counteract his point, but I was just saying about the rivers. All of our rivers, they flow directly into the sea with silt, stones, wood, fridge, stove, every living thing. And maybe after, after the rain has subsided, when you go, you cannot even see them. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Well, you see, the price of development... Um, Brain um, is is humongous. Well, it's sustainable uh, development, it's right? So you took it from You must mouth. develop. You, you have to, so it's sustainable. It's sustainable development, and it has to, to be see. managed. Right. So when the caller is talking about silting of the sea uh, because of um, mining activities, which he alluded to, uh, there has to be a situation where. He himself monitoring, monitoring, monitoring yes. and I'm sure these people from the environment, I know there were certain discussions 
in terms of the number of quarries because I know that government placed a, num- a restriction on the number of quarries. And I know, for instance, um, in areas that there is monitoring to find out what is actually causing that level of um, siltage. Because as the last scholar said, uh, there's weathering. We call it in geography, weathering. When there's heavy rain, there's siltation where you can see the river being brown. You have a caller? Yes. Mm-hmm. Good evening to you, caller. Well, this caller is calling to defend himself. No, 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 no caller. You no, don't defend no, yourself. No, caller, no, caller. No, listen, I'm, I, hold I'm on, hold on. Hold, hold, hold yeah. on a while. Hold on a while. Yeah, hold on, yeah, hold on, yeah, hold on. Yes. The, the caller that called earlier on, I don't think he was criticizing you your, 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 yes. I, I, I agree. So I, I, so I don't want to even start by I saying that you're to defend Okay, all right, okay. I take back that statement. Yeah. Okay, I take back that statement. Um, Cecil, when something is done in the environment and it is the cause of nature, there is a different reaction. Agreed? Right. Agreed. If there is a landslide or mudslide and any river gets dirty, mm-hmm. people generally accept that there was a mudslide uh, and the river got dirty. Let me and, ask, that's, and that's what they call us. Let me ask you a state. specific yeah. question. Yes, sir. We, we, we're in a hard show. We're not in no, no childish business. Are you saying that there is a quarry operating in your area that is actually dumping stuff in the sea? Is, is there a quarry? Wait, hear my question. Is there a quarry that's in, operating in the area and you have the facts that the quarry is in fact dumping stuff inside your inside the sea where the fishermen are operating? Or, or, or uh, uh, in your area, is there a quarry where enough monitoring is not happening and some of the works that have been done has found itself into the sea. Okay, to answer Bryn's question, um, I would not use the word um, dumping because when you say, when you use the word dumping, it would appear like a, a, a truck, you have a truck that is dumping stuff. Deliberate. It's not, it's, it's not that. So what, what is happening there? In the processing of the material, the, the, the material is being washed. So when you wash soil or sand, remember soil is made out of clay, sand, and silt. Mm-hmm. And different soils have different levels of silt. So where are they washing it? Upstream they, or downstream? They, they are washing it. They are washing it. Actually, the quarry was established within a ravine. Within a ravine. And when the quarry was established, the, the understanding was then that the quarry would move further inland. But apparently, the rocks are not readily available, so the quarry remains where it was established in the first place. But what is happening during the processing of the sand, of the sand there, there, there is a wastewater. And best practice would require that wastewater to be collected either in an open pit, allow it to, to, to filter into the soil or evaporate, and then the solid material is removed and dumped in areas that have been extracted to fill. What is happening is that the water from the quarry is constantly, constantly, the only days, the only days that this quarry does not allow their wastewater to go into the sea is on a Sunday. Okay? Now, I was reacting to what the, the caller said earlier on. And I was saying that when something happens in nature, people tend to, to, to be not very overreactive. But if, for instance, a, a, a truck takes a load of material and dumps it into a river, and the river gets dirty, then you have a different reaction. Now, Cecil, when you, when you grow up in an environment, you are able to detect changes in that environment over time. Correct? For Agreed? sure, for sure, for sure. Now, we, we, yeah, I we, grew up in the village of Kaliho, and there, ha- there has been many floods. When I say floods, when the, uh, during the rainy season, a lot of um, debris comes down. And guess what? Kaliho has always had a stony shoreline. You know a fish they call uh, 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 a fish they call um, um, moeng. Yes, yes, we know. Right. Lives in the stones. Right. That has disappeared from Kaliho. You know why? Because we no longer have a stony shoreline. 
we have a sandy shoreline. Okay, so when the rain falls and the, and the, the river comes down, as we say, and the river is dirty and the wood goes into the sea, nature has a way of 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 of, of replenishing. cleaning up itself. Yeah, okay. Replenishing. Yeah. All right, replenishing itself. Mm. Now, now, how often do you have a flood? Every week? Every day? Well, certainly, well, not, certainly not. Well, caller, caller, caller. We don't have the whole n- night. Oh, okay, all right. All right. right. Uh, uh, we, first of all, yeah. That's uh, it, caller? That's it, caller. That's it, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cecil, um, your reaction to what he's saying? Well, well it, I, I understand his point. When we, when we talk about that we are the nature isle, and we have to safeguard the nature, um, and he's trying to tell us that when things happen naturally mm-hmm. in the environment, there's a different um, reaction to okay. the environment itself, to if man itself does the, does the, the same mm-hmm. reaction, but man does it more frequently. Yeah. And how do we manage it? And he says that to manage it, there are processes that we must go through. Mm-hmm. And I figure that we are missing that form of process and I think what has to happen, as I said earlier on, the 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 Ministry of Green, the Ministry of um, Blue Economy, which is really dealing with the issue of the sea, um, should now visit um, that 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 area, and not just that area, the West Coast to see exactly, because it might just be calling you, but what is the stretch of that work that has been done every day? So while we might be talking about just calling you, it might be stretching down to. Jubla, Biosh, uh, coming down to Kolio, to Kolibi Street, you know, that kind of thing. Um, for so many years it has been happening. And so we need to really, as he said earlier on, we need to get the scientists um, into the water to see, um, one, the temperature of the water, two, to look at the color, the coloration of the water, um, three, to see the depth of the, of, right. of the, of the, of the water, and, and to see the reaction now of the of the of the livelihood, I'm sorry to see the the the, 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 impact, the impact the impact of 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 the area, um for nature, um to see what happens with the fish, to see the frequency of of right. catch in the area, or the type of fish right. that, that that is that right. is that's in here in there, and I and I think listening to him, as someone who as myself very much concerned about the environment, um. I'm one person who believes that the, based on what we do to the environment will determine our fate. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I understand, and I understand his plea, and I think um, I will speak with the Minister for the Blue Economy and also the Minister of Agriculture right. uh, to see exactly some of um, the caller's concern to see how it can be addressed. Well, you're asking for an investigation. <clears throat> you're asking for the people in the Ministry of the Green and Blue Economy to visit And, and I would hate to believe that there there isn't people that would be monitoring um, that area. For instance, um, that caller who called, I know him very well, he has a very good friend of his who works in the Ministry of Fisheries. Fisheries, yes. Um, and is from the area. So they should be able to liaise. So they should be able to speak with, with each, each other, other uh, to see how what he's saying to us yes. um, is, is, right. is, is seen right. about and to be taken care of. Right. As I said, there has to be a relation. Because you cannot stop development. No, you cannot. So therefore, there has to be a relationship Mm -hmm. with people in the community and what the people, the livelihood, uh, mining or whatever you want to call it there Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the quarry, in terms of the relationship between the quarry and the environment in which the people live. So your point is well taken. Because I would would like to know exactly what happens with, he's talking about Kolyu. I would like to find out what's happening in, in, um, in, in Kenfield, in Kenfield, uh, Donkey Corey, Beach, yes, Donkey yes, Beach yes, area, yes, yes. I would like to find out what what is happening within that premises, um, to also include that of the, um, how you call you this? have the, you have the other area there in Sufre, you know, you, in in, in, in Point, Point Michel, Michel, yeah, um, yes, we have this other area in Point, Point Michel, Michel to yeah. see. Well, Point Michel old is not as old as right, the others, right, right. Um, so those things, um, 
it really helps in the whole process of development yeah. to, to do monitoring. And, because, and because sometimes in areas where you have reefs mm -hmm. or you have marine park, mm -hmm. it's always good to see whether the, um, the siltage is in fact reaching mm -hmm. the corals because, you know, if you have certain activity taking place and you have um, sea swells or movement of the sea, that those, might, as you said, indicated, could drift down, further mm -hmm. down the mm -hmm. coast. Mm -hmm. So yes, you're very good in that, in monitoring. Yeah, so we, we go along with yeah, you. Yeah. And so you do the necessary... Yeah, I um, definitely try to get... And I'm sure the minister will be listening <laughs> because he does <laughs> listen to the program. All right. So I'm sure that by tomorrow I'll get a call from him um, that he would give me an answer. But I, I think that that is, um, for me, relatively fair right. to, to, to ask any, any authority right. to see where we go. I have a concern myself, uh, which I want to tell you about. There is a gentleman operating in the Goodwill Secondary School and he needs to be monitored as well. I'm not going to call names. There is a couple of bricks that he's been removing and apparently quite a number of them has gone into the drain by the aid bank. During heavy rains, I was a bit concerned because we had the hurricane which was, you know, we had to be monitoring. And I was afraid that a lot of rain would have come down because that would go and block the culverts and the number of small businesses in the area. You know that, says how, how, how could that How could this thing happen when, when we have so many monitoring officers? What are we paying these people to do? Well, I, how, how, are you, how, did you, how did you see this? And, and not I was very able, disturbed about and it. And not being able, you would not be the only person seeing that. And, and would not take the necessary or the relevant um, action to ensure that stop. He, he has to be stopped because this man, or the men, or get man, into or a man and woman, or man and or, woman, or whoever, and, women. And, and not only that, prisoners were actually sleeping in that place. Meaning what prisoners? Prisoners, fellas who just left the prison then. Oh, when you say prisoners? Ex-prisoners. No, right. I, I Ex-prisoners. When you say prisoners, Ex -prisoners. I, I, I'm about to ask you, I'm did subject they escape? To correct, not, uh, and I was going to tell you, Ex-prisoners. I was going to tell you, feta copli. It's ex-prisoners. Oh, you're, you're right. Right. Now, that man found himself at some point in time going where they had the housing, removing galvanash from there. Where they had the housing, you're talking about housing, housing division. Now, where, oh, where, okay, right, yeah, 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 right, right. So where Felix the, Thomas the, the operating with his division, division, housing yes, division. Yes, we're moving to yeah, where of HDC used to be. Once yeah, the time. man just going up there and removing galvanized, you know, moving good galvanized, you know, in that place to do what he's selling it, Cecil, to do what. He so, is taking all so, the galvanized, so, so he's going no, and sell so, it. So there isn't any security? Well, no, there's the security. The government's property. And now I am seeing him removing these bricks. Mm. And these, all now as we speak, the brick, some of the bricks are in the drain. And if there's heavy rain, there's going to be blockage and this place is going to be flooded. Uh, have, you, have you spoken to that individual? I try my best to see him today. I didn't see him. What did you tell him? No, I would tell him, go and take it out. Take out the thing because you look, man. You take you're making your money, you're taking the thing. Look, the thing fall inside the drain. You don't think, you, you don't think this one lo losing a, a, a piece of his brain? He has to be monitored, okay? Somebody has to take control, monitor that man because that man is inside the place and the man needs to be monitored because we are about to do that development. And, and, and I think the police has to be involved in, in, that. in that, you know. if, if According to what you're saying, that is serious. And I'm saying that is serious. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I have my concern because I live in the area. I try to see the man today. I am not going to call his name, but he needs to be monitored. That mm -hmm. place needs to be monitored. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if you have the place and it's an area where construction work is supposed to be taking place, very soon the construction of the new school, that thing has to be carefully monitored. You cannot just have a man inside. Right now, this, this site should be taken over. Somebody should take over the site, and that site is ready for construction. And, and I'm, make, I, I'm very serious about it. So okay. I have my concerns as well. well so we I just thought I, I would bring it yeah. to you. Well, coming to the end of, the, of, of another beautiful night for a program. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, caller, but can't take any more calls. Right. Um, but I, I must say that um, tonight's program was another one where we were able to help to 
give people more knowledge, give people more understanding of the society. And I think we need to do that ever so often. Or if not every Sunday, where we, we, we try to make Dominicans have a better understanding of global politics. Uh, yeah, political science is important mm -hmm. because I do not believe that when you're talking political science, you're not talking party politics. Right. Uh, and you have to understand that anytime you say something, you have to have the facts to guide it by. And, and just a matter of saying, well, that happened, or you hear a person say, yeah, man, I know dead people vote. Have you ever seen a dead man walk from the cemetery and go and vote? You have been in elections. You ain't a man just shouting, man, dead people vote. And I have evidence that dead people voting. Have you ever seen in your time, Cecil, even when you ran against the United Workers Party or the Freedom Party, and you had your observers in your polling station, did anybody ever report to you, Cecil Joseph, that he saw a dead man vote for the United Workers Party? Well, that's not possible. That, that's just not possible. Or did a man tell you he saw a dead man walk up or, or and or vote or, for or, or your agent inside there when you lost, when Julius Timothy beat you? Mm -hmm. Did you ever go up to the electoral office and say that a dead man voted for Julius Timothy? No. As a matter of fact, I, I can say that no one, not none of my agents said to me that um, that Hartley Adams um, came in and vote and he's not supposed to vote. Did you ever see anybody like my, like for instance, if my father is dead, did you ever see a dead man come and vote for Ariel Adams? No, no, I haven't seen that. I'm, I'm not witness that. I've not seen Did that. Did you ever see a dead woman wake up from goodwill and vote f in the name of you, Tina Adams? <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so I cannot understand for the likes of me. You, Cecil Jews, have been involved in a number of political um, campaigns, and you have actually run for a party in an election. And everybody, anybody tell you that? And, and you know what is strange, though, that um, in that whole process, we never spoke about gerrymandering. We, we know um, in, the, in the 80s, some gerrymandering was done with certain constituencies. Mm -hmm. uh, we did not look at it as, as corruption. We, we did not, uh, uh, when I say we, I should say the Dominican Labour Party yes. did not look at it when the Freedom Party did this as a means of corruption. We look at we look at it as more balancing and sharing of the constituencies mm -hmm. because there are some constituencies that were huger than than, yeah. than others. Yeah. Um, although still, when some gerrymandering was done, like that of the Roseau South, mm -hmm. we saw the Roseau South became larger. Yeah. But in terms of close proximity, um, we saw the, val the the Freedom Party would have seen the value of putting um, Roseau. Well, yeah, the Jer Bav see Bavis it into, into right. Rousseau. We have seen gerrymandering. We have seen gerrymandering a lot of times. Yes, we know? have seen it on. Mm. Um, we uh, we can also speak of the fact um, in 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 1972, first of September, mm -hmm. when um, e. O. Libla, um was in was in office, he was able to to speak and put together the Bong Juice Commission mm -hmm. to look at extending from 11 to, to 21. 21. Yes. To this present day, we yes. still have 21. That is a, 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 a another level of, of, of gerrymandering. Um, are we going to go and talk about gerrymandering? No. Um, we are talking about people voting and, and trying to take a right, take the rights away from people and tell them that they cannot vote if their names are on the list. No, so yeah. I, I think all of these things, you know, yeah. it's and a... It's a sheer emotion over that yeah, of, of, of logic. Yeah, man. Because I, I, and the I reason why I'm very strong on that, I've never heard, and I've been listening to politics and participating in it for a number of years, I never hear, never heard the Labour Party ever go and say... S somebody to, to somebody, somebody said on, 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 on Facebook and said, um, Brain, you are doing your big brain a disservice. You know it's impersonation. And not actual dead persons. Imp no, 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 no. Let, let, let me correct the person. Let me correct the person. Let me correct the person. Impersonation is not dead people. Right. Is I am going. I look like Cecil, Cecil Joseph, and I go and vote on Cecil. I Jimmy. am going. We, so you, you see. So the person, say, no, so, no, so the person is, the person. no, no. The person is saying that brain. 
that you know it is not about dead people that they're talking about is impersonation. And we know that is not happening either. No. Impersonation caller or callers is a word that means I am putting myself in the place of Cecil Joseph. I look like Cecil Joseph and I'm going to say I am voting for Cecil Joseph. And you find that making sense? Right, so sometimes. So Have you ever had somebody so, come and so tell even, you? Even the statement <laughs> the person made in the last sentence, I will not repeat what the person said. I would tell the person, you know, just think of of what you see. Impersonation. Just think of what you just wrote to, uh, um, to about brain. That you, I can almost say the same thing about you too. Yes. Um, because um, impersonation, it's it's just not possible no. because you have agents, and that's what I'm trying to tell agents. people. Agents. You have agents you. inside there that know the people. So how am I going to take the chance, Cecil Joseph? I am voting in Rosu South. I'm going to take the chance to go and vote in Rosu North. I ran for the Rosu North. I ran for the... I wish I could vote for myself. <laughs> I couldn't vote for myself. So I was going to say that I am Cecil Joseph living in, at the time, yeah. living in Grand Slain, to go and vote at the... to go and vote at the, at the Red Cross? <laughs> no, it's not possible. Not possible. So there's nothing called impersonation in that. Yeah, you cannot no, do that, You caller. cannot do that. So let's forget the politics. Because you see, the thing about it, I <sighs> never heard, and I am being very, very honest with you, and we have to hit it hard, I never hear the Freedom Party say that the Labour Party impersonated anybody. I never hear it. <laughs> Labour Party lost, it lost. I never hear the Freedom Party say impersonation. I never hear it. I never hear it. I only hear it but, now. But, but I want to find out from that, from, from, from some impersonation. people. I want to find out from some people. What about Marigot? What about... What about what about goodwill? What about Rosenoff? Would anybody impersonate? Are you saying are you saying those seats that you have won? Do, or nobody you impersonated have won before that there were nobody who impersonated another person? No, here the point I'm going to drive. I'm going to drive it tonight. You know um um that fella Sikiwi Ambrose Judge beat him. By a thousand two hundred votes, I must judge be the previous person, right? As uh, that is, I'm um, Bobby. But uh, and yeah. you mean to tell me Joshua Francis come back and beat him by nine hundred and somebody, which means he would have gotten almost a thousand. So what votes. happened? What happened? <laughs> what happened? What and Ambrose George ever said, boy, <laughs> wake up a set of man from the dead, you know, in the Catholic cemetery, or how many hundreds of people impersonated him? So the, call, the caller is saying that why don't we remove the, the names of dead people? Caller, I, I, I want to read what the person said. <laughs> read it. So, so, to, so the person said, um, to, so to remove all doubts, why don't we remove the names of dead people so that we are totally assured, not just... <laughs> By your assurance. Let me ask you a question, Cecil. You run election. You, they give you the list. You have the list of all the voters in different polling stations. You, 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 so you tick it out. That one is for me. That one is Adams will vote for that bad man. That one is vote. That will vote. And but you this, see me coming. The, color, the, color, uh, for the, the person who's writing that information fail to understand yes. that I am for removing dead people's name on the list. I am for it. I am for it. And what the person doesn't understand that there is a process. Now, Hayden Joseph is dead. You're not going to see Hayden Joseph's name on the list. No. Because his name was removed. His name was removed. How his name was removed, we went and we tell the electoral office that Hayden Joseph is dead from phone call. So his name is not on the list. So you, that person, I think what is happening on the other side, they're too lazy. And because they are so lazy, they don't have time to go through the list to determine. Some of their constituencies do that, eh? Where they go through the list and to say to you, who is dead, who is overseas, who lives in other constituencies, who lives in other constituencies, but, voting, check, in, but voting in the in, voting in the area, you check. and to ensure that we do our canvassing to get them to come in and vote. Mm -hmm. So I I just want to say to the person right. that yes. Um, don't write on any disguise. <laughs> don't write, write your name, man. Don't, don't write on any disguise. Yeah. You know, um, and and the person said that the reluctance, your reluctance, is very disturbing, um, in terms of removing dead people on the list. That is not true. That's not true. Call, I'm writer. That is not a fact. Stop spreading rumors. Uh, okay. That is very untrue because 
Bryn and myself and many other persons I've heard speaking have said that yes, they want to see the removal of dead people, but they have not yet spoken loudly as to how the process should be. They have not said that up to now. So they just use it's like many times they say, Oh, you corrupt, you corrupt. Ask them the meaning of corruption. Mm -hmm. Or ask them what is corruption. They cannot tell you. So it's a sweet, sexy word that they like to use. Mm -hmm. So dead people on the list is a sexy word that they want mm -hmm. to use and not making the facts as it's supposed to be. Let us just look at that for the last time. Cecil, I never told anybody my father died. And I went to look to see if I would see his name on the list. I've never seen his name. I went to see if my mother's name, Utina Adams, was on the list. She was not on the list. I never told anybody they die. There's a death certificate. There's a death certificate. So whatever the process was, somebody informed them and, and that see, the, 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 my what, mother what, and father what, was what, dead. What is not nice of these people? In 2000, there were some 30,000 30, people who abstained, I think, from vote. Yes, you're uh, right. Who did not vote, not abstain, who did not vote. Who did not vote, yes. All right? And in that did not vote, it would be people who abstained and people who are dead. Who dead. All right? Yeah. That's what it would have been. Yep. And we have seen in the, in the I'm not talking about 2022 mm -hmm. is election, I'm talking about 2019 election. We saw over 30, 4, 36,000 people you are the list, did you. not vote. You are the list, you are the list. And it would show as an indicator that when we look at the new registered people, so there are people that registered, young people, persons who are 18 years, and there are people who would have voted for the very first time, they may be 40. So you have new registered voters. Yes, you have. And you would have seen the number. So you would know that out of the 36,000 people who did not vote, and you're talking about 74,000 people, you see, Dominica do not have a population of 74. I, I want to agree with you, but the point is, how many people are actually voting? How, how many people are actually? Is it, is, are you seeing, are you seeing 50,000 people voting, 60,000 people voting? You know, a person might come and say, boy, I'm a labor right, you know, but I didn't get a house. I didn't get plywood. I didn't get money. They abstain. I'm not voting. They abstain. Or they, go and, or they can go and vote and vote against, against and the party. And then they can be so disgruntled but they can that they the can go against the party because the party didn't give them right. what they feel that right. they should have gotten. Right. So all these are, are variables in the equation. And we have to be honest about it because as our last Call, uh, or last guest said, we have changed. We have made many changes. We have changed governments. We have changed governments. Mm -hmm. In other words, you're telling me that a government is going to be there for life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, so if it was the case, the Freedom Party would never lose. If that was the case, the UWP would never lose. Governments have changed by the process of elections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I do not know what we were jumping all over the place about. Uh, and so we, we uh, from political science, we have to be more, I, I more, s more, more I, scientific I in, instead in, of being in, emotional. In, in 1985, uh, when we saw the, 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 the percentage of persons voted, um, we saw a great number of people voted, something like 70, almost 74% of the populace mm -hmm. voted, where you had um, some 9,000 increased numbers of new voters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Increased number of new voters, and you had, and what I liked was that when you brought your book with all the numbers, and, and, and it was right. scientific, yeah, you brought the numbers, yeah, which was scientific. Yeah, yeah, what the person has written? Do you wait? Do you wait? <laughs> peace and unity. Was, do you do you want peace and unity, or to preserve the tools that keep us in doubt as to <laughs> the integrity of our system? Maybe we should just take take brain wood for it. No, we're not taking. No, we're not taking wood for it. Wood for it. Mm -hmm. No, no, we not. Don't take my wood mm -hmm. for it. We mm -hmm. want to be very rational in what we say. Mm -hmm. As we say, we have got to be scientific mm -hmm. in the way we approach things. Well, you see, some people here, eh, 
they don't know how to cook f- cook food <laughs> and and the common I, and the common teller best to cook food you put them into the kitchen they start to feel the heat and they cannot right. cook right well, well of one of the things i always <laughs> tell people says i cannot uh, cook <laughs> i myself cannot cook so i always be honest about what i can do and what i cannot do so i if you ask me if i can cook the first thing i tell you no so if you cannot do it just be honest. I can't do and, it. And if these people are honest with us, I tell them, go back and look at figures. Your figures that you go presented. One, go and look at figures. Um, and you would have seen, um, let's take, for instance, the United Locust Party. Let's use Cassie Bruce. You would have seen in 1995, or let's use 1990, their first election, what their numbers were like. What their numbers was like, were like in, 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 in um, 1995. What their numbers was like in 2000. And we will have seen the exchange of votes, meaning that the persons who voted for you in 1995 are showing a shift in the votes of the last election of 2000. Yes. And the shift you would see also in 2005. I want some people to do the science of it. Just go, take some time, see how many votes that Marigot got at certain elections and see what the figures are showing. There was so a most likely... There's a decline in party votes. In party votes. But there might not be a decline, a great decline in the number of votes yes, to yeah. up to, to the to the electors. Right, you're right. The, so so you may let's let's <laughs> use let's use one hundred. Yeah. One hundred votes. Yeah. So you find that in a constituency a hundred people voted. And let's presume in nineteen ninety, eighty voted for the United Locals Party, ten voted for the Freedom Party. 10 voted for the Labour Party. The United Douglas Party won. In 1995, you would have seen that 60 persons voted for the United Douglas Party. You saw 10 voted for the Freedom Party. 30. 30 voted now for the There's a decline Labour in Party. the votes of the United Then Party. you would have seen in 2005. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with the same 100. With the same 100, you would have seen... 30 now for the United Workers Party. Um, Maybe 40. 60, for, yes. 60 for the Labour Party. 10. And 10 for the... But not only that, you must and look... And that's, that's what I want them to go on. But you must look at the trend because they're no longer a Freedom Party. So the numbers that used to vote for the Freedom Party... Vo- no. no I, I, I mean, let, us say the, let, us say, let us say the vote in this, the vote split, split between, the between, Labour and, and between Labour and the United Nations Party. For the Freedom Party votes. Of the Freedom Party votes. But then you would see that the Labour Party would have gotten the bigger trunk... Chunk of the migration. Of the, of the migration of votes from, 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 from either the Freedom party. party. From either party. From either party. From either party. But what the people are failing to recognize, two major political parties have merged. Yes. That is the that is science behind it. Two major political parties who have been in existence for a very long time, they are in one, mm-hmm. and they have not been shifting. How long have we been seeing? How long have we been seeing? For instance, the the Rose North constituency has something like five to six thousand voters. You know it best than me. Yes. Okay, how long so have you we can been talk seeing to that? that one? All right, but we have seen out of that five six thousand. 3,000 people, uh, let me see, 5,000 um, uh, labor would go have you, you, 6,000, all right, dear about voters. But you would have seen something like 3,000 to almost 4,000 people voting in that constituency consistently, consistently. But what you would be seeing is the shift, the migration of votes from the various political parties. Yes. Um, an, another one is the, let's look at the Carib territory. Let's look at the Kalinago territory, Kalinago space. Just watch, watch there. Yes, there are new voters that will increase the numbers, but you will see the migration yes. and how it shows. So you would see that the Labour Party has been winning the, the Kalinago territory with increase of votes ever so often right. from 200 to 300. And because you see the migration is shift. Right. Of less votes from another political party. Well, but while you're in the Reserve and in winding up, let me extend my f- my deepest sympathy sympathy to our good friend Francois Barry, who passed on. Yes, I told you that last week. Yeah, I'm saying that again, mm-hmm. and 
I want to extend, because he was a, always a regular caller. Yeah. And he, would, also, he, would, he would have called tonight. Oh, he would have called tonight. <laughs> so whilst we were on the, just talking voting, I, I thought about him. Mm -hmm. So Cecil, you're right in terms of your trend and your migration in terms of the politics. And that's what I want people to look at. Look at that. I want Because it, it sickens sometimes brain that, that people just take what other people say to them and, uh, and, and, and some persons don't look at the figures. At the figures. But you see me? You're, I you're like political statistics. scientist. You're your I man. like <laughs> statistics. All right? All right. I, I, I like to show the movement of people. And I like to show what the, 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 the trend... If you go back as way back as 1970, as I've said to people, in 1970, we had 25,000 people. 21,000 voted. 4,000 stayed away. 25,000. Then we saw in 1975 an increase from the 25 to almost 28 or thereabout. We saw again an increase. We have never seen a decrease with the United when Freedom Party lost the election in 1995. We had 53,000, 55,000 people registered to vote when the United Workers Party ran in the year. 2,000, 60,000, 60,000. So the numbers has never dropped. It's increased. It has never dropped. And that's the so by virtue of the fact that there are still dead people on the list, you will see that while you have the increased number of new voters, where I said one time in 1995, 1985, we saw 9,000 people. Another time we saw 6,000 people, new voters, new voters, all right? Um, we saw 2,000, we saw 3,000, and we are seeing the numbers increasing. But yes, the numbers in terms of the dead being removed is not sufficient to show the decline. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, decline. which means that maybe in any, in any five year cycle, we don't see 5,000 people dying. <laughs> maybe. But yeah. we're not saying that dead people are not on the list. Dead people are on the list, but they cannot vote and they will not vote. Right. Impersonation doesn't happen oh, no, you know what i'm saying yeah. so I, I just want us to um, put that together go to, go at the electoral office buy the statistics information and study analyze it, it study it analyze it You're right and to find out exactly what the trend is actually it's showing. showing yeah you I know what i'm saying it, it's more scientific one, one, one election in, in 1995 when the freedom party lost the election more people voted for the freedom party than the united Workers party mm -hmm. more people voted for the freedom party that was the first time in Dominica history where we had a, a, an unpopular. That's what we say. That's what party we say. getting yes. Um, being elected. Being elected. The popular votes went to the Freedom the party. party. Yeah. The popular votes went to the Freedom Party. We saw one election um, where um, this lady from 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 Grand Bay, Juliana Henderson. And, uh, yes. Um, where she would have received thirty three percent of the votes. Piero received almost the same thirty-three percent, but just a few point point less. Um, Amo received a, a number. Amo went as for the for I think the for, for the Alliance Party, mm -hmm. and there was another party, the, the the Democratic Labour Party. But it it showed that if you had to combine Pierre Charles, the Alliance Party, Dem Lab, that you would have had a, 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 greater a, number. a greater number of persons voting maybe for Pierre Charles. Yes. We don't know. But it showed that points, whatever the point was, um, um, what's her name? Julian Henderson. Julian Henderson won the election. We saw the Freedom Party, the United Workers Party won the election um, with less numbers in 1995 than the Freedom Party. So if we have to talk about popular votes. Yes, yes. Different party would have won the yeah, election. But, uh, one of the things that the, the population must do is to go to the um, electoral the office, office, look at the trends, look at the, um, the the way things are being done. And as uh, Dr. Donald Peters said, let's be scientific in about all I this. I think one stuff. of these is um, 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 brain. The both of us would have to maybe look at the... The, the, the trend of, of the election. I'll take some time and, and, yeah, do, your, and, and, and do some, do some work to, to, show, trend. to show people what the trends the trends the trend actually saying and, and how it speaks to to the the the, the gains of the, of the of the of the Labour Party. The same thing happened in the Freedom Party days mm -hmm. when the Labour Party was being diffused. 
you you had the Labour Party strong organization, but you had more than one organization. You had more than one Labour Party. Mm -hmm. So in in 1980, um, the Labour Party did not run just as a Labour Party. You had three Labour. You had two Labour parties yes, coming together. Coming no two Labour parties by on their own, sp um, courting the votes. The Labour Freedom Party would have won, but they would have won maybe by 12 or, or 15 votes, 14, 15 seats. All right. We we, we we saw we saw when they merge, we saw the Labour Party was able to get something like five seats, there about. So so it, it's it's scientific. That, it's time that we look at the science. When the, the, science when, the behind it. when the United Workers Party came came about in 1988, in 1990 when they ran their first election, they got six seats. They got six seats, which was showing that if there was just two parties running. The probability that the Freedom Party would have lost the elections. Yes, yes. It's science. It's a science. Then we saw in 1995. <laughs> you, and you have this you, science in your head. The United Workers Party came into power. They got 11 seats. They got 11 seats. And um, and Freedom got 10. Labour Party got 10. Now, when you look at the numbers in terms of the seats that they were able to win, they did not win by 20 and 50 votes. Some of them were, were closer to, to, to 10. And, and what I like about you... You never came and discussed it without your figures because you have your book, you look at the trend, and you look at it. And I like that because you're coming to show the science behind when certain things occur and the five-year cycle or whatever the cycle was in yes. terms of the numbers and the migration. And it shows statistically. If you do your work statistically, you will understand what's happening. I think that's what has to happen. That's what has to happen. Um... And if we if we go about doing this thing properly, we'll have a greater understanding, because it is not fear that you 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 win election, you win an election with less votes, popular votes, but you got eleven seats. Your eleven seats that you got did not show between the two political parties that lost five five that some of the seats that you won you had a fifty vote ma a margin, margin. A, a majority. All right. So it says that really and truly that you you were a, a, a force um, that 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 was not very very powerful. You saw that you got one elections, and when the when the when in two thousand election was called, um, you saw that it was proven from the last election of nineteen ninety five that you, you did not have the great numbers the statistics. So so the numbers would show that that there is a base. So, so yes, you can see the United Workers Party has a base of ten thousand people. No, that base is eroding. You can say that the Labour Party has a base of fifteen thousand. Yeah, is, 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 is it is it is it growing? You are seeing the growth of the of it's the Labour Party. It's so it's, it's not about oh I Emotion, support I support it's Labour. Statistics. It's oh. not it's not that. I it's statistics. We, no, let's deal with the issues of figures. Numbers, numbers don't numbers, lie. Numbers, numbers, statistics. But anyway, Boy, I see you like that. You like statistics. You should have, you must <laughs> really? do a course in statistics. Anyway, um, Cecil, um, when is the parliament meeting to elect this? Tuesday. Uh, will we have a president? Uh, well, you will have a president. In, on, uh, a name of a president will be chosen on Tuesday. And will it, will it, I don't know the procedure. I, I have, have to, to be I'm reminded. I've not heard the, the opposition. When they go to parliament on Tuesday, Will a president be elected or a president will be nominated and the well, parties the, the, will the, Well, the government has already nominated the, 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 person. the person. We know it's the lady. No, so the, 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 the opposition, which is the um, Jessma Paul, right. um, she, along with, um, um, how call it, um, along with, with um, her her senate, no, her, along with her other um, candidates, oh, can, will, will, did, will, 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 will nominate, can nominate, they can either nominate or agree to the um, recommendation of the government. No. Will will a vote take place on well, Tuesday? I, I from from what I if I was in this guy's place, that's just me saying that. Me saying that. That knowing that you're going to have the first woman president, and not only just the first woman, but a Kalinago person. I I would I would I would agree and vote with the government mm -hmm. um for the same for the same person. Let me ask you a question. Would Jessica Paul have already sent in her nomination to the Prime Minister for him to know or she will make the announcement on Tuesday? How does well, that happen? I have I have not heard um um the recommendation of the um of the opposition, the parliamentary opposition. So she'll wait until Tuesday. So she apparently will wait on Tuesday to give her to give her, her, her 
her nominee. Her nominee. If she has one or yeah. agree. Or agree. Um, so if she does agree, um, what will happen is um, there will be no election process because you know it's in parliament in that parliament, the, yeah. the person is chosen. So the government has already done the nomination. Right. And um, from sitting where I am, <laughs> sitting where I am, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, I'm not seeing anybody else in the government seat nominating anybody to split to split <laughs> the votes. <laughs> well, it says, um, anyway, you'll be there on Tuesday to I, watch it. Once God gives me that that that, right. that 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 willpower, um, with strength and energy and life, I'll be present. I I won't miss that for nothing. Okay. Um, because it's important, um, for for not just me, Dominica, first woman, um, Kalinago space. Yes. Um, I can imagine the entire Kalinago. The entire Kalinago will 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 um endorse. Will not only endorse um will come. Um because at the at the at the what do you call this? At the um consultation, um if you if you listen very attentively, <laughs> yes. you could have seen that the former senator um on the United Workers Party side Almost give her the uh, endorsement. Endorsement to that. Of, 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 <laughs> yeah, okay. of Miss Britain. All right. Well, Miss Britain. Well, let's see. Well, well, t um, Cecil was very interesting. I enjoyed being here again uh, this Sunday. I'm looking forward to next Sunday, and I'm looking forward to Tuesday when history will be in the making. Do have a good night, Dominicans. Thanks for listening to us. I know you'll not always agree with us, but we still love you. Go out and be productive. And I just want to say action, yes, does speak louder than words. And I can almost guarantee you that, um, listeners, that we are in a better space as we speak now. Uh, Dominica, I just want to say thank you for making me who I am. Thank you, thank you Dominica, for allowing me uh, to be who I am. And I'm really grateful that I am a Dominican. So once again, I just want to say to you, my brother, Bryn, thank you very much for the opportunity given so that we can have some discussion. It's midnight, and I just want to say thank you. God bless every one of us. And let's continue loving our beautiful country, Dominica. Canned foods, bottled water, teddy bear. So when the big wind is howling and the roof is creaking and everything is dark and I'm getting really scared, I can cut out with my teddy and feel safe, right? Planning for emergencies? Plan for children. Pack a favorite toy to comfort your child during and after disasters. So as well as books, games, and snacks to keep children occupied books. and calm. Luis this message Rudiales is brought to you by UNICEF, Sidera, and this radio station. Three weeks. He has always maintained the kiss he gave Jenny Hermoso was mutual and consensual. She had denied that and has 